significant because in terms of where the government services are offered, this is where you will find it. Francis, we are not alone. We have an entire panel. It's an expansive campus. Inside, there will be two debates that will be going on. We will have two moderators at 5.30 p.m. Another set will begin at 7.30 p.m. We have another set of moderators. Wahiko Maura from Citizen Television will be having a panel of experts seated next to us, right beside us. Those are the gentlemen and women who will be analyzing the data, the facts and the figures, and they will be telling us whether our nine invited guests will be making sense of it all and whether they are ready to become 047 in the next 28 days. Absolutely, Leila. And the search for Nairobi's fourth governor. Yes, fourth, because we had uh, Ivan Skidero. There was Mike Sonko, there's Ann Kananu, and so the search for the county's fourth governor uh, will be under in about 28 days. So what are your expectations? What are your views? What are your aspirations? What do you want the governor candidates to discuss tonight? You have an opportunity to participate in this discussion online, on TV, on radio. Uh, join us as we uh, get underway in this debate. And it's a county of significance, as we, say, as we told you earlier, because this is a power and more than that uh, this is a county where the ex executive seats that state house this is where harambe house is this is where the judiciary is the headquarters of the judiciary this is where parliament the two chambers of parliament sit so nairobi county is no doubt a county of great significance and importance and that's why we want to make sense of the nine men and women who want to be the fourth governor of nairobi and we are not alone again our colleagues Frederick Muitereri and Beatrice Gatonye wako upande ule mwingine Kiswahili ndio mdomo wao sasa. Mm -hmm. Beatrice and Fred uh, Hamjambo najua siku hii ni nzito sana kwenu. Uh, tuelezeni ni yapi ambayo wapiga kura katika kaunti hii sufuri nne saba wanatarajiwa kuyahisia wale ambao ni wageni wa alikwa wataweza kuzungumzia baadaye katika siku hii. Shukran sana Leila Muhammad mkiwa na Francis Gashuri wote wa NTV na Citizen TV mimi naitwa Frederick Mwitiriri kutoka station inayokuwa kwa kasi zaidi humu nchini TV 47 karibu sana lakini kabla sijasema sana kwenye mazungumzo haya nimkaribisha mwenzangu Beatrice ajiseme ni wa kutoka kituo kipi kisha tuendelee na matangazo haya Bila shaka mwenzangu asante sana jina langu ni Beatrice Getonye ngetiti kutoka shirika la utangazaji humu nchini Kenya KBC na kama jinsi ambavyo umesikia kutoka kwa wenzetu uh, Uh, tuko hapa kama vyombo vya habari nchini Kenya kuhakikisha kwamba tukuletea uh, kipindi hiki maalum mama mjadala huu maalum ambao bila shaka wagombeaji kiti cha ugavana hapa jijini Nairobi wanapata fursa ya kwanza kabisa kutoka vyombo vya habari huko nchini Kenya kuja kujielezea ama kuelezea wakazi wa kaunti hii yale ambayo wangependa kuwafanyia na matarajio uh, ama azimio zao kama viongozi wa kaunti hii yale ambayo wangependa kufanya kama jinsi ambavyo wenzetu wamesema kaunti ya Nairobi Uh, bila shaka ni kitovu cha nchi hii kwani hapa ndipo makao makuu ya serikali ya Kenya uh, na kulingana na sensa ya mwaka 2019 kaunti hii iko na watu uh, milioni 4.3 lakini kulingana na uh, ripoti nyingine zao ambazo zimefanywa na mashirika mbalimbali mbali, zinaonyesha kwamba uh, nambari hii ya wakazi wa, uh, wakazi wa Nairobi inaendelea kuongezeka kila kuchao kaunti ya Nairobi mtazamaji ni kueleze tu kwa uduchu uh, kaunti hii na kaunti nyinginezo ikiwemo kaunti ya Machakos, kaunti ya Kiambu pamoja na kaunti uh, ya Kajiado. Na kulingana na IEBC, kaunti hii inawapiga kura takriban milioni mbili, uh, nukta nne kwa sasa. Ikilinganishwa na mwaka wa saba kwenye uchaguzi uliopita, uh, uchaguzi huo wapigaji kura nchini na, uh, katika kaunti ya Nairobi walikuwa takriban milioni mbili, nukta mbili. kumaanisha kwamba zaidi ya wakazi uh, milioni uh, laki mbili wameongezeka ambao watakuwa kipiga kura uh, wakati huu. Mm -hmm. Na kama jinsi uh, mwitiriri ambavyo tunaona ni kaunti ambayo imewavutia wanawake pamoja na wanaume takriban tisa ambao wangependa kuiongoza kaunti hii baada ya Kidero pamoja na uh, Sonko. Mike Sonko pamoja na Kanonu kama jinsi ambavyo Gashuri ametuelezea. Hebu mm -hmm. tueleze majina haya ni akina nani hao ambao sasa wanataka kuchukua fursa hii uh, ili kuweza kumridhi Kananu na kuendeleza maendeleo hapa katika kaunti ya Nairobi. Shukrani sana Beatrice Gatonye kutoka shirika la KBC.
E, kuna mwaniwaniaji tisa kama vile ambavyo Beatrice amesema wawaniaji hawa wamepigwa msasa na IBC na siku ya jana wakachapishwa majina yao yote yakachapishwa kwenye gazeti rasmi la serikali majina ya watu hawa ambao watakuwa wakiwania mwezi wa nane tarehe tisa ni Hayani Grewal Haman atakuwa akiwania kiti cha ugavana kwenye kaunti hii ya Nairobi vile vile kama Polycap Igade atakuwa akiwania kiti hicho mnamjua Igade ni wajubili Karioki Agnes Kagore atakuwa akiwania kwenye ha kaunti hii ya Nairobi kaunti ambayo inajulikana sana kaunti sufuri nne saba vile vile kutakuwa na Kio Cleofas Motua kutakuwa na Kothe Dennis Aaron Ocheng ni majina tu baadhi ya wale ambao watakuwa akiwania kiti hiki cha ugavana Mwadibe Nancy Wamboi atakuwa kwenye kiti hiki Nyamamu Kenneth Kinara pia vile vile amejitosa kwenye ulingo huo mwezi wa nane Vile vile kuna kisakaja Johnson Arthur yule wa UDA na vile vile wa mwisho ni Thairo Esther Warenga. Haya ndio majina ambayo ni watu tisa watakuwa kiwania mwezi wa Agosti kwenye kipute cha uchaguzi mkuu mwaka mbili Lakini kwa sasa mtazamaji sababu kuna mengi ambayo tumekuandalia kwa sasa ni mpe mwenzangu kutoka shirika na, na eh, televisheni ya Citizen wa Higa Mwaura aendeleze na atueleze akina nani ako nao barabara kabisa na shukran sana Frederick Mwitiriri pamoja na Beatrice Gatonye mimi najulikana kama Wahiga Mwaura kutoka stationi ya Citizen TV and today of course we look forward to what will be a very exciting series of debates for the next couple of hours and to quote that Greek statesman Pericles who once said that it doesn't matter if you don't pay attention to politics politics will pay attention to you and that's why this afternoon into the evening we hope that Nairobi residents specifically the 2.2 million registered voters will pay keen attention as the nine men and women that have been cleared by the IBC to vie in that August 9th poll put forward their agenda. Nairobi residents this evening will get a chance to ask some of the questions to interrogate the vision, the competence and possibly the character of those men and women that will be featuring in the auditorium just behind the stage where that debate will kick off at about 5.30 p.m. Now some of you may be asking and my colleagues have really emphasized why Nairobi. This is uh, the county that provides at least 27% of the country's GDP. The most populated county as well. Last figures showing that it was at 4.4 million. This is according to the 2019 census and also it's the only county so far that has gotten a chance to implement and see through article 187 of the constitution with the transfer of functions from the county government to the nms back in 2020 a transfer that should be expiring within the next couple of months and that's part of what will form the debate with my panel uh, right here at our studio b uh, briefly to run you through the program in about an hour or so the first debate will kick off 5 30 p.m and this one will have about seven candidates uh, those who polled five percent or less in the last three polls according to popularity rankings and this will be moderated by safin achieng ouma of kbc tv together with ayub abdikadir of k24 tv that's from 5 30 p.m to 7 p.m a short break between 7 p.m and 7 30 p.m my panel here will analyze what happened in regards to that and then we kick off with our second panel at 7 30 p.m and that will have two candidates, those who polled 5% and above in the last three uh, opinion polls uh, from a popularity perspective. And that will be moderated by Zubeda Kome, KTN, together with Mark Masai of NTV. Wherever you are seated, prepare yourself. Don't move because we've got a lot lined up for you uh, in the coming hours, including the kind of discussion we'll be having here with my panel, who I want to introduce to you at this time. And I'll start from my far left. We are joined by Karen Wakoli, who's the founder and executive director, Emerging Leaders Foundation. Karen, glad to have you with us. Thank you. Right next to her is Professor Alfred Omenya, who is an urban development expert. He also lectures both here and in Australia. I don't know where he finds the time. Prof, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Edgar. Next to him, Philip Kisi, a former town clerk and Nairobi City Council, wears other hats as well, and, and we'll engage with him as we continue. Karibu sana. Thank you. On my immediate right, uh, Wanjiro Gikonyo, who's the national coordinator at the Institute for Social Accountability, also known as TISA. Wanjiro, glad to have you here with us. Asante. And we're also joined by uh, Professor Collins O'Daughter. He's an associate dean, faculty of law at the University of Nairobi. Prof, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Waiga, and good evening, viewers. Thank you very much. And I want to start with you, Philip Kisia. You've, you've sat on that seat. You've under, you, you have an understanding from a practical perspective, what it means to be the CEO of this county, even though the functions may have been slightly different under the previous dispensation. What are you looking for this evening from the nine men and women uh, that will present themselves before the, the country 
that will give you an understanding that this person not only has a manifesto that, that makes sense for Nairobi, but also understands the nitty gritties, the deeper issues around what it takes to make Nairobi the kind of city that we'd all, and county that we'd all desire for it to be. Uh, okay, I think there, there, there are basically uh, two issues that uh, I'll be looking at. Um, one is the issue of uh, competence. You've talked about competence. Uh, does that candidate have um, the competence required to run a capital city like Nairobi mm -hmm. in terms of management, in terms of leadership? Um, and then, of course, does he have political experience? That's very important because you are, you are running an institution that requires combination of all those things I've talked about. The other thing, of course, is... Um, you know, there's been debate of whether um, um, having somebody schooled uh, would be uh, desirable to run the county. I can tell you... D define without schooled? Schooled, yes. At least, uh, you know, basic what education. Level? Okay. Basic education. I was talking to Prof just before we got on air, and we agree that uh, basic education is minimum a degree. Mm -hmm. That would be basic. So, the, okay, other than those competencies... Mm -hmm. um, does a person have passion? Because this is a very thankless job. You know, don't get in thinking that uh, you're going to be glorified. You'll wake up in the morning and receive all manner of um, abuses. So you'd be ready for it. So if you're not somebody who is passionate about, about doing this job, please, you're in the wrong space. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure the candidates are listening to you and, and some have already started arriving and we'll be crossing over to them as soon as we have that opportunity. Wanjiro, for you and I know for Tisa as well, the accountability question, very crucial at this time. Will you be listening to what the candidates will say in regards to the transition from the uh, county to NMS and, and how they foresee that transition back once NMS's term expires in the next few months? Yes, of course we are very interested in that because um, Nairobians have been disenfranchised in terms of the ability to execute our self-governance as anticipated in, under the Constitution. With the transfer of our functions, public participation has been low, the accountability, the voice of citizens has been low. But I think um, one of the other things we've been very keen to look at is governance. When you look at Nairobi County, we've been plagued by poor leadership, poor governance. When you look at revenue, because for government to be able to deliver services, you need revenue. Um, the revenue um, collection has been falling, yet the burden on those paying is, is very uh, onerous. So where is the money going? It's going into uh, the pockets uh, due to um, lack of accountability in the revenue collection systems. At expenditure level, also we've had poor governance. So what are the practical uh, proposals on the table around governance? Uh, then the other is inclusion because majority of Kenyans uh, live in informal settlements. Mm. Um, a majority of Kenyans work in the informal sector. Yet we look at gov uh, Nairobi as the seat of government. Uh, we are talking about big business. But where are the majority of, of, of uh, Nairobians in the plans of the governor? So these are some of the things we want to hear so that we can have an inclusive, accountable, human rights-based form of government that really creates transformation uh, in Nairobi. I'm glad you brought up the, the issue of housing because I know that's a, a pet uh, topic of Professor Alfred Domenia, who's obviously a, an urban uh, development expert. What are you hoping to hear, Prof, um, in, in terms of how the candidates will tackle two sticky issues? One, what some have described as an unjust transport system that many Nairobians have to bear with on a day-to-day -day basis and also an unequal housing system as well. Very few can, can, can own their own homes, I think under 10%. And majority rent in one form or the other. And that really is the reality of living in Nairobi County. Yeah, thank you very much, Rega. I think uh, um, you're spot on there that uh, uh, this is one city that is very clear that both national and, uh, and county governments don't understand. In fact, I've, uh, I've, I've written before about uh, a city without citizens. If you ask these people whom their citizens are and where they are and what they do, they don't know. So we are still in the realm of the colonial city where all of us are meant to be strangers in this place. So you're right, Wahiga. I mean, uh, uh, it'll be quite interesting. Or oh, Nairobians are, are very excited about uh, the expressway, but then you ask, which Nairobians? 
the expressway at best can only ferry up to 2 to 3 percent of this city. 46 percent of Nairobians walk to work. I want to, to hear what the candidates are suggesting about these people. They are the majority. 40 percent use matatus. Chaotic as it is. Uh, so for you, previous slum upgrade programs, um, plans to have BRTs, ETC, for you, not yet? It's not yet Uhuru. That's 86 percent in matatus and, uh, and walking. <laughs> <laughs> then where well, you, you belong to, to just 15 to 16 percent that drive cars and you're also stuck in traffic jams so basically there's no transport in Nairobi at even with the expressway because uh, we, we, we can argue that only four percent of the city is catered for now but then uh, quickly to, to come to housing again we'll be asking who are these city residents and where do they stay and mm -hmm. what type of housing do they need mm -hmm. where well, he uh, uh, studies that we are doing now shows that uh, while national government planned to do 500,000 houses, they managed to destroy during COVID up to 150,000 houses. In fact, in Mukuru, they destroyed 46,000 houses in one place. So forget about what uh, uh, these guys are saying that they're doing in Pangani. Um, okay. They've not delivered even 4,000 houses. They've managed to destroy and I do have the statistics over 150,000 houses on the, the basis of infrastructure, and, and, and that's Kenya Power, Kenya Railway, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Bus Park, uh, Expressway, and, and so on. So basically, uh, government, the, the city and the national government have been able to deliver, if you understand maths, about <laughs> negative 140,000 houses. Okay. I'll we, be we do understand maths. What they intend and, to do and I have another professor on this <laughs> panel who uh, also has... Uh, a real keen interest in housing and housing and inequality. But before that, let me mention, I've been informed one of the candidates is actually here, and we'll bring you some pictures of that as soon as we have them. Kenneth Nyamwamu, who's a candidate on the United Progressive Alliance uh, Party, and uh, we'll let you know more about uh, him uh, in just a bit. But Prof. Dote, housing inequality. I know a big concern for you as well, and I can allow you to pick up where Prof. Omenya left off. Yes, I think uh, Prof. Omenya was talking about that the government has created negative 140. I do not know too much maths, but I know that that means instead of creating, they have re reduced. But I think the question of housing is a critical issue. Critical for two reasons, uh, Wahiga. Number one, the majority of Nairobians stay in informal settlements. Majority. Uh, and if you go into any informal settlement, you know these people suffer from two problems. Number one, they do not own the land on which they sit. So the question about security of tenure becomes a critical issue for them. Uh, so they have the risk of always being evicted at every point in time. I would like to hear about practical conversations about how will we stop evictions of people in formal settlements. Because uh, a lot of the times you'll hear people say, government will take the land. But the majority of that land is uh, pri allegedly private land. Uh, if you go to Mukuru, for example, you, the conversation about, so how do we ensure that we have tenure regularization that A, does not cause problems but solves the problem that's the first critical issue the second critical issue is the access to basic services in majority of these places access to water access to electricity access to sanitation becomes a huge issue it is world renowned that the person in kibera spends much more money on water than all of us on this set unacceptable in this age and time and i think the covid situation made it worse and i think it's important that the candidates tell us practically what they're going to do about informal settlements in terms of housing that's i think the first thing the second and i think that's the point that uh, prof Omenia was making over the last five years uh, as part of the big four agenda the uh, government has been telling us that housing is one of the critical things of the big four agenda if you look across Nairobi, you do not see how that housing has been delivered but there's a third component of housing that i think we miss uh, I was talking to a friend of mine today morning. If you even go to middle class areas, go to your Kileleshewa, uh, go to your Harlingams, you find that over the last eight years with the coming of Chinese, we have decided to build houses that does not match the services that are available in that place. Uh, places where houses used to be uh, bungalows, where houses used to be two stories, mm -hmm. we now have the 20, uh, 20 story buildings. No improvement in service in terms of water, no improvement in terms of sanitation. Some would say that's, a, that's a, just a reaction to our population growth. 
yeah, and, and trying to cater for it with it, with the limited space that we have, or, or how do you see it? You are saying trying to to, to <laughs> cater for it. They're like not trying. <laughs> it is catering for itself. The beauty of leadership is to ensure that you solve challenges in a manner that is sustainable. You don't allow things to happen on their own. If you go to any of those places, they are close to a slum. It's unacceptable. And if we go with that trend, we'll have situations where people don't. People are busy buying water as opposed to having access to water services. So I'm, I want to hear about how the person who comes in is going to solve the problems of Mukuri and housing, but at the same time, recognize that the people in Kilele also have a housing problem. But two other things that I think are important. Briefly, please. Mm -hmm. I think the two other things that are important for me is I'm looking for a leader who has integrity. So I want to hear questions about what's the integrity of that person because the amounts of money that this is county holds is huge. Uh, when the current, uh, when the former governor took over in 2017, I was being told in this morning, uh, we had a deficit of 15 uh, billion as a county. We're now at 85. Mm -hmm. That means that we increased by 70 billion. Is it that we have been unable to pay or that money has been safer? So I think the issue of integrity is critical. The last issue that's critical, and I think the people who are speaking, I think it's Laila who was talking about it. Nairobi is the international headquarters. Uh, you have several UN organizations staying here. So a leader who recognizes that you are not leading my county, Homabe. Uh, you are leading a, a city that requires huge profile for the benefit of the entire county. I think it's crim extremely critical in terms of the conversation. And I'm sure the people of Homabe would hope that Homabe will get to the state of Nairobi as well. <laughs> yes. But I do get your point, uh, Prof, on the same. And Karen, jumping over to you right now, of the 4.4 million that were identified as residents of Nairobi in the last census, I bet you a majority are young people. Of course, yes. You've had the issues raised, transport, housing, uh, inequality, ETC. Are young people, does Nairobi offer young people, maybe it's a redundant question, does it offer them opportunities? And, 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 and what's your concern with, with the organization you lead uh, this afternoon? So the organization I lead is called the Emerging Leaders Foundation. And the basic thing we do is that we look at the question of values across board, values in government, values in service, in the political space, in community leadership in every aspect of leadership mm. so we nurture values based young people and so this evening I'll be looking to see are these individuals presenting themselves to be elected individuals of values are they leaders of integrity like Dr. Odote put it across because then integrity and values would actually translate to the quality of their leadership um, like many of us have pointed out, the question the about um, income versus date and expenditure versus transformation, needs. it's a big question within the city. And like you rightly put it, majority of the population within the city are young people below the age of 35. The issue about insecurity is, is a big issue. Um, the question about livelihoods, the question about the widening gap between the rich and the poor. What is the agenda of these individuals in terms of reducing that gap and it, raising up families and individuals from the poverty line, you know, to be able to live lives of dignity? So those are some of the things that are really, really keen for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at this moment, I now want to get the thoughts of my panel on the first uh, debate, the one that will kick off in the next hour or so. And of course, this is the seven candidates uh, who polled 5% uh, or less in the most recent polls. And uh, Wanjira, I want to start with you on this one and get a sense. Uh, when I did my own unofficial poll before we started with my panel here, some of you were not aware of some of the names on that list. So what do you do as a candidate this evening when you come for a debate like this? Maybe you're known to some within your spheres of influence. Maybe you're not known at all. What do you do to create impact across all TV and radio stations at a moment like this? Right. I think, uh, first of all, it's great that we have many uh, candidates because that shows that our democracy is working. Right. It shows that people have put themselves forward. What we'd like to see from the alternative candidates, if I can call them that, is I the agenda. They might protest at, at that. They uh, might, they uh, might uh, protest. Let me be very careful. <laughs> Let me be very careful. From the candidates who will be speaking today is agenda setting. Because any time you have a public platform, more so a platform as um, esteemed as the gubernatorial, you know, being a gubernatorial aspirant, you have a platform. So you have the opportunity to shape the discussion. So we want to see how well do they understand the real problems of, of Nairobians, or of Nairobi as a county, as have been espoused here. Because there tends to be... Um, a discussion about Nairobi in legal terms, for instance, the NMS conversation. It was very unfortunate that an unconstitutional action that was supported by the head of state and the head of the county government uh, brought, put 
Nairobi in this situation. An unconstitutional action signed by the current governor. It, it was. It was unconstitutional. <laughs> we went to so court on it. Can... We went to court on mm -hmm. it. The court was, you know, gave our ruling that gave government the opportunity to regularize the process. But Which it was Senate done. Mm -hmm. It was done uh, unconstitutionally without public participation. Now, how well do these candidates understand these dynamics? How well do they understand devolution? Because the other thing we have is candidates with very good ideas, but those ideas might undermine the um, Article 174, the, the chapter on devolution, in terms of how the implementation will be, um, how they envisage the implementation. Um, they have an opportunity to frame difficult conversations, especially around accountability. Mm -hmm. Once you've taken the platform, it's my hope that these candidates will continue to engage and will become a point of accountability because obviously if your numbers are very low, if you're not on a leading position, it shows our democracy maybe is not yet mature enough for an independent candidate or for a candidate from a smaller party to win the big numbers. Okay. But we are heading there. We, we remember during the Moi uh, regime, mm. The opposition had to fight to be profiled nationally, but eventually they made it. So it's to encourage these candidates to say you are breaking ground for us, but please make use of the platform you have beyond um, maybe just profiling yourself. Mm -hmm. Stay in the space. Okay. Let us know who you are and um, have a long-term view. Let me pick up with what you've said with Philip Kisa, who's actually won the politician's heart before, in addition to being a technocrat. And I'm sure you had the chance in 2013 and 2017 to watch previous debates. How much do these debates sway the views of the electorate in your view? Um, Ohiga, let me be very candid. <laughs> that's, that's a great way to begin a statement. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think very, very, I, I, I can tell you. Proceed. <laughs> let me tell you, it has no value. It has no, been, no, then, no, then what are we doing here? Well, you got, Philip Kisi, well, you got, you're telling no, me I these said, men and women have I gathered. Said, I'll, I'll be, I said what? I'll be candid. So okay. Don't get to, have the diplomatic license don't to get be candid. Offended. But just for today. But I'm saying <laughs> that it adds little value. Why am I saying this? There are three fundamental issues that determine who becomes what in the political space in this country. Unfortunately, don't say that I prescribe to what people think. But number one is your tribe. People in this country vote. Talk about Nairobi. Even Nairobi. Even Nairobi. I am talking about Nairobi. People look at the tribe. Which tribe are you coming from? Because eventually, when the voter goes to the booth, he'll be voting a tribe, unfortunately. Number two, linked to the tribe is a political party. Which political party is controlling who? Because most of these political parties are not based on any ideology. They are tribal parties. Let me tell you, they have a group of uh, from different uh, regions and they formed a, 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 a party or a coalition of parties. Okay? Number three, is what about ideology I said? Very unfortunately, number three, right, Waiga? I, I am. I am. Money. <laughs> So if you get into this space and you don't have sufficient um, financial resources to roll out your campaign, you'll be in trouble. Because corporates, people in this country do not invest in politics. They don't give you a time. They don't give you a management information system. They don't give you anything. So they wait until you've crossed the line. Then they pick up a discussion with you. But before you cross that line, you are nobody. I so think, I those, think those, those three, three, I'm telling you, Waigua. Let me get props reaction to this. <laughs> but that's the reality. I'm going to come back to you because it sounds like reality. you have a personal story or two <laughs> behind reality. those. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> if, if Philip Key says to be believed, to be the next governor of a county like Nairobi or any of the other 46 as well, you need to be from the right tribe, right. aligned with the right political party, right. and have money. Nothing that he has spoken to alludes to all the other things you good folks have mentioned to me this afternoon. Oh, they need to have understanding of this. I want them to articulate. None of that has come up in terms of that success formula. I, I, I think generally, um, I will not agree with, 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 with Philip on this one. Uh, I think um, Nairobi and uh, I've just, I'm just from Mombasa uh, the other day and so on. Kenya is becoming way more complex. 
than you'd like to accept. Of course, uh, if you look at Sonko's story last time, I mean, if it was tried, then Peter Kenneth should have won the previous elections. <laughs> but, but then, of course, Sonko had many. So, so we don't know which parameter <laughs> plays what. But I think, uh, um, um, number one, uh, some of these are starting to get overrated. There are some fringe candidates in this country that are making a big impact regardless of their tribe. I mean, let's mention Wajakoya, for example, with his uh, unusual uh, sort of campaigns. Uh, and, 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 and people in Mombasa are saying, look, I mean, uh, we'd rather lose with this guy than all these other fellows who've taken us for a ride. So I think it's exactly quite complex. Um, yes, money plays a big role. The political party does play a big role, I agree. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, this city, um, this city actually has ways of communicating that are very, very interesting. Sorry to bring, use this example, but uh, for example, Kenyans on Twitter, when we complained about uh, the French fries from some country, uh, you know, and it's our children who eat there. Uh, KFC started sourcing locally. So let's not under, underrate, uh, uh, you, you know, the, the space and the platform. Yeah. But having said that, I think, um, for me, uh, I, I, I've, I've had a chance to address the EU Parliament. I've had a chance to address French parties in Europe and so on. Uh, I, would I, would, I would like to say, and this is in relation to the candidates, that really uh, politics is not always about winning. Uh, sometimes we get into politics to put a particular agenda on the table. And the politics may not necessarily even be about winning the gubernatorial race. You could put the correct candidate in uh, Bavado. Um, you know, that, that, that is pushing some local agenda. And like they say, all politics is local, that's where it starts. And, and, and to me, this is the encouragement to all those uh, gentlemen and ladies who are running, that if you do actually have an agenda, put it on the, on the table, do not be afraid. It doesn't matter whether you end up just winning, uh, you know, 2% of the vote and so on. If it's an important agenda for mm -hmm. the city, put it on the table. Okay, that, that's a good uh, message to them. So for you, you're looking at two things, who would sort of come out on top, but also whose agenda will come out quite clearly. Prof. Dotti, I'll come to you shortly, but Karen, I want us to talk about this money tribe, political party, you are yearning for more and more young people to get into elective offices. When you hear what Philip Kisias has to, to, to say, and he said, he's just being honest. He's, he's been out there, I, I don't know who else might have tried to buy on this, I don't know if anyone else has given it a shot, but he has, Karen and he says so. this is the reality <laughs> on the ground. Unless Karen, you are also. <laughs> I have been in in politics before, but I put it aside to then do the work I'm doing now. Mm. But let me also be very honest: such a debate is a really, really powerful platform for accountability. I have seen communities around the city organizing their own small. Aspira bringing together aspirants and asking the questions and asking them to sign to peace, to sign to doing certain things once they get elected to office. Mm. And there's accountability when it comes to that through, let's say, civil society organizations, communities and young people. And I do not refute the fact that money plays a big part uh, in who gets elected. Um, and that the political party Karen, again... I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to give okay. you a chance uh, to carry on. Let me introduce one of uh, the candidates who's just stepped in. This is uh, Nancy Wamboi Mwadime of the Usawa Kwa Water Party. Uh, there she is making her way uh, to this, uh, to her, obviously she'll be escorted to her holding uh, room uh, where she will then wait for another uh, possibly uh, one, one hour or under. Uh, for the start of the debate uh, that she'll be featuring in, Nancy Mwadime, Usawa Kwa Wote, is the uh, political party that she was cleared to vie on uh, under, the, uh, uh, under the most recent uh, gazetted IBC list. Nancy Wamboi Mwadime is the name, one of the seven candidates making her way now into this uh, facility here at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. The debate will be taking place at the Pope, uh, jo Pope po John Paul VI, uh, education and Learning Center, and that's where the debate uh, will take place this evening. Both debates and the subsequent debates uh, on the 19th and on the 26th as well. Next week, uh, uh, Tuesday, and the other week, Tuesday, as well. Uh, I'll be introducing the other candidates as they come in. Esther Waringa Thairo, an independent candidate, has also uh, arrived here, and I'll continue giving you those updates. We should have at least three now uh, who are present here, if not more, and as soon as the teams give us an update, I will bring that uh, your way. Uh, Karen, briefly, I can allow you to finish your point. Yes, um, political parties. We have watched the last one month, a couple of weeks actually, even today. Uh, so InfoTrack and Tifa have released... Uh, 
polls about political party popularities versus uh, candidates running for office. And you can see some individuals defying the political party lines and, and going beyond that. So parties, I, I, I don't think parties carry much weight like they did uh, in the past, though there's, there's something around political parties. And in terms of tribe, I am seeing a situation where different political parties are coming together to form the coalition to say, let's run together. And they are not just on one tribe or, or a couple of tribes, you know. So tribe is really, again, not a big factor. I am seeing a situation where track record is going to count because there's been a little more awareness about politics and the impact of politics and the quality of life that we live um, as, as Kenyans and as citizens. But when it comes to political financing, I, I believe that, that is, we, is, we're still quite a, a, a distance it's away. more than the you elephant know. in the room. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it makes we a big still, difference. We still <laughs> need to work on that because sometimes you find candidates who are awesome, have a track record, are men and women of integrity, but they don't get elected simply because they don't have money or they do not want to bribe sure. to then get elected into office. A prof. daughter, pick up off, off the back of that, and I'm sure you have reactions to what some of the other panelists have said, even as you tell us, we've seen an emerging trend Trend. It, it started in the states. Obviously, presidential debates have been happening there long before you know we started here in 2013 under the 2010 Constitution, where, where candidates intentionally stay away from debates. Is that a strategy? Does it work? Does it matter? I think it does for those who stay away because you assess yourself and determine. Uh, this is not my strong point. Uh, I do not want to make my bad situation worse. I do not want to ensure that I, uh, or I don't want to give preference to my opponent. I think my opponent is a better debater. My opponent has a better track record. So I don't want to expose myself. That's the reason why people stay away. So they stay away because of strategy. But I think your original question to us was the people who are coming between 5.30 to 7.30, those who are below 5%, uh, is it, uh, what is, should be their strategy for this debate? And I think the people who are coming between 5.30 and 7.30, from the numbers, uh, I think they cannot run the campaign as those above five percent. Because those above five percent, then the factors that, especially the first two factors that Philip spoke about, becomes critical for them. Uh, the, the, the factor of the tribe uh, gives you recognition. Uh, the fact of the political party gives you recognition. The reality is that those two factors don't give recognition to the people below five percent. So they must play on something else, and that's the critical question. And I think playing on something else. Today becomes a critical day for them because playing on something else means that you must have an issue on which people recognize you for. I don't want to talk about this election, but remember Molly Mudida. We still all remember Molly Mudida. From where? Do you remember what issue he stood for? No, but we remember him from the debate. <laughs> Not because of the issue, Not from, the of the debate. from the debate. Yes. yes, and you remember him from the debate because uh, the strategy for Dida was not the issue. The strategy for Dida was to come to you as this simple a Kenyan who represents you, Correct. who is able to avoid complicated things and speak even until today, there's jokes on Twitter about Dida com uh, commenting about this election and you will listen to it. If I ask you, who are the other presidential candidates? <laughs> you won't remember five of them. Yes. Uh, so I think that the person who comes today, if you are these seven people, you must ask yourself, I want to leave a mark on the minds of Nairobi. And remember, there are 24 percent of Nairobians, at least according to yeah, the polls, mm -hmm. that are undecided. Uh, those people are not thinking about the tribe. They're not thinking about the. Pol they're looking for something different. So your duty must to give them that something different. The question is, what do you consider as that something different? For me, looking at 5:30 to 7:30, that's all I'll be looking for. What is it that is different in this person that will make me stop and listen to? It? Because that's what the Nairobian will listen to. If you go to Germany, for example. Uh, there's a party that only stands on environment. Correct. That's all. So they only want to appeal to you. They don't, they don't care about the other things. So you must be able to fashion yourself, if you're these seven people, on something that people can be able to say, wait a minute, although I thought Waiga was my candidate, I actually think Shiro is talking about something that I should stop at least. It resonates with yes. me. Yes. Uh, Philip, you took us on a tangent. We've gotten <laughs> lost in it. Uh, <laughs> you, you vote, but you've been told, however, that there are fringe candidates who lack some of the things you've mentioned but still make an impact. Mm. Do you agree that that, that anomaly can happen? And, and if you've seen such examples, you know, what, what are those other factors that these fringe candidates have beyond money, tribe, and power and access to it that could make a difference in a race like this? Well,
you know, sometimes it is better to be brutally honest to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now what I've said is from my heart. You do yes. not retract it? I'm <laughs> not going to retract it because that is the bitter truth. Now, um, just before I answer your question, you know, I think the debates are very important. I cannot, um, uh, you know, underscore the importance of such a debate. As a matter of fact, if you go back to history, NCBDA, where the chairman, was the first one to organize a presidential debate. You can check the records, okay? So I put, up, I put a lot of weight on uh, such a debate. Now, um, let me just very quickly comment on uh, uh, what my brother, Prof. Menya, said. In politics, you have no business being number two. <laughs> because if you are number two, you cannot sell your agenda. You, you get into political space so that you can get power. Yes. You don't get in there to be number two. Number two is irrelevant. Actually, number two is no better than number ten. You're all the same. <laughs> because you've all lost. Okay? Well, you know, totally you've all lost. disagrees with you've you. You've completely lost. <laughs> and you have once, the right to reply and after this. One, one, one second. And once while you've lost, you become irrelevant. That's a bitter truth. In Kenya, you can ask many people who have been there, including myself. <laughs> okay. You know, and, unless you have something else to offer, unless you have something else to offer Kenyans beyond politics. Okay? Now, if things like track record were to be taken into account mm. by political parties in this country, Philip Kisia would have been a governor because of a track record. Jimmy Nambaru would have been a governor because Jimmy Nambaru has a track record. Even Peter Kenneth, who, who tried, and I warned him, and I told him, Peter, once you meet, you miss that um, uh, 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 Nini, uh, ticket, yeah. once you miss that ticket, please just uh, step back and start lobbying for a job. That's the reality. So, What did he respond? Uh, of course, he never listened to me. And he, you know, well, he's not here I, to give his side of the I had somebody talk about uh, uh, Kenyans on Twitter. People on Twitter don't vote. Go and check. The guys who vote, the 24% uh, prof is talking about, mm. those 24% are waiting for direction from either Baba or the Hasula man. <laughs> they're waiting. Like in Nairobi, they're waiting to hear. Baba has not come to tell us which is the direction. Are we voting A or B? Once Baba gives that direction, you can be sure. You can be sure because if you look at the two candidates, if you look at the two candidates, talk about the two that if you look, the, 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 two, the two that have appalling beyond 5%, right. if you look at, if you analyze that data that we have, you'll find that 20% of people supporting Raila and Nairobi have, are not supporting the Azimio candidate. So what are they waiting for? Are they waiting for Baba to talk, to say something? Are they waiting for that? But I can tell you the issue of competence here will not count. You can wait until, maybe in future, in future, things like experience, competence, integrity. In fact, when you look at integrity, yes, integrity is about, about number 10. <laughs> go and check. InfoTrack, go and check. <laughs> Tifa, people don't care about integrity. In fact, actually, the, the in, biggest concern... So, most, most of the times, is, is most, of the times mm -hmm. most of the times, mm. if you've stolen public funds, you become a fan of the people. If you've stolen public funds. Because then you're able to do what? To deal with their stomachs. Tumbo policy. You remember what Moy said? The Moy... So if you can, you know, and the voter will tell you, you know, when I was going around the Westlands, the yes. voter would tell this me. Is your this, example well, for well, this one. Yes. My personal example. Yes. They will tell you, you know, uh, uh, we've had you. We know you're competent. What are you giving us now? Yeah. Forget about talking. Wake a kid to come here. This just a few months back. Yeah, I mean, about uh, seven, eight weeks ago. Seven, eight weeks. Forget ago. about what I was talking to them. My ideology, my level of integrity, my experience, all those put in one basket. To them didn't make sense. What made sense is how much Kiongozi, and when they tell you Kiongozi, we've not seen you on the ground, it does not mean, it does not mean that they have not seen you. It means they have not tested your money. Go and ask Jim Nambaru, go and ask Jim Nambaru what happened to him, how many votes he got, and he's a billionaire. I'm not a billionaire. He's a billionaire. Go and ask my friend uh, Peter Kenneth what happened to him in 2013, and I told him, please step back and go and look for uh, Nani, for yeah. Uhuru. He'll give you a job. He never listened to me. Right. Philip, Where is he now? Philip Kisi, I need to speak to all those individuals <laughs> and get their side of the story. What do you know? Right. Yeah, Philip is... It uh, may be hard truths, but it sounds <laughs> like he knows something. He's been there. He, he has he been there. Right. He, <laughs> he has been there. Um, the dispensation we are moving from, the winner takes all dispensation, which the Constitution tries to temper. Um, and the reason I disagree 
um, when you talk about fringe candidates, number one being the only important candidate, that's not true. Legislation in the House can be brought by the, any party. So by, the virtue, by virtue of a fringe candidate profiling themselves, that party has got members, some of whom will run at MCA level. So the moment you're profiling your political party, there, it's not just one seat we are looking at. There is the governor, there is also the MP, there is also the important seat of the MCA. And an MCA in the House has a vote that counts for citizens. So I don't agree that it's a winner-takes-all. Our constitution has sought to remove that winner-takes-all uh, approach. Now, I do agree, unfortunately, that politics has become a lot about money. Our electoral system is still broken, but we are in the process of trying to reform it. And how are we trying to reform it? Um, when you have candidates putting forward an agenda that they can then popularize with the public, you put pressure on whoever will get into that seat. And I think the last point I want to make is the Constitution envisages a consultative, cooperative approach of government. Now, it's, it's, our Constitution isn't perfect, our political framework is not perfect, but it is not a winner-takes-all. You have seen decisions of the President being countermanded, whether it's by the courts, whether, you know, in fact, court action taken by civil society institutions or individuals like uh, Omtata can go to court and hold the President to account. So every political space counts we are no longer in the winner takes all dispensation and we must encourage kenyans to be bold stand up but also know that you've got a lot of political clout that you can pull from very many corners so it's not just the governor one of the challenges the governors have faced and this is where i agree in our this uh, our kind of very poor political is the role of the MCA. So much as a governor is going to come and give us a political promise, they then have to deal with the politics of running the county, the civil, uh, the public service, but also the, the county assembly. And this has been a real weak link in terms of devolution. So fringe candidates are like the main candidates of the larger parties operating in a very imperfect system. But we have the opportunity to set agendas. Even as civil society, we also set agendas. We have passed policies. We have gotten um, uh, laws passed, even in this county. And we do it with, um, in some cases, with nominated members. And I think for you, so, setting the agenda is, is so crucial, sometimes even more crucial than winning. More crucial than winning. The gap we have yes. is implementation. The non-implementation is a challenge that plagues all. And so we still need to push with accountability. Okay. So no, fringe candidates have a role. There's a lot of opportunities for power and pushing. Let us take them. Let us encourage fringe candidates. Let us encourage those out there and get rid of the winner-takes-all mentality. That one is not right and it's not taking us forward. Okay. Well, uh, I wish to add to that. Okay. You Be say that uh, the number one issue of concern for Nairobians is the cost of living. Cost of living. But you see how that is actually directly related to the question of values and integrity. So right now, as candidates are busy campaigning, people are saying, give me something for me to listen to you, for me to listen to what you have to offer. They will go ahead and give them that something they want, but how will they recoup that money? They get into office, they will look for the slightest opportunity to actually make their money back. So it's, it's more now about self not the interest of the public at heart. So again, it brings us back to the question of values that integrity actually counts. It's, it's the cornerstone and it determines the question about whether people live in dignity or not. And, and Philip Kisia says he's never been asked about integrity questions when he goes <laughs> on the campaign trail. It's a different question altogether. And you rated integrity very high. In fact, I think you are the first one on this panel to say that's what I'll be listening out for. Compare and contrast what you're feeling today with, with, with Philip, Philip's honesty. Statement that I think it might uh, matter here, but it, it, it might not matter on the campaign. You know, I think here. we are talking about two sides of the same coin. Uh, so I think there's a point that everybody is making. The point that uh, Philip is making is that the current situation is that this is what people look for. Uh, that you're either number one or uh, last. I think this debate, in my view, is not about uh, what is. This debate is about what should be.
because the debate, uh, if my understanding of the role of the media is, it's also about shaping public opinion. So if any of these people who have number five is going because he wants to be number one, that is his principal motivation, to be brutally honest, to borrow the words of Philip, they're in the wrong space. Uh, but if uh, they recognize the role that they are playing in this process, and that role is to bring us to a situation where the person who runs should not be winning based on lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. They should not be winning based on tribe. They should not be winning based on political party only. And I think they have a critical. But if you look at this election, the thing that is interesting, I was telling somebody that I think except for very few, re look at those who have been declared elected and opposed in this election. How many? Just two. Two, or actually three. One women rep from Kericho and two MCS from the Rift. Uh, in, across the country, many of the places, before, if you are from the right political party, after nominations, you came yeah. to Nairobi and waited to be elected. I can guarantee you, uh, Wahiga, the bulk of the MPs are in the village. Because there is no guarantee. In fact, the political party has become a yoke in many of their necks. Mm. Yes. Yes. So Kenya is changing, yeah. which is a nice thing. The one place where we haven't changed is money. Uh, I think that the amount of money being dished out by a political party, in fact, you go to a rally, people don't want to listen to you. They want to line up. So yeah. for me, I see the candidates coming today, moving us away from this thing about integrity does not matter. Moving away from this thing about, you know, if I'm from the wrong political party, if I'm from the wrong tribe, I will go nowhere. And I think there's a critical role for that to happen. The latest well. survey, I believe, by a research institution was that you need about 26 million to be a member of parliament in this country, 39 million to be a senator. Uh, and that's in terms of what you, you know, mobilization uh, and of course all these other things that Philip Kisi has spoken of. And, and if you spend 40 million on your campaign, what are you hoping to recoup once you get into office? Uh, Prof, we need to move forward. We need to talk about NMS. We need to talk about the, of the next governor. But I know you, you, you might have a final comment on this. Yeah, but my brief comment on this is that uh, we really need to look at this from a governance point of view rather than an individual. In fact, I think uh, uh, Philip could have gotten into trouble because he was... Uh, you know, the star performer outside there. Myself, I'm quite <laughs> excited that, uh, you know, we have almost uh, seven parties represented here on this gubernatorial uh, 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 debate. But also, um, uh, what, was, what kept coming to mind, uh, Nairobi has been terrible in terms of participation and engagement of citizens, uh, hence the NMS issue. But, but, but then uh, I, was, I was thinking about Mandera. That has been amazingly stable, where we had a governor uh, who actually had no MCS. <laughs> All MCS came from the opposing party. And when I sat with Robba and asked him, how is he governing the, the county? He told me, no, no, no. There are systems, there are programs, uh, the, the, there's agreed, the, M the MCS consult, there are house committees and so on, and uh, it is his role as a governor to implement. And I was like, oh, I wish so many other governors would look at this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest problem with this country and is the biggest problem with this county. They, they must start to understand that what we're trying to create is a political system, a governance system. We are not looking for stars who are going to mesmerize us with brilliant ideas. We are looking for people who will go and have debates with those fellows who cannot understand policy, but get to the heart of their problem and, and, and start engaging them. People will listen to parties and what parties are putting on the table. People will sit down with MCAs and, and, and their gender and convince them. You know, people would actually develop a plan and implement it. Not these useless um, buffoons, you know, <laughs> wearing gold dog chains and, 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 and entertaining people. Uh, you know, uh, those people have no space in governance. If you don't belong to them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will, we will leave it there for now. Let's switch gears. Let's talk NMS a little bit because you cannot talk about Nairobi County for the last five years without referencing NMS. It's a record. What you what worked in your view? What didn't work as well? Majiro already made her uh, her, her feelings uh, quite clear. So I'll, I'll come back to you shortly. <laughs> Let me hear first from you, Philip Kisia. Uh, when, when the history books are written of the tenure of the NMS, what will they say about NMS in your view? What did NMS get right? What uh, did it get wrong? Even as we discuss how it got into office. Now I think um, uh, our sister Majiro uh, um, made it very clear that uh, the route that the government took to um, put uh, NMS in, in place may have had uh, some faults. It was maybe, for lack of a better word, it was illegal. But it did not involve the, the people who are being governed. 
But that aside, was it necessary, given the time that uh, uh, this presidency had left? He had, two, uh, I think, two or three years left in office, and Nairobi being the capital, he had to take action. So maybe, other than blaming the person who took action, we probably need to look at, relook at the, um, the, uh, the, um, the act that governs um, uh, uh, counties. How fast can we remove a governor who is not performing? Because the, 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 the process is too tedious. It takes time. By, by the time you remove him, his time is over. So back to NMS. NMS, of course, I think if um, in terms of short term, there's something that you can see. There are roads that have been fixed. Mm -hmm. There are pedestrian walkways that you can see. There are hospitals, dispensaries, which have been built, but I'm told there's no medicine, but at least there's something. So they've done something. But I can tell you, from where I sit, they could have done much given the resources that have been deployed to NMS. Okay, and that's why I'll interrupt you because I'm yeah. told we have an update we need to give, but I'll come back to you as we dig deeper into those four functions that were allocated to the NMS, health, uh, transport, public works, and planning as well, and development services. But first things first, we continue to, and of course my colleagues are across this campus here at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, really trying to get you updates as and when we have them. Let's now hear from Leila Mohammed and uh, Francis Gashuri as more candidates continue to stream in. Leila and Gashuri? Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Waihiga. Indeed, the hour is nigh. In the next 30 minutes or so, we are expecting the main event to begin proper. Quite uh, a convincing panel that you have there, and uh, they're articulating matters to the 2.5 million registered voters in this county of Nairobi. Many have spoken about unemployment. Mm -hmm. The cost of unga for them, Gashuri, Gashuri is very critical to them. Uh, water, uh, transport for this in, uh, area and insecurity are some of the very few basic things that Nairobians are looking for. Currently, we are aware that three of our invited guests are here, Gashuri. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can take us through a run of who these individuals are. And uh, we also have our other crew members who are in this expansive campus that is choir this afternoon. Absolutely and just before I go there uh, Leila it is important to, ta to point out that Nairobi uh, just as a critical county as it is um, home to millions of Kenyans, 4. Point something million of them, uh, to, to 2.5 million of them registered as voters. Some of the critical issues they will be looking out to when they are deciding who will be the next governor of Nairobi County include basic issues like economy, the county's economy cost of living, infrastructure, transport, you know, water, sewerage, such uh, facilities, such uh, services. Uh, remember, quite a number of these functions are also devolved, but much as they are devolved, remember there is the relationship between the national government and the county government. Nairobi County, Leila, receives their biggest chunk of the devolved resources every financial year. So you're also looking at a person who can be able to manage the resources that will be allocated to county government of Nairobi. And not just the county government of Nairobi, but also the on um, the, the, the resources that are sourced from within, you know, the licenses that people pay, uh, the levies that people pay. So you're talking about a budget running to close 30, trillion, uh, 30 billion shillings. So you need somebody who has the capacity to manage the resources. And so their ability to respond to, the, to, respond to the questions that, that will be posed by our, our, our moderators and our panelists insofar as the question of economy is concerned is very, very critical. So if you wanted to come to this debate, please do home, watch the TV stations, listen to the radio stations across the country. Even the digital platforms will be alive because um, you, if you're not an invited guest, you will not be able to, uh, to get access uh, to this facility. Our colleagues Beatrice Gatwanye and, uh, and uh, Frederick Muitereri will be at the registration desk and they will be taking you through what is happening there. And so um, the guests continue to arrive. And by the way, Leila, uh, I see people asking questions. Why do we have two debates, two separate debates, two tiers of debate? Mm -hmm. One because um, the there's a, a series of opinion polls that were conducted. And, and those who got 5% and above will yeah. participate in the first tier of debate. And those who got less than 5% uh, will, t uh, will, will participate in the second tier of, uh, of debate. So the second tier of debate will begin at 5.30 p.m. up to 7 p.m. And the, sec uh, the, the first tier will... Uh, uh, the second tier of debate uh, of debaters uh, will have their time uh, between 5.30 and 7 p.m. 
and then 7.30 p.m. to mm -hmm. 9 p.m., uh, the first year of uh, the governor candidates uh, will be uh, here. And so, Leila, let's go to the registration desk where Beatrice Gatonya is. And Beatrice, come on to Nataka Kutoka Nyumbani, aje kunye hii debate. Beatrice kabla hujazungumza Zulia Nyekundu ipo tayari sijui ulipo ni shughuli gani ambayo inaendelea kwa sasa manake in less than 25 minutes the main event is expected to begin proper uh, kindly give us a mental picture physical one on what is happening at the exit or the entrance of this campus As Asante sana mtazamaji kama jinsi ambavyo umekuwa kitazama huu ni mjadala mkubwa kabisa wa wawaniaji kiti cha ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi tisa wanawake pamoja na wanaume ambao wangependa kuiongoza kaunti hii uh, kuanzia tarehe tisa mwezi Agosti mwaka mbili na mbili yani mwezi ujao na tunazungumzia siku nane kutoka sasa wana Nairobi wataamua ni nani atakayekuwa akiwaongoza na hapa ambapo nilipo mtazamaji ningependa tu kueleza kwa ufupi ni yapi ambayo yanaendelea hapa iwapo mpiga picha wangu ataweza ku, eh, kukuonyesha hapa ndipo wageni waalikwa wanafika na kujiandikisha na inathibitishwa kuwa kwamba ulikuwa umejiandikisha na kisha unapewa uh, tag kama hii ambayo <laughs> nimeishikilia hapa uh, hii yangu imeandikwa the presidential debate 2022 Nairobi governor debate alafu kisha jina langu uh, na ninafanya nini hapa mtazamaji kama ambavyo ambavyo umeona kwamba hiyo ndio tag ambayo unapatiwa utakapofika mahali hapa iwapo uko nyumbani na ulikuwa unafikiria kwamba ah kufanya sasa hivi wacha nikimbie kule kwea mimi nijione moja kwa moja mm -mm, hautaruhusiwa kufanya hivyo iwapo hauko umejiandikisha kupitia mtandao na kisha uweze kufika mahali hapa kila mgeni ambaye anafika katika eneo hili ili kuweza kuhudhuria mjadala huu uh, wa waniaji ugavana hapa katika kaunti ya Nairobi hawataruhusiwa kufika hapa iwapo hawatapitia katika eneo hili ambapo wanathibitishwa kwamba wao ndio wageni waalikwa uh, na baada ya kuthibitishwa wanapewa Ehe, eh, kadi kama hii hapa unaiweka kwenye shingo lako ili usiwe na hali ya utata uh, na wale ambao wanatuwekea usalama katika eneo hili. Na mtazamaji hapa ni eneo la kuthibitishwa kwamba wewe ni mgeni ambaye ulikuwa umealikwa na kabisa umefika uh, na ukisha baada ya hapa unaelekezwa hadi eneo ambalo unastahili kuwa na huo ndio uh, katika eneo um, ambalo mjadala wa siku ya leo utakuwa ukifanyika ukumbi uh, wa hapa uh, kwea na mtazamaji ningependa kukuelekeza upande ule mwingine ili uweze kupata picha kamili ya jinsi mambo yalivyo hapa jioni ya leo uh, kwani wageni wetu na hasa wale wabaniaji kiti cha ugavana watakapofika kuna eneo maalum ambalo wametekwa Uh, watakapofika wanaketi wanapumzishwa wanapoka kikombe cha maji eh sharubati kidogo hapo ili waweze kuwa katika hali nzuri kabisa watakapofika pale uh, kwenye ukumbi kuweza kukabiliana na kuwaeleza wana Nairobi yale ambayo wananuia kuwafanyia na kwa sasa naomba ni kuelekeze kwa mwenzangu Frederick Mwitereri ambaye yuko katika eneo hili maalum ambapo uh, wageni ambao tayari wamefika Eh, atakuwa kitueleza ni akina nani wamefika ah, na wanajihisi vipi jioni ya leo wamejiandaa vipi ili kuweza kukabiliana na wenzao katika mjadala huu wa wawaniaji ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi Frederick Mwitereri iwapo unanipata mpira kwako Shukran sana Beatrice Gatonye kutoka shirika la KBC mtazamaji jinsi ambavyo ulielezwa hapo awali ni kwamba matangazo haya yanakuja kwako kupitia television zote humu nchini vile vile radio zote za kitaifa na radio zote za mashinani zaidi ya radio na televisheni 85 kufikia jana walikuwa mesa watakuwa kipeperusha matangazo haya na kwa vile vile ah, kuna wale wenye kwenye mitandao ya kijamii vile vile tuko pale kwa hivyo mtazamaji tunashukuru sana wewe ambao umetuenzi na kuendelea kutazama television yako ambayo unaipenda Samien Frederick Mitiriri kutoka kituo kinachokuwa kwa kasi zaidi humu nchini TV 47 hapa mahali ambapo nilipo mtazamaji 
ni mahali ambapo ni muhimu sana ni kituo cha kwanza wanapofika kutoka pale ambapo Beatrice Gatonya yupo wanafika hapa wanakuja hapa wanapewa mankuli kidogo kitu kidogo unaona zuria tu ni tamu sana ile ambayo iko mahali hapa wageni waheshimiwa ambao tulikuwa tunasubiria wako mahali hapa nitakuwa nikisemezana nao baadaye 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 mtazamaji tu ni kueleze tutakuwa tukipiga kura kama mpiga picha wangu atakuonyesha tutakuwa tukipiga pi, kura baadaye tu ili kukuonyesha e, mtazamaji wetu hivi ndivyo tutakuwa tumesimama hapa lakini baadaye muda wa dakika kama ishirini hivi ama kumi hivi kutoka sasa lakini kwa sasa mtazamaji sababu hapa ndipo tunaita kwa kimombo holding area mahali wale ambao vana mwezi wa agosti tarehe tisa wapo hapa nizungumze na wawili watatu ambao wamefika hapa wanieleze wanahisi kiwewe ndani yao au wanasema kwamba wako tayari nianze na Haman ambaye ni kijana mdogo sana miaka mitano ambaye atakuwa kiwania ugavana kwenye county ya Nairobi asante sana thank you so much for coming today how are you feeling today um, thank you so much for having me today um, feeling good uh, very confident uh, right now we're just waiting for the debate to start and i'm taking this time to prepare meditate collect my thoughts and uh, I'll relish the opportunity to brief the nation on my manifesto and my plans on how to help Nairobi. Thank you so very much. Unamsikia anasema kwamba hapa anajitayarisha pole pole sababu mjadala utakuwa ukianza. Kumbuka kuna mijadala miwili siku ya leo. Kuna mjadala wa kwanza ambao unastahili kuanza mwendo wa saa moja dakika 30 hivi th- dakika 30 uh, kutoka sasa hadi dakika 20 hivi mtazamaji. Vile vile Hayuko peke yake Haman tuko naye uh, Esther Waringa Asante sana na karibu katika matangazo yetu ya siku ya leo unajihisi vipi I I feel confident this is a day that I've been waiting for and I'm happy that uh, it has come mm-hmm. it's today mm-hmm. so I'm confident of this day and I thank God for everything that he has brought me this far Thank you very much Did you come with your family No I came with friends my family is they are not here they are in the US So I came with the uh, friends uh, many of them. Being in the US I know they are asleep or they are just waking up are they watching the debate? In fact they are. They are actually <laughs> communicating with me as I'm here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they are quite excited and happy. Very well. Yes. Asante sana mtazamaji. Ni wale ambao tu wamefika kwa hivi sasa e, na kuonyesha tu picha mahali ambako wanakuja wanastarehe kidogo wapumzishe. Ah ndio e, siwe wakifika pale mbele wana kiwewe. Ha, niende kwa yule mwingine bwana Nyamwamu ambaye ashafika hapa atueleze naye anahisi vipi siku hii ya leo. How are you feeling today about the debate? Uh, pretty good actually. Uh, we've been campaigning in the ground very hard. Uh, drumming up support uh, so we are ready to sell our, our manifesto so as to speak uh, to the broader audience using television so i'm really excited about that thank you very much asante sana mtazamaji alikuwa mtu wa kwanza au mwaniaje wa kwanza ambaye alifika mahali hapa kwa hivyo yuko tayari anasema kuhakikisha kwamba wale wakazi wa mji wa Nairobi wanamsikiza siku ya leo na we mtazamaji ukiwa hapa jijini Nairobi na msikiza na uweze ikiwa utampa kura zako kutoka hapa nitakuwa nikirejea baadaye baadaye ili kupiga kura hiyo ambayo nimekueleza hapa tutakuwa na wawaniaji saba kwenye kipute cha kwanza kisha kipute cha pili nitakuwa nikikueleza kwa sasa ni mpe wa higa mwaura aendeleze matangazo yetu Shukran sana Frederick Mutiriri tunaomba uendelee kutupasha eh, wengine wakiingia tafadhali uh, and of course we we'll continue to give you more updates we know that when there is quorum there a ballot process will take place to allow the uh, respective candidates uh, to go through this process a very important one because it determines where they'll stand on that stage all seven candidates it's not uh, you know randomly chosen rather the ballot will determine where they'll stand the speaking order they make their first or opening statements and as they make their closing statements as well and i know that will be happening shortly we we were shown a, a glimpse of that uh, as our frederick mutiriri uh, continued to uh, speak to the various candidates that have already arrived uh, kenneth nyamwamu was the first to arrive vying on a united progressive alliance uh, party ticket uh, the little the history we could get of his he's a data analyst Uh, also has been I, i believe a registered nurse and worked overseas at some time uh, we also had uh, um, esther waringa thairo an independent candidate uh, she's the ceo of a property company uh, and of course harman sing 
Grewal of the Safina Party. Uh, he's a legal brand developer, helps uh, law firms to develop their brand. Mm -hmm. He also has uh, some sort of ICT expertise. He's also an athlete who I'm told vied or competed uh, for Kenya in the 2019 Kabaddi World Cup. We are expecting uh, Agnes Kaguri, an independent candidate. She's an insurance executive and a businesswoman. Uh, Dennis Ko of the Liberal Democratic Party, as, as a journalist, and uh, has also been a diplomat to the African Union. Uh, Nancy Mwadime, who's also in the real estate sector under Usawa Kwawote Party uh, ticket. Cleophas Kio, uh, Ford Kenya, formerly the ICT uh, director at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Those are seven names, and those seven are the ones expected for that first debate that actually kicks off in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. The clock is ticking. Uh, debate day now almost turning into debate evening, uh, uh, even as uh, we get closer and closer to that 5.30 p.m. start. But we were talking briefly, matters NMS, and of course also reflecting on some of those statements made by uh, those candidates, even as they give their expectations. You can see a, a measure of what not, they, they're expressing confidence, but one can imagine an anxiety that comes upon you as the moment gets closer and closer for you to address the nation. Philip, you said you organized the first one was NC NCBDA. NCBDA. You are an organizer, though, for that one. Yes. Yes. And uh, what, what came out of it? I mean, it was... Uh, you people are built on what we started. And that's why I say that I also believe in debates. Because when we started, there was no interest. The interest level was very low. But I'm happy now, uh, you know, um, out of, uh, I think, seven or uh, nine candidates on... Uh, this race have offered themselves and they're here. So the interest level is, is growing. And like the other panelists said, that, I mean, who knows? Five, ten years from today, these debates will mean a lot. They will mean a lot. Because then people start looking at issues and not sh short-term gain. But for the time being, for another maybe five or ten years, short-term gain is what is really selling the candidates. And when we're offline, I was talking to Prof, and he said, yeah, I mean, he agrees, but maybe he may not want to say it uh, <laughs> on air. But money, money, I'm telling yeah, you. There's an online money, version and money an offline but version. Let us get back to NMS. You had asked whether they have done well. I've said, of course, they have done well, uh, considering where they took the country, uh, the county from. Would you have better have the governor who was elected, who probably was not doing a very good job, He's, he's or rather different. have NMS who have done something. But I can tell you, uh, no, I mean, you can shake your head. This is a reality. <laughs> so you're shake your head very hard. Not me. <laughs> no, let, let my sister shake her head very hard. But that's the reality. Because it's about results. And if you're not getting results, are you going to waste your time with this character who's not uh, producing the desired results? Because if you do waste your time, the blame will shift to you. And in this case, the blame was going to shift to one Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta who gave us Mike Sonko. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, NMS. Where could NMS have done better? Brief. We have mm -hmm. um, uh, na, the, the new plan. Nairobi, uh, na, na, uh, Nairobi Integrated Urban Development Master Plan. Mm. Okay? It's very simple. This is a document that was produced by Nairobians. I have not seen the main reference to this plan. If they were making reference to this plan, we would not have seen the green terminus where it is. My brother is a, is a planner. How can you say you want to decongest CBD and smack into CBD you bring a terminus with, a, I think, a thousand vehicles per day? What logic was behind um, um, you know, um, uh, that particular project? Was it just um, uh, space or opportunity for people to make money? I'm yet to get answers because I've consulted planners in this country and they have told they have told me clearly they were not part of that plan so there are certain things that um they, they would have done better with the money that they have received from the national government and i can tell you when i was running the city the highest transfer i got from the national government was 2.9 billion for a year so in my three years i got six billion from the national government nms i think in the last few years i've got what almost 70 billion almost 70 billion they have handled almost over a billion we must be seeing that 70 billion, not just in infrastructure, like health centers that have been built. We must see health centers that are equipped, that have um, uh, medical doctors, that have nurses. What is the point of having a good building without medicine, 
without the personnel. Okay. Well, in, in the most recent interview with the NMS, there was the challenge of a previous debt that the county owed, the, uh, the cancer, for example. But we can get into that a bit later on. You've referenced Prof. Menia, so let me allow him to immediately jump in. And you've, re you've talked a bit about the logic behind the expressway. He's brought up the terminus as well. Let's talk about the thinking around these projects that were meant to decongest the city and, of course, the role of, of, of NMS in implementing some of them. Yes, thank, thanks, Wahiga, and, and I agree fully on this one with, with my brother here, that uh, there are two issues here. I mean, uh, in our law, it's quite clear that um, uh, expenditure, public expenditure, must be done according okay. to a plan, not Prof, outside it's, it's only plan. on a panel yes. like this one I can interrupt a professor. Right. In ordinary life, right. it wouldn't be allowed. The balloting is happening. Let me immediately take our no viewers there, yeah. where we'll get to determine the order in which they will stand at that auditorium. Frederick Mutiriri. Shukran sana wahiga maura jinsi ambavyo mesema ni vizuri sana ni kwamba kitu ambacho tunaenda kufanya wakati huu ni kwamba tutakuwa tukipiga kura. Tuko na wawaniaji wane ambao wamefika kwa hivi sasa, wale wengine watatu tutawasubiria wakifika iwapo wakati ambapo wataingia tutapiga kura nyingine. Lakini kwa sasa sababu tunawaniaji wane, hao ndiyo tutaanza nao, watafika hapa, watachukua nambari hivi. Ile ambayo wataichukua hapo ndipo mahali ambapo watakuwa wakisimama. Tutaanza nae Haman, if you can come. You can pick num a number in here and then show us. Very well, you can show the camera. Show the camera. Show the camera. Show the camera. Ame chukua nambari tatu, kwa hivyo nambari tatu miondoka. You can have your seat, thank you very much. Mam, asante sana. Chukua nambari, kisha utuonyeshe. Ame chukua nambari moja kwa hivyo takuwa kisimama pale akiwa nambari ya kwanza. Sante sana. Thank you very much. Please if you can come, Mr. Nyamuamu. Asante. Chukua nambari pale kisha utuonyeshe. Mtazamaji, tunafanya matangazo haya kwa wazi kweli. Ame chukua nambari ya pili. Asante sana. Thank you. You can have your seat, sir. We appreciate. Mamu karibu sana. Tunapiga kura jinsi ambavyo watasimama wakiingia kwenye mjadala. Anafungua kwa sasa mtazamaji amechukua nambari ya nne. Asante sana. Tunashukuru sana. Hao ndio watakuwa kiingia hivi sasa nilikueleza kwamba mjadala utakuwa ukianza mwendo wa saa moja dakika 30 ni dakika kama kumi hivi kutoka sasa tuko naye Hama ambaye yuko eneo hili ambaye atakuwa kiingia pale ndani vile vile tuko naye Esther Waringa ambaye yuko hapa ndani Nyamwamu yuko hapa ndani kisha tuko naye eh, candidate wa, wanne ambaye yuko hapa ndani hao wote wanne watakuwa kiingia pale ndani na kisha watakuwa kianza mjadala wakiwa wote wanne tulikuwa natarajia saba lakini watatu wakiingia sababu Nairobi huijui watatu wakishaingia tutakuwa wakiingia pale mbele kwa hivi sasa tutakuwa tukirejesha matangazo haya kwa ke wahiga mwaura kisha tatuelekeza tutaenda kwapi well the clock is ticking indeed the debate starting in the next 11 minutes or so four candidates here waiting for another three more but time waits for no man no woman no candidate and the debate will kick off on time of course our moderators are on standby for that and we'll be getting to that shortly uh but let me get one or two final thoughts from my uh guests who are here uh, still with us prof I, I, I interrupted you let me apologize once more and then allow you to make your statement yes no problem i just wanted to add a little bit on to what uh, my brother kisia here was suggesting uh, if you look at our law, um, the Public Finance Management Act, uh, County Government Act, uh, Urban Areas and Cities Act, and, and, and others, um, use, the law is clear that uh, um, expenditure has to happen according to a plan. And planning has to be integrated. And planning is participatory, so it's meant to be a mechanism of accountability. So I know that people were saying uh, um, NMS uh, built an hospital or built a road. The question is, what plan were they implementing? Were they implementing the county integrated plan? Uh, were they implementing an annual development plan from the county assembly and so on? Because the way that was structured was that they, the participatory space was left for MCAs and with no budget. And then meanwhile, I mean, you had the NMS that was doing things. I think as Kenyans, we need to really think why we have uh, the systems and the laws the way we have them. Uh, particularly the, or, or on the matter of um, accountability, um, not just through the systems that we have, but also accountability to the population. I don't care if you gave me a good dictator who's in the roads and so on, who told them I need a road. 
that's that's the question I'll ask. Uh, and, and again, it goes back to, Waiga, to what I was saying there: that this is a city without citizens. We are not treated as citizens of this city. Nobody listens to us. Badi and his people wake up in the morning and create those ridiculous things that uh, 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 Philip was talking about. And now they are talking about. Uh, they are even trying to connect expressway <laughs> to the CBD. That will, that will actually be adding insult to injury. I had somebody from national government saying they forgot to put that one. I mean, it's stupidity. And meanwhile, we have a new plan that actually spells out how the transport system within the city should actually function. All you need to do is to get somebody with a small brain to implement those plans. But what we actually have is an autocratic system that, as far as I'm concerned, has no place in the spirit and the light of the constitution of this country. Uh, Philip Kisi, in, in, in one sentence, because I know I, uh, Karen needs to speak, Prof. Dota needs to speak, Te <laughs> technocrats don't listen to politicians or politicians don't listen to technocrats? I think... Um, uh, what uh, you say in one in sentence? Most, in most cases, politicians don't li listen to technocrats. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Prof. Prof. Dote, come, come in and, and weigh in on this NMS discussion. You are reading even as I the tenure of NMS. I think, coming to an I think several things month? about uh, NMS. Uh, the NMS problem uh, did not start with NMS. Uh, the NMS problem started in 2017. Uh, and that's why for me this debate and the elections are critical. When, uh, when you elect trouble, uh, trouble follows you throughout your entire period and unfortunately trouble followed Nairobi throughout the entire period because when we were electing in 2017 we were electing trouble uh, and I think that's the reality well, yeah. well the man that was elected says he, he, he got in trouble for corruption that, that is his defense that the cartels ganged up against him you know, everybody he's actually looking for a seat in another county as we speak and may even win but everybody has a, def everybody has a defense even the devil uh, must uh, get a defense but the reality uh, two things one is that the transfer of functions to an NMS is actually contemplated in the Constitution. The Constitution contemplates that there may be a situation where the county government fails uh, and therefore you need to transfer functions. So the transfer itself is not unconstitutional. The what is unconstitutional, what is problematic, is the manner in which it was done. The manner in which it was done has demonstrated the troubles you see in Green Park. Uh, that eventually, if you look at uh, NMS performance in terms of the hardware, mm. They've actually delivered in terms of hardware, and I think on that, Philip is right. In terms of the software, we have suffered, uh, and the Constitution recognizes that you don't need one and not the other. You need both. Uh, so when you assess... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll interrupt you because I'm told I have one minute to a break. Let me allow Karen to speak uh, on, on NMS brief. You have, I have one minute before I take a break. I will, I will talk about the bit of uh, listening to, to, the, to the citizens. Leaders need to listen. But a number of times they, they don't come from a place where they genuinely want to, to, to do something for the people and therefore they will listen. Even when it comes to public participation, it's more tokenistic than meaningful. Look, for instance, at the number of young people in prisons today. It's crazy. Look at insecurity. You cannot be walking around the city past 7 p.m. Look at the health care system within the city. People getting locked up in hospitals because they cannot afford to pay to then um, live. Look at um, education in terms of the inequality. Young people studying in the informal settlements versus uh, in the up markets. All these questions, um, if you have a good leader mm -hmm. or you have good leaders who then tap into the power of technocrats around them and make sure implementation is done to the latter, implementation of the plan is done to the latter and there's accountability and you listen to the people because then the power belongs to the people but okay. as it is now, the power belongs to those in positions of authority. Th that is how you see it and, and I'll cut it there. I know we need to interrogate that further. I know Anjiro have your debt. I will repay it after the break. Let's take a short break. You're watching the inaugural uh, Nairobi, Nairobi gubernatorial, gubernatorial debate uh, organized by the Presidential Debate Secretariat. And of course, it looks to be an exciting one. First, 5.30 p.m. Next one at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to touch that dial. Whichever station you are watching or radio station you are listening to. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back We're live from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Let's talk about banking.
Good evening and welcome to the Pope Paul, the sixth learning resource center at the Catholic University of Kenya in Nairobi County. My name is Ayub Abdikadir Abdi of K24 Television. And I am Safin Acheng of KBC. Welcome to the first of two debates between candidates running for the office of governor of the city of Nairobi. It is uh, the first among the six debates under the auspices of the Joint Media Presidential Debate Secretariat. The candidates participating in the debate have agreed to the rules and the guidelines requiring them to conduct themselves with utmost decorum, address each other with respect and extend honor to viewers watching this debate live across all Kenya's broadcast media platforms. The candidates in the debate have also agreed to adhere to the allocated time. Each candidate has two minutes to make an opening statement, one and a half minutes to answer a question, and 60 seconds for a rebuttal. The topics have carefully been selected after a thorough assessment of sentiments of the regular residents and voters in the city of Nairobi. In line with the debate rules and the best practices, the questions we shall ask have not been shared with any of their campaign teams, neither were they discussed or formulated in conjunction with anyone. The questions are entirely our own. An invited audience seated here in the auditorium has also agreed to the debate rules. They have been fully briefed that cheers, jeers, or any other form of noise is not permitted during the debate. We, however, make the exception now as we request the audience to applaud and welcome candidates to the stage. And we begin with the first candidate who will take the first podium in this debate. I call on to the stage Esther Waringa Thairo, an independent candidate. You can give them a round of applause. Appreciate her, she takes her position. And the second candidate you're going to be engaging tonight is Kenneth Nyamuamu of the United Progressive Alliance Party. Let's appreciate him. The third candidate for this debate is Haman Sin Greol of the Safina Party. Also with us tonight, we have Nancy Mwadime. Nancy is uh, running for the gubernatorial race under the Usawa Kwawote Party. And here are the topics for this debate. Governance domain in the city of Nairobi, leadership and integrity, which is a key ingredient in the 2010 Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. We'll also be addressing transport issues and at most important and of importance, we'll also be talking about the living standards in the city of Nairobi. And we begin this debate by just giving you a chance to tell Nairobians who you are and what your vision for the city is. I'll begin with you, Esther Waruga, in order of the ballot that was just done a few minutes ago. You are the first candidate to have your two minutes to tell the city who are you and what is your vision for Nairobi residents. Thank you so much. Um, my names are Esther Waringa Thairo. First of all, I would... Uh, ask you to allow me to give thanks to God for who he is and to give thanks to God for the plans he has for us as a nation and also to give thanks to God for raising men and women who have taken this bold step uh, to be counted by him. I thank all of you, uh, the viewers, and I thank those who are here with us. Special thanks goes to all social media services for giving us this opportunity to be able to present ourselves to the people so that the people can decide who they're going to vote for, who will be their leaders on August 9th. I begin by saying that um, if you look at Nairobi City right now, it's a city that is, has its potential. 
a city that has a vibrant uh, people who are willing to work, a city that has young youth, young men and women who are actually indulging into crimes in order to survive, and uh, a city again that ha uh, the corruption is at peak, a city again that uh, has the looting being done by those who are, who are we, we are electing. It is a very sad situation to see that even our investors are taking businesses away from this country and uh, um, taking them to other countries. So it's a sad uh, situation. And I'm here to say that once I've been elected, I'm going to give an authentic, transformative uh, leadership. And um, I was born and raised in Kawangware. Um, by then it was known as a slum city. But I did not look at myself as a slum girl. But I saw myself as a, a girl in the slum. That made a lot of difference. And okay. that is what your, has kept me here. Your time is up. Thank you. And before I go to Haman Sin Grewal of the Safina Party, we like to state that one candidate of the Liberal Democratic Party, Dennis Hode, did decline to attend this debate in writing, while two other candidates who have been cleared by the poll body IBC did not communicate. Haman, to you, in two minutes, what's your vision for Nairobi County and your priority areas? Okay. My name is Harman Singh Girl. I'm the Safina candidate for Nairobi County Governor. One of the reasons I've been back is because uh, I have a huge uh, background in IT. I was born in Nairobi, I've studied in Nairobi, and uh, I've worked in Nairobi. Uh, initially, I was a lawyer. Uh, after that, I, on the side, I used to practice as an engineer, and we used to do fabrication with my family. After that, I began doing charity work, and I moved into starting my own IT company. IT company founded the first uh, AI lawyer in Africa. And from that, we, be, we began innovating other tech solutions for leading social issues in Kenya. If you'd like to read uh, some of the, the eight-point manifesto I have, you can log on to 47.com, spelled H-A-R-M-A-N, 47.com, and you can download my manifesto in English or Swahili, and we'll detail that uh, in the course of tonight. Um, in my manifesto, you'll see me speaking on how I plan to provide free education, free healthcare, employment to the people of Kenya. Um, I speak on the hybrid economic model. That is something that I will detail further on today. And it's a well-structured plan that circulates heavily on IT and launching Nairobi into the next generation where we can revolutionize how we operate as a country. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and we move to the next candidate, Nancy. Nancy Mwadime, you get the opportunity to tell Nairobians who you are and what your vision for this city is. You have two minutes. My name is Nancy Wamboi Mwadime. Uh, a girl who was born in Moranga and grew up and went to school to Moranga, Mogoiri girls, and later went to school in Senior Chief Koinange, and thereafter I went to India for further studies. And as I stand here, I want to stand for many of us who who's, uh, grow up in up country, then they come to Nairobi, they work in Nairobi, they do business in Nairobi, and they make Nairobi a home for them. And I want to encourage many of us that when the time comes for political leadership, we should not be going back to the village, but you should stay here and make Nairobi a better place. So my, as I said, I'm Nancy Wamboi. I, I stand uh, with Usawa Pati Kwa Wote. Usawa Pati Kwa Wote is a party for all, from up to down. And we, are, we stand for the family to make sure that we make Nairobi a place where we can call a home for all of us. We stand for each and every Nairobians and want to say that it's a right for every Nairobian to eat. It's right for every Nairobian to have water. And therefore, I want to say when I become the governor of Nairobi, I would want to make Nairobi a home for all of us who are here, who are born here, or those who grew up in our country, they came to Nairobi, they made Nairobi their home. I've been here for 30 years, Currently, I am I'm in business, and I've been in business for the last 15 years. And for the years I've been in business, I can understand as a business person. A businesswoman present a, an employer, present a mother, and present a Nairobi, Nairobian. And when I stand here, I want to say...
say that I am presenting the whole group from the employer to, so that so we can make Nairobi a home for all of us. Uh, thank you. And I take note that uh, your time is up. Before we proceed, you can feel comfortable in adjusting your mics according to your heights, and uh, we thank you. Kenneth Nyamwamu of uh, the United Progressive Alliance Party. What are your key priority areas for county number 47? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, first thing that I want to do is I want to make uh, Nairobi business friendly. I feel we have a lot of hardworking business people in Nairobi, but sometimes we are never kind to the business. We, instead of supporting our businesses, we fight our businesses. So my biggest priority is to make Nairobi business friendly. And one of the things that I want to do to make Nairobi business friendly is to slice, to slice all business licenses by 50%. Um, I also, on my plan, I want to provide electricity and water in all the informal sectors. They, contrib they actively contribute to the economy of Nairobi and they should be able to get basic services like water and uh, electricity and sewerage systems. The other thing I would like to do when I uh, become governor is to create a countywide app that will be used by all border borders to create efficiency so that the border borders can operate efficiently and uh, also to also give them safety. Uh, we talk about this issue of border borders, but we dance around it, but nobody concretely puts solutions in place. So my main aim will be to create a countywide app a countywide, not country, countywide app um, that would uh, sort of like an Uber system kind of an app so that uh, the person, it caters for the safety of the border border and the rider that they are carrying. The other thing is to improve service delivery <coughs> to all sectors in, in Nairobi and especially the informal sectors. We need to have a system in garbage collection. We need to have a system in a fire department, the fire department that works. We need to promote our youth in, um, in sports and their talents. And also, uh, my, my other thing is to create an efficient, can it affordable, and um, uh, efficient and affordable public you, system your time is so up. that our people can use. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Your time is up. And you said something that I'd just like to pick up with you as we move into the second question. Mm -hmm. um, do you know that in the last financial year, Nairobi's own source revenue was 10 billion shillings. This is against a target of 16.5 billion shillings. Yes. How do you seek to bridge the gap of uh, 6 billion shillings if one of your priorities is to slash the business licenses fees by up to 50%? So, my, my, uh, the argument behind that is... Uh, uh, when people start businesses in Nairobi, number one, the average life of a business in Nairobi is three and a half years, which is very sad. Two, when they start a business, they pay all their licenses up front uh, because they have to, uh, to pay licenses before they start the business. But after that, nobody is able to renew because the rent is very high, uh, the cost of doing business is very high. So you get that a lot of people are not really paying business licenses. So instead of charging them expensively, why don't we slice the licenses by half and increase the pool of so, so the how revenue do you, reception? How do you seek to bridge the gap of six billion? That's, that, that is the question. Well, you, ask it, you asked it in reference to me slicing the business licenses. So that's how I'm, asking, I'm answering and saying, if we increase the pool of people if we increase the pool of people who are paying these licenses, then we'll have the six billion. But if we don't, then you know we have money getting lost uh, through the enforcement where they go and they harass our business. Thank people. you so much. Your time is up. Thank you so much. And uh, I come to Haman. When you talk about finances, they are key because under the devolved system of governance, funds do follow functions. And according to the Commission of Revenue Allocation 2019, the county can easily collect 78 billion Kenya shillings potentially, but only manage 11 billion. I mean, this is a big loophole. How will you seal it? Um, so I think we need to reflect on how there are many revenue streams that do come to us in Nairobi County. It's a question of, is that 10 billion an actual figure? Or uh, is the actual figure a lot higher and a lot is lost? 
So I think something we need to concentrate on is um, regulating the corruption that does take place. And uh, this is why a huge part of my manifesto dictates how we should digitize uh, the payments coming to Nairobi County Council. There should be no point where we're receiving cash for any payments because it's very difficult to track uh, cash payments. Also, I spoke on uh, how we need to have better revenue generation streams for Nairobi County. Business permits aren't the only way we can generate money as a county. Um, something that has frustrated me is that if you look at Kenya's parastatals, a lot of them have struggled to raise revenue for uh, the government um, uh, operations. And I feel that also if we tap into parastatals and we create new parastatals in Kenya, we can generate revenue. Like something I pushed for was creating um, the biggest call center in Africa in Kenya. And that's something that we can also provide jobs for a lot of Kenyans because the minimum wage in that call center would be about 20,000 per month. So I feel like we should concentrate on reducing corruption and regulating the operation of parastatals and bringing in new parastatals into Nairobi. Thank you. Thank you. And we move to you, Nancy Modime. You spoke very passionately about making Nairobi home. And uh, that was part of what uh, you wanted to do if elected governor on the 9th of August. I want to understand from you how you seek to bridge the gap of how much money Nairobi uh, generates vis-a-vis -vis what it potentially can, can, can generate? Uh, <clears throat> how to make Nairobi a better home? And the first thing we need to do is take care of the business people to make sure that they are able to do their business without any harassment. And uh, especially, I'll give an example of uh, the hawkers. The hawkers, they go in the evening to do the hawking business. So when I'm the governor, I'll make sure that the hawkers are not harassed. In the evening from 5 p.m., we'll have some roads closed and allow the hawkers to do their business without any harassment. On the other hand, we'll also take care of the, 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 business, the business sector, like the, the industry. We shall have dialogue with the business owners, and we see how we can improve the business or how we can make their work easier. On the other hand, we'll also work together with the industry owners to see how we can engage or how we can put some of our unemployment into work for the, those industries. And uh, apart from that, we are also going, I'm also going to make sure that uh, there, is, there is water. Water dis distribution is, is, uh, is taken care of. Because when we have water, we can encourage uh, the Nairobi people even to do the, the family farming or the balcony farming. So with that, we are able to get some food available. Your time is up, but I'll add you 30 seconds just to come clear on something. You said you're going to work on uh, making sure that hawkers are not harassed. And uh, you know that some hawkers uh, operate without the necessary requirements. Some dodge, you know, the procedures that they ought to be going through to be able to operate a business lawfully within Nairobi. How are you seeking to make sure that they are not harassed, yet a, a, a big percentage of, of, of them uh, you'd operate without the licenses that are required, without paying any dues to the county. How are you planning to make this organized? I do believe with dialogue, everything is possible. I'll have dialogue with hawkers, and we see how we can stay together in the city of Nairobi, how they can do their businesses, and they make money, they support their families, and how we can also charge a little fee which is affordable for them. Okay, thank you for your time. I come to you, Esther Waringa Thairo. On governance, it has underneath a lot of thematic areas. And the question of corruption comes up when you mention money in the city of Nairobi. And it seems endemic. What will be your approach? Well, um, with corruption, um, I know it's an issue uh, that is big. Uh, I'm looking at when I become a governor, I'll be in partnership with some bodies like DCI. Uh, EACC, where anybody who is employed before they get the employment, they are vetted, and we, they, are, they should be people of integrity. I'm also looking at uh, cutting down the loopholes of cartels, the cartels that, uh, um, that are done that affect this city. One, we know that uh, in the lands, um, Ministry of Land, uh, I mean, land issue, it's an issue, especially when uh, it comes to land that is allocated to 
uh, to the county. Uh, I would also look at um, the functions of um, what is happening, especially with the land in leasing. Most of the land's uh, lease expires in 99 years, and we find that there are some places that they don't pay. They don't pay any lease because they were not, the leases were not renewed. So there are several things that I would look at um, in terms of uh, closing those gaps of uh, corruption and uh, working towards making this city a city that is corruption free. Okay, I add you 30 seconds before my colleague comes in with the next question to the next candidate. And you have mentioned cartels. Seems this is a cliche. Who are they by definition? Um, cartels are, are managed by people who are just those people we have elected because they have mechanism of uh, owning most of the businesses around. The local businesses are owned by people who are in, uh, in power. So the cartels fall there. So if there is any tender or there is any garbage collection, you find that those companies are not owned by the local person. They are owned by people who are already in, in positions. Your time is up. I come to uh, Kenneth Nyamamu, and this is very important because uh, when we talk about finances, these are the taxes the Kenyan people pay, and they expect services, including not only Nairobi, but across the 47 devolved units in the country. Do you understand the regulations and the finance management in terms of managing the resources in Nairobi County? Uh, the answer is yes, I do. Um, so, I mean, if I may get you correctly, you're trying to ask me if we understand to the way to manage finances? Correct. I know, I do, because I am a business owner, and uh, I've run my business successfully for the last two years. So I understand how to manage finances, how to pay people on time, uh, which the city of Nairobi needs to learn how to pay people on time and not be holding uh, salaries for three, six months until people go to the streets. Uh, the city of Nairobi also needs to learn how to pay their bills on time. The other day I passed uh, City Hall and the, the, the whole City Hall didn't have electricity. So we need to get there so that we can pay our bills on time, pay our people on time, and uh, ensure that revenue is collected in an efficient manner, a manner that's free of harassment from the people. Uh, in my administration, I am going to eliminate uh, any form of uh, the city hall as carries um, um, arresting people in terms of people who are trying to earn a living. I think it's wrong to criminalize um, criminalize uh, somebody trying to earn a living, whether they are saying on the street corner or not. Uh, we just need to get a place for them to do their business. And your time is up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much uh, for that. Now we move to the next uh, uh, topic that we wanted to interrogate you on. And uh, at this particular point, we assume that now that you want to be the county top boss, you know what are the requirements under the uh, Chapter 6 of the Constitution on Leadership and Integrity. Most of you in your opening remarks and even while responding to the questions we've asked you have really talked very passionately about fighting corruption. I'd like to start with you, Esther. Just tell me a bit about the how you're going to approach the war against corruption in Nairobi County. Well, um, first of all, I'll look at um, distribution of resources. Uh, it has, people have to give a budget on how they're gonna spend the money. I'm also going to look at um, the tender awarding. It should be something that should be open and transparent, where you gazette every, uh, every project that is gonna be undertaken by the county government and uh, communicate through the social media. Also give uh, a feedback on who has been awarded, how much the project is gonna be, and at what duration are they expected to finish the job? Because you find that most uh, projects that are given out, we spend so much money and yet the projects are never finished. So that is a big loophole on, um, on curbing down the corruption. So that is what I would look at in terms of that. 
And your time is up. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Hamansin Grewal, I come to you. As a FINA party member, the question of corruption has been a hallmark in this city. And when we look at the single, for example, business permits, the, the deficit is 912 million, 362,049 shillings, nearly a billion Kenya shillings. What's your approach in terms of addressing this deficit, which is only 64% of the required 100%? Mm -hmm. okay. So, in terms of uh, corruption and also the business permits, I cannot stress the value of IT. Because IT allows us to track everything that we require it to. Whether it comes to movement of finance, whether it comes to business permits, we can use geo mapping using uh, Google Maps and we can track businesses that are currently operating in different areas based on traction and ambassador movement. And we can understand that there's a business operating there. But that comes down to investigation. Also another uh, point I wanted to bring in is if I'm dealing with corruption, um, I've seen a lot of people are stressed out by KRA investigators. Mm -hmm. Why are KRA investigators not also the investigators for corruption in Kenya? So I feel that what in as Nairobi governor, I will digitize a lot of operation in terms of tracking, investigation, and further I will bring in the investigative abilities of KRA into my office. Thank you. Okay. How do you coordinate then with the Kenya Revenue Authority, which is the mandated national body, the taxman, yet you have uh, a financial autonomy as a devolved unit in the event the people of Nairobi give you that mandate. Where is the striking of the balance between the revenue authority, as you have mentioned, and the county finances in terms of the collection of the revenue? Okay. So the, the question is based on bringing in KRA investigators in, right? So as a country, we're collaborative. We're one unit. Granted, we have devolution that did take place where we separated uh, the powers of operation. We can still collaborate with different uh, organizations. What we can do is simply have a recruiting process where we can have employees also be transferred from KRA to the Nairobi County to investigate corruption and operation of the state. Um, so that's one of the ideas I had in mind. Um, also, we don't have to ent uh, entirely transfer them. Something we can also do is simply um, borrow them um, occasionally to conduct certain investigations to also have proper auditing of operation. So I feel like we have a very skilled uh, workforce in Kenya, whether they're in KRA or they work as accountants in the private organizations. Through collaboration, we can bring together all these billet minds and solve the problems we're currently dealing with together as a nation. Thank you. Mr. Nyamuamu. Corruption has been something that has tainted the image of Nairobi County, which many see as something that should be the city under the sun. That is how, ideally, that is the space that Nairobi should be occupying. But that is not the case, partially because of issues such as corruption. As you seek this mandate, what loopholes have you identified, and how do you seek to seal? Uh, first things first, I think uh, we are not serious in our fight against corruption. That's how I feel. We have the ESCC, we have the DCI, we have this body, that body, but still money gets lost. Um, uh, the solution is not to form another body. In fact, the, I agree. In fact, I would like for Wajakoya to be president so that we can hang every one of these people. <laughs> Because we just dance around this issue, nobody takes, nobody gets held accountable. We have a gubernatorial candidate that has been cleared with fake papers, and we just dance around this issue. So how do we expect to fight corruption where we don't do anything about it? Um, for me, the solution is to go the Jawajakoya way. If you are corrupt, we send you to the, to the gallows. Next man up, you are corrupt, go to the gallows. I think that's the only way with it. You've talked about a case that is yet to be determined, um, but I'd let that go because that case is yet to be concluded. Yeah, but we dance around these issues. See, that's the thing, that's the problem. And I also we, don't see how that relates with the issue of We just dance around corruption. these issues. Uh, uh, the EBC or the IEBC said they don't have the mandate. Yet, they send me home because I had a foreign certificate. That guy in a commission that wrote for him his certificate, he couldn't look at my own certificate until he had seen my high school certificate. There is no correlation between a high school certificate and a graduate certificate. 
but he couldn't look at mine, yet we have a gubernatorial candidate who has been cleared by the same commission. So anyway, the issue I'm saying is we dance around this issue of corruption, but nobody wants to take affirmative action. I just want to stay on that matter for a bit before we move. So you mean, as governor, you will be helpless just because institutions are not working? So you cannot do anything to fight corruption? That is what you're saying tonight. No, that's not what I'm saying. As governor, I'll do my part. What will is, you do? That was the I question. Will not I will not appoint anybody in my, in my government mm. who has been implicated or who has a case pending or who has been alleged been implicated in a corruption scandal. If you don't do that, people are just going to go to court because the mantra is you are innocent until proven guilty, and then they just dance around that issue, and that issue is not solved. So on my part, I will not appoint anybody who, who's tainted. I will only work with people with clean hands. Uh, let the ESCC dance until the day they decide to work. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Nancy Wamboi Mwadime. What then will be your approach in effectively sealing the loopholes of financial malfeasance in Nairobi County? My approach is that uh, when I get just the, just can sorry, I, to cut, just, just you, yeah. you can adjust so your can, microphone uh, at your place of comfort. You feel free. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, the approach I want to give is that in the count government, government management. <laughs> I am going to work with every place in Nairobi. Like in Nairobi, we have the Somalis, we have the Indians, we have even the white people who are citizens of Kenya, and they are also in Nairobi. So in my, in, in my county government, I'm going to include everyone in the management so that we're able to seal the loophole even whereby corruption come through. Because uh, corruption cases, you, it, it's done by not one by one person, by two people who come together and agree. So when you put every lace in the management, we are able like, not to agree on the long things, especially the corruption. And as uh, I would want to say is that myself, I'm not corrupt, and therefore anyone who will work under me... Your time is and up. And I, I, I add you 30 seconds, but on clarity basis, Ms. Nancy Mwadime, when you talk about the ethnicities, in this case appreciating the cocktail nature of this county, which is a reflection of the country entirely, is the problem inclusion or governance in your view in addressing the question I posed? Um, when I include everybody in the management, I believe that we are able to, to, to do to coordinate, even in the area of the finances, we are getting all the revenue coming in in the county government. Is it about the color of your skin or about your character? No, the it's issue not about of corruption. the color. Uh -huh. So why it's talk about race? Why talk about including all the people in your management? It's not about the race. It's saying that Nairobi, we are, we, we, all of us, we are Nairobians, Indians, white people, like... I think if I'm not wrong, I'm not seeing white people in, in the county government, and we have, we have them as citizens. So that's what I'm trying to say, that in my government, I'll have a good number of white people, a good number of Indians, a good number of and all of us together. Is their absence the reason why we have huge corruption cases at the Kenya's capital? The absence of certain races in the management of the county, the reason why corruption still exists in Nairobi? I believe the corruption still exists because when you put the same people of same, then they are able to agree together and uh, agree that they can do ABC and they are able to accomplish. But when. Thank you for your time. And uh, when we get back from this break, the debate continues and we thank you for your time and responding to the questions and also the thematic areas that are yet to be exhausted and will continue after the break. The debate continues.
one dream, one goal, one deposit, and one transaction. Pamoja, let's make it happen. So don't just bank with us, bank on us. Yes, yes, Timo. Enroll at Catholic University of Eastern Africa for courses in nursing, law, business, economics, computer science, education, community health and development, actuarial science, international relations, counseling psychology, regional integration and theology. September intake ongoing at Langata and Eldoret campuses. Email admissions at queer.edu or visit queer.edu. Queer for innovative, marketable graduates. I think the most important quality of a leader is wisdom. So that the decisions that are being made now, he knows how. You know, it's like a chess player who sees things ahead. Najua kama mboka mlipa mshuru mlipa mshuru ni mshuru wake ataka ona ngalau kazi ya pesa kama mboka na ilipia. Ipesa tunami ni kuzi na ishia kwa mifuko za watu binafsi. I think it's important that wealth is declared frequently, and if people have found ways to accumulate wealth very quickly. Um, absolutely good for them as long as of course that is done honestly and ethically we need leaders who are well educated to understand uh, the challenges that we face in the modern world kwa mfano mtu mwenye amesomea ukandarasi wa barabara mkiwa mkiwa na kiongozi ambaye amesomea yote aluma una uhakika kwamba barabara za eneo lako zitakuwa zina usimamizi mzuri By offering market linkages, networking opportunities and technical assistance, Kenya Association of Manufacturers assists its members to grow and scale up their businesses. Join us and let's work together to grow the manufacturing sector. Becoming a CAM member is as easy as 1 2 3. Association of Manufacturers driving global competitiveness. What is a secondary school in Kenya? It ranges from 106 high-cost national schools educating 3% of the learners where you find ultra modern libraries and laboratories, the most experienced principals and teachers and the best teacher student ratios. Then we have 7019 some barely established, understaffed, lacking basic facilities sub-county schools educating over 60% of learners. given that KCSE is the most consequential examination in our education system isn't it fair that we level the ground for all learners to excel by narrowing the capacity gaps between the worst and best schools to deliver quality education Usawa agenda calls for a sub-county schools upgrading program and a change from the capitation model to enable small schools to grow. Without these, SDG 4 is a false promise to most Kenyan children. We shall legalize with Professor George Luchiri Wajakoya of the Roots Party. Semeni baba kea. Baba kea. Raila Amolo Odinga of the Azimio la Umoja 1 Kenya Party. Unajua mimi sina pesa ya serikali ama ya kashfa. David Mwaure Wahiga of the Agano Party and Tunasema kazi ni nini? William Samoye Ruto of the Kenya Kwanza Alliance. Presidential debate 2022. Do not adjust your sets. Agnes Kagure Independent Cleofas Kio Ford K Dennis Kode LDP Esther Thairu Independent Herman Grawal Safina Johnson Sakaja UDA Kenneth Nyamwamu UPA Nancy Mwadime Usawa kwa wote Polika Pigade Jubilee What would you like to ask your Nairobi gubernatorial candidate? Send your questions on a video to the WhatsApp number 0796560560. You can also text your question to 22843. The Nairobi gubernatorial debate live from the Catholic University from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday, 11th July.
Welcome back. You're watching the Nairobi gubernatorial debate live coming to you from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa in the county of Nairobi. And we are with Esther Waringa Thairo, who is an independent candidate seeking the top job in the county. We also have Haman Sin Gaul, who is a member of the Safina Party. We also have uh, Kenneth Nyamwamo, who is a member of the United Progressive Alliance Party, and Nancy Wamboi Mwadime. All right, we'd also wish to remind you that we extended invitations to all the nine candidates who are vying for the Nairobi top seat. And of course, we have with us four of them for the first debate lined up for the night. Remember, later on, we'll be taking you through the second debate also as we just lay it all bare. Who carries the vision for Nairobi County? Who among the ladies and gentlemen before us tonight has what it takes to become the next governor? But we just want to move on with this debate and right about now uh, we want to look at uh, the governance of the city and i'll just come to you mr nyamwamu uh, the extension of deed of transfer of functions that was signed between the nairobi city county and the national government elapses on the 24th of august of course preceded by a three-month extension period to tackle what is called the transition if elected governor how do you plan on handling this transition and also how do you seek to sustain the relationship between the national government and the county government and which areas will you be doing that on is this in relation to the nms yes uh first of all we shouldn't be having nms running nairobi county to begin with uh that's not how our democracy was set up uh, democ uh we're supposed to be ruled it's supposed to be by the people. It's the people supposed to decide. They elect somebody, and that person runs. They give the person the mandate to run, to run the county. Now we have NMS, and um, my hope is when I get in, we'll have a transition for them to. We'll have a lay down transition for them to exit, and let the Nairobi County be run by the elected officials. Um, it had a lot to do with the previous governor, but now when we get in, we are making sure that the NMS will hand over the function to the county government so that it's, la it's run by the duly elected officials. That's how our, our democracy is set up, and that's how we are going Your to work. Your time is up, but I'll add you 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Nairobi is Kenya's capital. Yes. And also it is uh, like the headquarter. Yes. Do you want to tell me it's not important to have a relationship between these two levels of government, the national government and the county government, considering the fact that it is the capital of the entire country? The county has its own... Um, we, they have their own um, uh, responsibilities. Uh, why should Nairobi be partly run by the NMS while Kisumu, which is also another county, is fully run by a governor? I don't think that's fair. Our mandate dictates that you let the county be ran by the person that's been duly elected. Um, I understand why the NMS was there, but that's not how our democracy is set up. Why should Nairobi be chosen to be run by NMS and not uh, Migori, for example? Okay, your time is up. Uh, Haman Grewal, the law under Article 187 anticipates cooperation between the national government and the county government and we have spoken about the NMS and how it came about what do you have done what the ex-governor did in handing over four key functions to the national government mm -hmm. well if you look at the history of NMS and why it was created first of all I would like to thank uh, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta for pushing for the creation of NMS because he saw that Nairobi was in, in a state of chaos. And it was the sort of emergency response we needed. I'm sure all of you can agree, if you look at the success of NMS, it's something that we can be proud of. NMS has accomplished what the governor is to accomplish. And he, NMS was a substitute for the governor, meaning that we, we need to move back into our normal state of operation. And we had the separation of powers so that we can allow elected leaders for certain areas be in charge of those areas. If we elect someone for a county, it would not be fair, just, or constitutional 
to have the president be running that county entirely. There must be collaboration, and we will transition in a peaceful and uh, positive way. Okay, your time is up, but I add you 30 seconds for clarity. And uh, there seems to be no response to my question, and I need clarity on this. If accorded the mandate by the people of Nairobi County, would you have done what the former governor did at State House in February 2020? I feel that um, given the situation we were in at the time, it did make sense, but it did happen because of who the governor's actions. So I feel that if I'm responsible as a governor, I wouldn't allow us to reach that state. But if we are in that state, we must be responsible as leaders and say, I've made a mistake. I'm not delivering as a leader so that our country can prosper. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Nancy Mwadime, how do you plan on sustaining the relationship between the two levels of government, considering the fact that uh, you're vying on an Usawa Kwa Wote party ticket, assuming a, 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 the government uh, is taken over by somebody who, uh, a, a party that is not uh, in your political camp? What will you do and how will you sustain this relationship? I'll be able to maintain the relationship because the two bodies, the national government and county government, we need one another. And uh, we each, has, each, each body has its own role to play, the national government, the county government, because even some of the, the assignments which are done by the, the county government work in relation with the national government. So what I would say is that I'll maintain the relationship and uh, where and where necessary work together or and at times for example with NMS I would say that the, the county government with a good leader we have all what we need in the county government. We have workers from top from the engineers to the accountant, to the officers. So what I would say that with good leadership, the county government Thank can you. be able to manage. Thank you. Your time is up. Okay. Esther Waring, I come to you. And owing to the importance of uh, the close cooperation needed between the national government and the counties, because the understanding is that the two levels of government are meant to provide services for the people of the Republic of Kenya who hold the sovereignty under Article 1 of the Constitution. What will be your approach between the relationship between State House and City Hall? Well, um, a leadership of a nation, even though it has different bodies, is still one. Because the objective is for the interest of the people who have the sovereign power. So I see that uh, in partnership and consultation, we can really work, the county government and the state house. Because everything that um, is done, the functions could be different because of solution, but it is workable with partnership. Let me give an example. The county government holds the EACC, EAC level of education. But that does not stop um, a county governor to involve, to be in partnership with the national government to build a school. So I find that it's more of a consultation and partnership over leadership, and that will work. I add you 30 seconds, and clearly then tell me, the education docket is budgeted for 520 billion, lion's share of the the country's financial year. There are some roles which are devolved, others aren't. How do you draw that very thin line as to what you will accomplish in terms of education? You see, if we have plans uh, that involves uh, the people, the partnership to be also drilled down to the people, the NGOs, and even stakeholders. It is possible to even uh, be able to meet um, to meet the target of what you're doing. It's more of partnership that will work and involving the people also to be partners, stakeholders. Thank you. Yes. All right, so we want to move this forward to the issue of uh, living and working conditions for the residents of Nairobi.
Mr. Nyamuamu, I see you have an issue you want to raise. Yes. I'll give you 30 seconds to address that. Uh, I just want to talk about this NMS county government thing. Uh, NMS is being headed by a military guy. Uh, now, the government should act as an oversight on the, it should be the oversight role in terms of uh, see, overseeing what the counties are doing. But devolution was there to bring services closer to the people and that's why we have devolution. So when we bring the government to come and actually get involved in the devolution functions, we are treading a very dangerous line. When Hilter started, he started very nicely. He delivered services to the people. Over time, it has been shown, military rule takes over and they suppress... Your, your time is up, but taking you back to when this happened on the 25th of February 2020, mm -hmm. vying for this position, I want to believe you understand where the county was and the state at which it was being operated at that time. What would you have done different? What would you have done different aside from just signing that uh, deed of transfer of functions? Well, first of all, it starts from the governor that was elected and the deputy governor that's seeking a gubernatorial position right now who was part of that system and the senator who was supposed to be overseeing. They all failed. So then the government has to be like Nairobi is in a mess. We need to take over Nairobi or Nairobi will be in a mess. But that's not how our democracy was set up. How would you have cleaned that mess, Mr. Nyamuamu? Hey, give, collect garbage. The garbage was terrible. That was the function of the governor. Uh, give electricity, provide electricity in the informal sectors. Get rid of the cartels. That was, that's what the governor was supposed to do. And his deputy governor and the senator was supposed to oversee that function. All three failed. That's why the government stepped in. But all in all, what I'm trying to say the basic framework of our democracy is not set that way. We set a very dangerous precedent if we continue this path. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Nyamuamu. And, and just an understanding in terms of the specificity, you have raised a very important and a pertinent question as to garbage yes. in the city. Yes. Do you understand Nairobi County? Yes, I do. I played in this city. In terms of, I live in this city. In terms of the tons of garbage, yes. how much does the city generate? First of all, Nairobi doesn't even have a system to collect the garbage. We have just young little boys that we use and we pay them very little money to collect garbage. Nairobi needs to set up a garbage collection system that starts from collecting garbage from the homes all the way to how the garbage is disposed. We don't have that system. We need to set that system up so that we can have a systematic way of uh, collecting garbage in the county. Once that system is in place, then you'll not see garbage in the city. But we cannot have uh, self-help groups, young boys collecting garbage in an unsanitary manner, and we, collect that, we call that garbage collection. We need to have a system set in place with the county government, and that's what I'll do when I become governor. Mr. Herman Growell, Nairobi County generates about 2,500 tons of garbage in a day. Out of this, only 1,800 is collected and transported. About 700 tons cannot be accounted for. You can, can <laughs> guess where that ends up. If elected governor, how do you seek to fix this problem? Okay. Um, so this mostly comes to how are we managing resources. So resources would be goods and even waste. So when we talk of goods, are we managing a system that allows for the collection and recycling of the waste? Secondly, we look at the waste generated. How is it, how is it ending up in the dump sites, for example? Is all of it ended up in the dump sites? So it's simply about now tracking how much garbage generated from certain areas, how much needs to be handled, what is the success rate of the systems we have put in place. Because when I was reflecting on garbage, it was one of the major aspects of my manifesto because to work in any place, whether it's an office or in a county, you shouldn't have garbage everywhere, you shouldn't have sewages open. Because I've also walked through several slums in uh, Nairobi and I don't understand how we have the funding 
for something simple such as manual which is minimum wage, which is all that's required to co collect garbage in certain areas, and then I move it to a recycling plant. Thank you that's so why, much. That's why I spoke on how we need to partner. So even with recycling plants, we can export shredded plastic to other up, countries. Thank you. Your time is up, Mr. Grawa. Your okay. time is up. Okay. Right. Thanks. Ms. Nancy Wamboe Mwadime, the issue we have talked about is very important. What's your easy, immediate fix to garbage problem in the city? Uh, about the garbage issue, one thing I want to, to say that uh, people have complained that at times leaders give manifesto and they are not able to fulfill what they have said. Especially the issue of the garbage, I would say this is something I need to get to that office and sit with the other parties and we see the way forward on how to handle the issue because it's a big problem at heart. Which is the way forward? As I have said, there are some issues one would need to get to that office and sit and look all around and see how to solve. And the garbage is one of the, the issues one would need to go and get to the office and sit with the bodies latent and see the way forward. And, and how, how does the, that way forward formula look like? Because the people of Nairobi watching this debate want clarity to the questions that we are asking you. What's the approach? How? Uh, I start by saying that uh, we need to start by educating our people. Because the issue of garbage starts by dropping it everywhere. So we need first to have the feeling that you cannot go dropping a peel of a banana everywhere. Your time is up, uh, Ms. Uh, Mwadime, but just 30 seconds for some clarity on something you said. You want to get to that house, sit down with some people to get yeah. solutions. The people of Nairobi want somebody, a leader who already has solutions. What level of assurance can you give residents who are watching you tonight that you have the solutions to the problems that they are facing in Kenya's capital? I have solution for many issues facing the Nairobians. Is, and is garbage one of them? Garbage is one of them. So how do you sort to fix the challenges we are facing with the garbage issue in the city? We can go to the, the old... Now we are calling it county government. Years back, we called, we called it city council. By then, we had rollies, which used to go round collecting the garbage. And there was a plant area where the garbage used to be taken, and from there, it was managed. So what I'm trying to say is that we can get back to the Nairobi, which was there some years back. And the county government provide those services to the citizen correcting the garbage and knowing where the garbage should go and knowing Thank how you. the garbage will be managed. Thank you. Okay. Esther Waring, 30% of garbage in the city is disposed of by a private company. This is a lion's share and uh, it's clearly a private affair. Yet the county is supposed to be offering services to the people. It's public dominated. How will you turn this around? You see, uh, garbage looked in a more positive way. It's money generating. If you look at it that way, then you'll have a solution on how you can tap from garbage collection into the recycling and uh, generate some money. So what I would really do is to have the county government deal with the garbage disposals where the garbage uh, installation um, collection bins are placed in every estate, in every slum area, every at the, on the streets, and then that garbage collection is done uh, by the city government and um, is, uh, we, we, we build some uh, collection uh, dumping sites in, level, in ward level, and then after that, we are able to partner with uh, with companies that do recycling. And we'll ask them that uh, since we have brought the garbage to you, to the dumping site, then we create uh, employment. We ask them to employ people who will sort that garbage out. And then the after that, whatever profit they make, the time is up, Mr. then it's able to, we ask them to Your give us a time is up. Your, Your time is up. But, but yes. let me add you 30 seconds yes. to be clear on that. Yes. When you say that you will procure companies do you appreciate the importance of public participation under the current constitution? And what will be the way of bringing those companies on board since they are private? 
We have recycling companies. If we partner with them, and those are the things that they need, the, the recycling, uh, um, the, the garbage stuff that they can recycle. So I find it's easier because when you partner with them, you have made it easier. You've brought the garbage to a dumping site that is, is available for them to be able to collect it. That's how I would look at it. Okay. Yes. And your time is up. Thank you. All right, we want to move to the next uh, section, but before we do, Mr. Nyamuamu, earlier you had said uh, that you play in this city, you've lived in this city. I want to seek a clarification, looking at what you've done and who you are. You left the country in 2001? Yes. To go to the United States? Yes. You're a certified nurse in the United States? Yes. You've attained three of your major degrees from abroad? Yes, I did. Earlier, in early basic education, you studied in a county outside Nairobi, Siaya. Yes. How are you assuring the residents of Nairobi that you're part and parcel of them, you understand their issues, you have solutions, you know what they're going through, you're going to fix it if they elect you governor? Well, I've been you articulating... Have 90 seconds. I've been articulating these issues. Uh, I've given a way forward in terms of garbage collection. I've given a way forward in terms of making Nairobi business friendly. Um... I think the issue you are asking, you've been outside the country, how are you going to relate with Nairobians? And my answer is this, I'm still a Kenyan and uh, problems that face the cities are universal. Uh, if I'm correct, our president learned abroad, uh, incoming president Raila Odinga learned abroad, uh, a lot of people who are in leadership in this country learned abroad but they're still actively participating in leadership roles in this country. So uh, living abroad does not qualify you from understanding and articulating the issues or solving problems. Uh, one of the things that has been put here that's successful is this expressway. This is a foreign concept that was borrowed from abroad, but it's here and it's working. So going abroad does not stop Thank me. Thank you so much. From Thank uh, you for from that, articulating the issues. Your time is up. Now let's move to the next uh, section of this conversation that touches on the living and working conditions of residents of Nairobi. The key issue has been housing. And in this city, 9.3% of Nairobians, only 9.3% own homes. The others are renting units in different places. <coughs> and also it is a city that, um, according to uh, statistics by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, um, 80% of uh, the people who live in informal settlements across the country live in Nairobi. There's a huge housing crisis in this capital. Esther, I'll begin with you. If elected governor, how will you seek the housing crisis in Kenya's capital? Well, I would start with the housing crisis with the most affected areas, like the slum areas. And I would partner with... Um, the landlords who will sit down with the consultation and find out how we can be able to improve what is already there. Um, for example, if I take um, uh, Kibera slums, they are th those are settlements where the landlords who are owning those small, small houses. But if I came in as a governor and uh, had an, um, a partnership with them where we improve the housing, uh, we improve the condition that people live in there and I'll come with the uh, support like give money so that we can improve and yet the people staying there will not pay a higher cost but they'll still remain paying that because I've already chipped in some money to improve their living conditions that's how I would tackle it then I would um, partner with the investors to build affordable housing Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Your time is up. Uh, allow me, Esther, to add you 30 seconds, because you have mentioned a Kibra, which is a, a constituency in Nairobi County. And as per the Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics in 2019 census, this is a region or part of Nairobi which has a population density of 712 times what ought to have been 68,000 people per square kilometre. That's a homework, isn't it? That's a steep, a steep slope for you. How will you operationalize decongestion of informal settlements, which account for 80% of Nairobi's population, and Kibra being an example that you have fronted? 
Well, uh, I wouldn't look at moving these people. I know there is uh, um, cheap housing, affordable housing that was build, built for them, high rise being one of them, but they never moved in there. They still came back to their own settlement. So what we look at is improving, not really moving them away because they are used to that place, they, they are comfortable in that place, but how best can I improve their living Thank you. Uh, standard? And your time is That's up. what I would focus on. Asante, thank you. Haman, yes. I come to you. Housing is a national government function, and therefore, again, another cooperation is needed between the county government and the national government. We already are short, falling short of the targeted 250,000 household units to be delivered. We are doing it at 50,000 at the moment. This threat needs to be speeded up by three times the current number. What's your cooperation with the national government if elected governor? And how will you address the problem of housing congestion in the city? Okay. Um, so the question is based on su supply being too low and demand being too high. Every man knows that this is a huge opportunity, right? So if you look at the structure of the country, you've got your uh, upper class, middle class, and low income groups. And each needs a different solution for housing because you wouldn't expect someone that's earning over 2 million shillings per month to be provided with the same solution as a lower class person. So what we do have is an opportunity for us to now use technology to even like 3D print cheap housing for people living in slums and have a payment structured plan where they can pay back. Because if you study the, the banking history of Kenya, you see that it's, it's becoming difficult for people to now mortgage uh, housing. So that's something we should reflect on. Um, further, for the middle class and upper class, we must encourage investment because, again, this is an opportunity. If I give you a loan to build apartments, I now have the opportunity to earn from interest, and we've succeeded in building apartments. For Your time is up, but I add you 30 seconds. Proceed. Okay. And um, what I've also studied is, so aside from the whole aspect of this being a business opportunity for us in terms of providing housing to low income, middle income, and upper, upper class people for housing, we also need to reflect on how there are a lot of unemployed people in Nairobi. So I, I've studied all the manifestos for different candidates and someone like Wajakoya has spoken of making Isiolo the capital of Kenya. I understood the logic, but this is also something that can be applied here. Because there's too much uh, demand in Nairobi, what if we set up organizations in other counties where people can earn and also find housing? So I think that's something we should also encourage to decongest Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, uh, Mr. Grawal. Now we come to you, Mr. Nyamuamu. How do you seek to fix the housing crisis in the capital under your administration, if elected? So for me, I think uh, it's many factors, but the biggest factor is the economic factor. A lot of people opt to go to the informal sectors because uh, they can't afford whatever is available. For example, in Kilelesha, there's a lot of apartment units that are available for rent, but they are unaffordable because people don't have the disposable income to, to go and rent those apartments. So my, my solution would be one, to encourage, to encourage uh, investors to invest in these areas or areas proximity to the slum areas so that these people can get places they can go to and work. That's number one. So instead of having an industrial area or industries in industrial area, let's have industries in every constituency so that, uh, you know, people from Kibra can, they don't have to walk to industrial area. They can go find jobs nearby. So let's create investment in those areas. Two. Your, your time is up, Kenneth, but proceed. 30 seconds. Okay. Two, let's uh, decentralize uh, Nairobi. Let's get other functions in other areas. The reason why people come here is so they come to look for employment here. So let's decentralize uh, other key functions from Nairobi to other areas. We've started doing that. Let's do more of that so that you, know, you don't have to go live to Nairobi to earn a living. You can go to Mombasa, Kisumu, wherever, wherever, where even the cost of living is low. And it will bring down the cost of living in Nairobi because a lot of people will move out of Nairobi. Thank you. That's you, how I look at it. Thank you so much. I, I come to you, Nancy Wamboe Mwadime of the Usawa Kwawote Party. 
What's your understanding of the laws that regard planning in the city and how would you differentiate between residential and commercial areas for purposes of planning and to answer the question of housing? Um, before I go to planning... You can just move uh, closer yes, your to microphone. your microphone. Yes. Before I go to planning, I would want to deal with the, the housing issue, which is a, 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 an issue which we need to handle. On the issue of housing, th some years back, we used to have city council houses, or county government is supposed to be developing homes and, and give to the Nairobi people. So I would want to go back to that and get the county department on the housing to develop some houses. Number two, I would want to network with real estate developers. I am in real estate industry, and I have seen the, the, the gap. We have the, the developers who are willing to develop the homes. But, and we also have the Nairobi people, especially in the, who have on the circles and pension. They want homes, but there is a gap in between because the, the developers, the circle managers, they tell developer they want a, a ready home, yet they have money lying in the okay. bank. Your, your time is up, but, but 30 seconds. When you talk about the real estate industry where you are a subscriber to, do you have an understanding of the complaints lodged in a court of law against you by your employers of a mistreatment and lack of pay? I, I, do, I do have, because when you are a developer and the economy is affected, we are, our work is affected. And most of the complaints we have is that we are not finishing the houses, but the problem is not really the, the developer 100%. It goes all the way to the, to the economy. Because when we don't have an atmosphere for the business, as a developer, you start your development, and uh, because of the atmosphere, you are not able to receive the, the buyers for the homes, and you are not able to complete your development. But in this case, what I'm trying to say is that we can have a network between a developer okay. and a circle whereby the developer will develop homes for a particular circle using the same fund lying in the bank. And in this case, the Nairobi citizen will, be, will pay only 10 to 15,000 to own a house Thank within you. 10 Ms. to 25 your time years. Is your time is up. up. Thank you. And at this point, uh, we also extended an opportunity to the residents of Nairobi to get a chance to ask uh, questions. And we just want to get uh, some of them so that our candidates can be able to respond. My name is Masi Masila Achola, an executive program leader with the Maxwell Leadership Team and also serving in the Kenya Daima Steering Committee. My question to the Nairobi gubernatorial candidates is, if elected to office, could you share with the residents of Nairobi, what can we expect from you in your first 100 days in office? Nairobi County collects billions in taxes. What mechanism are they going to put in place to ensure that Nairobi County's billions do not end up in the pockets of a few corrupt leaders. Uh, Nairobi's public transit system is a mess. How will your administration fix the issue of commuting through town and the traffic jams we experience on our roads daily? Imagine Nicholas Paul. Swali langu kwa heshima nao kusudia kuwa governor wa Nairobi. Ni mpango ipi mlioweka kuhakikisha kwamba tuwafanye biashara wadogo wadogo hawadhulumiwi na mabwenyenye humo mjini. My name is Samuel Matara. I work and stay in Nairobi, and I have a question to all the Nairobi gubernatorial aspirants. Now, if you walk along the streets of Nairobi, the marketplaces of Nairobi, and also the residential places, you will encounter mounds of garbage strewn all over. And this is despite the previous uh, governors promising that they will make sure that this city becomes clean. How are you going to ensure that this city becomes clean? like the way it used to be. Question number one. Uh, NMS in a stage from CBD 
na peteka also CBD and also they are banning uh, border border from CBD is it right on that way And those are the residents of Nairobi who sampled messages that we did play here and we did engage them because they are very key and important since they hold the key to City Hall and in exercising Article 1 of the Constitution since the sovereignty of power lies with them as enshrined and envisioned in Article 1 of the Constitution 2010. I begin with you, Esther Waringa. Vast array of topics from taxes, corruption, malfeasance, small businesses and the friendly environment they want to planning. What's your response to what some of the sampled messages here had conveyed? Uh, first of all, I, if I heard you well, you've talked about corruption. And I did mention that um, I'll set systems where in employment and um, people are vetted because leadership is key. If you employ people who are corrupted, then they will they'll mess the system. The other thing is closing the gap of any cartels that takes place. Um, if I heard you well, again, you've talked about... Um, if you uh, can say small businesses? Sorry? Small businesses and friendly environment that they are seeking. Yeah, small businesses um, are very critical because they have a high percentage of uh, employment. I would look at boosting them after COVID, uh, post-COVID. The businesses were affected, so I would love, I would put, uh, um, I would form circles that uh, I would boost money in those circles, and then they would get loans that they pay with uh, minimum interest. And your time as is they, up. They build up. Coming to you, Mr. Grawal Singh, um, we had tackled the issue of corruption, but I want you to also speak to some issues that have been raised there. What will you do within your first 100 days, and also what is your plan to? improve the welfare and status of those who are running small and medium enterprises within the capital? Okay. So I think the whole question of what are you going to do in your first 100 days is a very generic question. As a governor, it's not about just picking one goal and focusing on it. I feel it should be an expansive goal. And it's all outlined in my manifesto. What I want to do primarily in my first 100 days, if I must, state in my first 100 days is to clean up Nairobi because a lot of people in Nairobi are not happy whether it's in terms of operation or the cleanliness it does have an impact on the psychology of a lot of people so I feel cleaning the area in Nairobi is something of paramount importance in my first 100 days moving on to SMEs my running mate is named Michael Kimwele he works for KCB Bank he's in the department for SME loans so there's actually a structured plan we have on how to help SMEs access funding. Because if you look at the history of a lot of countries, how do you stop, for example, the son of an Ascari being an Ascari? How do you help the son of a mechanic finally be able to buy a car? It's through Your providing them up, with Mr. funding. Dewell, but I add you 30 seconds to proceed. Okay, thank you. It's through providing people with funding to allow them to break out of their environment. If, for example, I've never received over 30,000 in my whole life. How am I going to escape the poverty cycle? It's through having a structured plan, and even we have a system where we'll guide a lot of people in Nairobi how to start a business, how to run a business. And if your plan makes sense, we'll help you get funding for your project. And we also have some sort of mentoring system. So as you're operating, as you're growing your business, you will still be monitored, supervised, and we work as sort of a team, as a family, so we can help each and every person in Nairobi grow. Thank you. All right, uh, the same set of questions will apply to you, uh, Ms. Nancy Modime. Within 100 days, uh, in case you're elected, what will you prioritize? And also, as you do that, you also talk on what you plan to do to improve the status and welfare of those running small businesses within Nairobi. You have one minute. So the <clears throat> first 100 days, I'll deal with the employment. We have kept on talking about employment on youth. But at all this time, we have an employment, even from age gap between 30 and 40 and even 50. And with this group, I would provide training, free training. And uh, when they are done with the training, we provide them with the tools. For example, if you are trained as a mechanic, we release you with the tools for being a mechanic. If you train as a trainer, 
we did this with a thrilling machine. Uh, for the youth, I would encourage a good number of the youth to further their studies. When they go, the, 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 the county government and my management will pay their school fees abroad. When they go out there, to, they'll get visa to further their education. And uh, we'll take care of the fees and our accommodation. Okay. But while they are there, they'll be able to work. And Your time is up, but why abroad? Why not within the borders of this country? Don't we have what it takes to do that? I, I, was, uh, I was to come to that. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying I'll encourage a number. Because when I encourage a number of them, I'll, have to, I'll kill two bad. One, they'll get employment. The second, they'll be able to work for a few hours. And those who are wise, they'll work and send money back home and they support their, their parent. And uh, for the local, the local youth, I'll also get them to workshop and training. And, uh, and I'll do the same as for the age gap between 30 and 40. I'll give them tools to start small businesses. Okay, Ms. Nancy Mwadime, your time is up of the Osawa Kwa Wote Party. Mr. Kenneth Nyamuamu, how would you respond to the sample questions from the people of Nairobi County? So, first things first, let's make Nairobi business friendly. Let's invite international uh, investors. Let's promote local investors. Let's... Um, not criminalize people who are making a living. Uh, if we bring international investors and have them in every constituency, people will have jobs and that will improve our lives of living. Uh, let's reduce our business licenses by 50% so that whatever businesses we have, they are not, the cost of doing business is a little lower and they are able to do business uh, effectively in Nairobi. And the other thing is, uh, especially the issue of garbage, uh, let's set up a garbage collection system where we have days where the, and let the city council buy trucks if they are not able to buy trucks, let them uh, lease those trucks, let them lease from companies, partner with companies to bring trucks to collect, to have collection days and take them to collection centers. Your time and is those up, Mr. Nyamuamu. Uh, can I have a little bit so I finish? Proceed. 30 seconds added. So, granted. So, let's employ, let's get these uh, people who are, these young boys who are uh, picking up garbage. Let's train them. Empower them. Show them the sanitary way to collect garbage. Uh, so that when the system is there, these boys can be incorporated in the county and then the garbage can be taken to the collection centers. Uh, the other thing is uh, the, when I'm governor, I'm going to fight with uh, uh, KEMSA. KEMSA is diverting uh, medication from uh, county hospitals. Your time is up, Mr. Kenneth Nyamwamu. That is uh, another government agency which is national, we appreciate, is the source point of pharmaceuticals to the counties, and uh, that is uh, a topic we can discuss another day. All right, so um, there's a question that was also asked. I deliberately left it because this is what actually ushers us into the next section. And we're going to be looking into your vision for the transport sector in Nairobi County. One of the residents of Nairobi County was, is concerned, actually, about the traffic jams that we witness each and every day if you live in the capital. Um, Esther, what is your plan to end the perennial traffic jam menace? if elected. Thank you so much. Um, about uh, transport, um, I would say that if we have proper and efficient transport system that uh, will, will, will work, it's good. Uh, if I'm elected, I would think of uh, having to refurbish uh, trains, have rail, tra uh, rails, train bringing people to town, uh, that would decongest the traffic. I'd also have um, to have a consultation with the Matatu people and see how best we can have um, the public transport organized. Uh, I would also uh, look at uh, having um, designated uh, lanes on the road where any, any buses or a car that has more than three people can use that lane so that it's more faster to have them 
Um, your, your time is up, uh, uh, but but are those? I'll add you 30 seconds. Uh, are those not efforts that have been tried before? We've seen that in the capital already. Is there anything that you offer as an alternative for the residents of Nairobi? If you can ask the question again. I just want to inform you that those are things that the, car the previous administrations have tried uh, using trains um, and also consultations with those who are operating in the public service sector. And of course, you know, is there something that you plan to do that will be different to fix the perennial problem of traffic jams? Uh, well, um, it's to encourage people to do carpooling uh, if they are going the same direction. And if we had um, institutions like schools that are properly equipped and people take their kids to school where they stay, it's much better than crossing across to take a child to Nairobi Primary School where they, when they live in Dadora. So I would reinforce that, that method of having the schools at the award levels mm. so that we can ease the congestion of traffic. Your time is up, Esther Waringa, Independent Party. Haman Grewal, what's your approach uh -huh. to traffic smell up and the menace in the city? Okay, so transport is a, is a fairly complex issue. Um, I'll try to speak on it in one minute, but uh, generally it cannot be resolved in this much time. Once again, we break it down. Um, the, we have three classes of people. We have the lower, middle, and upper class uh, individuals, and each desire a different level of transport solutions. What often happens is, uh, through my research, is I found when international guests come to Nairobi, how, how many of them are comfortable using a system such as Matatus? How many of them understand how Matatus work? It's, it's not a large percentage. So I reflected on it. I came up with three solutions. I hope I have the time to touch on them. Number one. The solution to traffic is not creating more roads. Because if we look at the history of Kenya, look at Thika Highway, for example, that was the more road solution. What we need is, because of the expanding population in Nairobi, we need to have structured mass transport systems that are of quality. That would, that would fairly reduce transport. If I had a solution for me to come from Westerns to Karen, for example, that's quality public transport, I would use that. Your time is up, but you I add you 30 seconds. Proceed. All right. I would use that. So we need to have quality mass transport. Something like bringing in double-decker buses into Nairobi would reduce the cost of transport even for the government, for individuals, and achieve the same thing. Um, we can digitize the operation of Matatus. Someone with a smartphone, the driver, I can track his phone. And as a user, I can see how far my Matatu is and how long it will take. I link my account with that Matatu, and then we can also have promotions for students. And lastly, we can also have a digital carpooling system where if I have a saloon car, for example, other people coming to Karen can simply share the cost of transport with me. And now this touches on the different classes we have. That's lower, middle, and upper class. Your time is up. All right. Um, we move to you, um, Nancy Mwadime. Just your strategy of solving the traffic jams in Nairobi County. Uh, before I would think of solving the issue of the transport, I would start by having everyone in Nairobi be able to assess the transport, especially the people with special need. I would want us to introduce bars which are accessible to the person with a, a wheelchair. He can just come driving and lift it to the, to the bus and stay in the wheelchair, and when he gets to his destination, just is walk out so that we can also protect their, their dignity. Uh, about the issue of the traffic jam, this is something which has always been discussed again and again. And at times I look at it, the people who discuss are not even the people who are using public transport. Because when you put the bus stage so far from town, then we expect people to walk that distance. I find that very unfair. For me, I would say I would want to come up with a solution before I get the stage out. Okay. But, your, your, your but time before is up. I get to that... Your, your time is up. Okay, I add you 30 seconds, but again, clarity. So before, before I get to the solution, I would advise that we, we have buses whereby they, they come across. For example, from, if the buses are coming from Grobo, they, they come closing over to the other side. We have... There's little load whereby the, the traffic, the, the vehicles will come and close 
to the other side without saying that the, the, the bus, bus stop or the stage will be at Grobo and then people have to walk all the way to town. All right, and uh, just uh, to come to you, Mr. Nyamwamu, as well on the same issue of the perennial traffic jams in this uh, country's capital, what is your solution? So first, let's expand the use of, the use of BRTs in our city, number one. Number two, let's introduce shifts, working shifts. Let people do not no come at the same time and leave at the same time. Uh, services that don't need people to come at, to start work at eight, they can have shifts from uh, maybe 11 to, I don't know, uh, add eight hours to that. But the concept is to have people come to work at different shifts. Uh, in essence, there was something that was talked about in 2013 about introducing uh, Nairobi into a 24-hour economy. Let's introduce that 24-hour economy where we can have shifts. Some people come at this time, this time, or that time. Another thing we can do about congestion is to have car holidays, days where, you know, we don't allow private cars or cars of particular uh, whatever to come into the city. Let everybody use the BRTs or whatever pl public transportation is available to come to the city. Thank you. That will help with uh, decongestion. Your, your time is up. And uh, I start with uh, Esther Waring on podium number one. Your closing remarks, 30 seconds, and kindly adhere to the time. I would say that um, the national government um, funds distribution to be considered because the county government has more of the functions, yet um, not enough money to fulfill those functions. And uh, the other thing is that um, I would say is that um, I've lost my mind. Okay, and your time <laughs> yeah, is up. So uh, that is all I would say. <laughs> that uh, in partnership with the go with the national government and the county government would really bring a smooth uh, running of this city. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haman Grower. Okay, closing remarks are normally a lot longer, but I'll try. Thirty seconds. So, I'm the Safina candidate for Nairobi governor. I'm 25 years old, and my can candidature came as a shock to many. But I feel I've outlined the qualities I have that allowed me to be backed by Jimmy Richard Wanjigi and Paul Muite for this position. I've come up with solutions for free healthcare, free education, and jobs for people across Kenya. And you can read my manifesto on harman47.com. Through strategy, this was also my manifesto launch that cost me zero shillings. Again, showcasing how I can up. use little resources and accomplish uh, thank a lot you. of things. Your, your time Thanks is up. Thanks so much. Thank you. Ms. Nancy Wamboy Mwadime. 30 seconds. Uh, my closing remarks, I would want to speak to the voters and tell them that uh, if they vote for Nancy Wamboi, they will be voting for a reader who have them at heart. And I also want to advise them that it is time they choose or they select a reader who is a reader, not because he's coming from big parties, not because he's giving them money, but a leader who can go and work for the, for, for the people. The leader who will go and know that he has been sent there and be Your a leader time for Mwanaichi. Your time is up. Mr. Nyamuamu. I want uh, Nairobi voters to know there is a choice. Uh, and the choice is not necessarily to either choose between either Sakaja or Igade. There are other candidates. Uh, there have been issues where, you know, the media has kind of contributed to the issue of us not getting our word out there. But now that we are here, it's our platform to say, Nairobi, Sakaja, the Igade quit on you, do not be forced to choose him. Sakaja was there five years ago, for five years, didn't do anything, gave up the functions. Please, there are other choices here with manifestos. Your time's up. And people who Thank are you. willing to work. Thank you so much. Mr. Nyamuamu, and just to point out, this platform has been organized by a majority of media houses across the country and you're being watched on several television stations and being heard on radio stations. So we really do appreciate you creating time for us tonight. And of course, that is how we wrap this debate. And now, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, our viewers at home, we end it here for now. Our appreciation to the candidates and their respective campaigns for honoring voters with this duty to debate. 
And we thank you for watching. Our second debate involves Senator Johnson Sakaja of the United Democratic Alliance Party and Poli Kapigade of the Ruling Jubilee Party and the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition Political Party and comes to you live at exactly 8 p.m. My name is Ayub Abdikadir Abdi. Check it. Let's talk about banking. Or let's talk about dreams and goals. Your dreams, your goals. If you're like Louise, you value doing biz with ease. Or maybe you're like Dan. A family man with a plan. A Diamond Trust Bank. It starts with one dream, one goal, one deposit, and one transaction. Pamoja, let's make it happen. So don't just bank with us, bank on us. Enroll at Catholic University of Eastern Africa for courses in nursing, law, business, economics, computer science, education, community health and development, actuarial science, international relations, counseling psychology, regional integration and theology. September intake ongoing at Langata and Eldoret campuses. Email for innovative, marketable graduates. I think the most important quality of a leader is wisdom, so that the decisions that are being made now, he knows how, you know, it's like a chess player who sees 10 moves ahead. Najua kata mbukwa mbulipa ushuru, mbulipa ushuru na ipa ushuru wake, anataka onya, ngalau, kazi ya pesa yaka mbukwa na ilipia. Ipesa, tunamini kwa zinaishia kwa mifuko za watu binafsi. I think it's important that wealth is declared frequently, and if people have found ways to accumulate wealth very quickly, um, absolutely good for them as long as of course that is done honestly and ethically. We need leaders who are well educated to understand uh, the challenges that we face in the modern world. Karibu Pam. By offering market linkages, networking opportunities, and technical assistance, Kenya Association of Manufacturers assists its members to grow and scale up their businesses. Join us and let us work together to grow the manufacturing sector. Becoming a CAM member is as easy as one, two, three. Association of Manufacturers, driving global competitiveness. What is a secondary school in Kenya? It ranges from 106 high-cost national schools, educating 3% of the learners, where you find ultra-modern libraries and laboratories, the most experienced principals and teachers, and the best teacher-student ratios. Then we have 7,019, some barely established, understaffed, lacking basic facilities, sub-county schools, educating over 60% of learners. Given that KCAC is the most consequential examination in our education system, isn't it fair that we level the ground for all learners to excel by narrowing the capacity gaps between the worst and best schools to deliver quality education? Usama Agenda calls for a sub-county schools upgrading program and a change from the capitation model to enable small schools to grow. Without these, SDG 4 is a false promise to most Kenyan children. We shall legalize weed. Professor George Luchiri Wajakoya of the Roots Party. <laughs> Raila Amolo Odinga of the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Party. David Mwaure Wahiga of the Agano Party. And William Samoye Ruto of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. Presidential Debate 2022. Do not adjust your sets.
Well, a data analyst, an IT practitioner, and two real estate uh, CEOs or uh, experts in their particular field. Those are the four candidates that showed up for the first debate that's run from about 5.30 p.m. to and concluded a couple of minutes ago here at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. We are live with the first ever inaugural Nairobi gubernatorial debate uh, this coming just before the uh, deputy president's debate that will happen next week and the presidential debate that will happen the week after. Many thanks for staying with us. We are live across uh, all TV platforms and radio platforms as well. Uh, my name is Wahiga Mwara from Citizen TV at our Studio B, where my guests are on standby to analyze what has been a very interesting last hour and a half or so. Uh, who showed up here and who did not show up? Well, I'll tell you who didn't show up. Dennis Kother didn't show up. Agnes Kagura did not show up. Cleophas Kio did not show up. Uh, but the other four of the seven that had been, of course, cleared uh, by the IBC and had met the threshold 5% and below in popularity rankings in the last opinion polls were there. Also, you know that in the next one hour or so, we'll have the second debate that will be featuring uh, Poliki Kap Igade of the uh, Jubilee uh, Azimio Coalition and, of course, uh, Johnson Sakaja of UDA. So stay tuned for that. But meanwhile, my uh, analysts on standby, they've been keenly following the action here at the Catholic University of Eastern Please. Africa. And Professor Odoti, I want to actually start with you with that same question that I began with. Who showed up? And in your view, who should have stayed at home <laughs> this, after, <laughs> this evening? <laughs> Actually, I think for me, except for Haman, the rest should have stayed at home. The rest should have stayed, the rest should have stayed at home. You need to quantify that. Uh, I think if you, you know, we said, I said at the start that if you are a fringe candidate, you need to leave an impression on people. Uh, and you need to be very clear about what you say. You're given one minute, talk about the real issue. I struggled to find what the real issue on each of them were. Uh, starting with Nancy. Uh, I think Nancy's real issue that stands out for me is her ideas about getting all tribes to fight corruption, that bring everybody together, then corruption is fought. As a friend of mine would say, nonsense on stills. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Prof, uh, let, me, let me cut you there, because I'm told one of the candidates for the next debate is actually expected here any minute now, Polikap Igade, and so let's hear from uh, Leila Mohammed now, who's on standby with that update. Well, Wahiga, it's been 90 minutes full of debates and engagement around the capital city. That is Nairobi. That was the first debate. The second one is incoming in the next few minutes. And uh, those two gentlemen who are expected in this second tier of the debate are already in this vicinity of the Catholic University of Eastern Africa choir here at the Langata campus. We are aware that Pauli the Jubilee Party and the Azimio One Kenya Alliance is already here. He is expected to drive into this red carpet area any moment. Now, as you can see, this is an entire team of the, the media representation awaiting this arrival. Those two gentlemen above the 5% capacitation of uh, this polling that was done before uh, this criteria was brought into the four. Four have already been taken through questions in the first year of this debate and quite an interesting uh, sitting there where matters at the heart of the residents of this beautiful county of Nairobi have been undertaken from unemployment, from the question of uh, living within the city, from the issues around garbage, the stinking issues of garbage in the city and the prospects of making good money around the county of Nairobi are uh, matters that are quite at the center and the heart of the people who call Nairobi home. Remember, Nairobi doesn't live in isolation. It is not an island. It is supported by four other counties and towns across the other countries are also considered the bedroom states of Nairobi County and in totality about 9 million people live, work and do business around the capital city. That is County 047. So we are keeping an eye on the lights. This is where the introductory session will be and uh, the gentleman of the moment will be driving down any moment now. Why Higa and your panel, you've been discussing around what are some of the expectations of of the voters who are expected to come here and listen uh, to the people uh, who want to replace an 
now as the fourth governor of the county of Nairobi. This gentleman who is driving in any time now is no stranger to City Hall, having served for six months in 2017 as the deputy governor of the county of Nairobi. This under the Sonko administration having to leave office. Uh, those are some of the questions that were undertaken in uh, this first debate. And uh, as I'm being told by the director, uh, the team is walking down into the red carpet area where we'll be receiving them. Myself and Francis Gashuri from Citizen Television will be taking them through the initial questions. How do they feel? Uh, looking at how they have adorned themselves. Are they ready for this debate? This debate will be undertaken by NTV's Mark Masai as well as KTN News' Zubeda Kananu. It will be a double language uh, interview and uh, they will have 90 minutes to explain to the people of Nairobi County and indeed uh, the 47 counties that depend on uh, Nairobi uh, in interconnectivity in one way or the other on why they are considered the best candidate uh, for this beautiful city of Nairobi. Uh, Francis, uh, it's been an emotional afternoon this evening the expectations are quite high the gentlemen at uh, the back of our hands uh, really going through the paces they are the people for the shots for the media houses they are the think tank behind this special broadcast that is coming to you live online on radio on television wow anywhere you're looking at us you're seeing this special debate what are their expectations as the people behind this initiative? Absolutely, Leila. Breaking the newsroom boundaries today. Uh, no particular station, no competition, no nothing. Uh, just bringing uh, Kenyans an opportunity, giving Kenyans an opportunity to hear, see, engage the guys who want to be governors of Nairobi. And there you can see, um, as you rightly put it, Leila, uh, you can see Poli Kapigade, and the his Jubilee team. candidate, and his team. Uh, I can see from afar Rachel Shebesh, uh, the Senate candidate of the Azimio team, uh, uh, Edwin Sifuna. And uh, let them come over. Here is the red carpet. Um, good welcome. evening sir welcome to choir. welcome how does it feel to be here uh it feels very good it's a cool nairobi evening and thank you very much for having us you look it's quite sharp you're smartly dressed are you having any ghost bumps today uh -huh. absolutely not especially when i'm flanked by edwin sifuna here our incoming senator and our leader here rachel shebesh we're very very proud to be here and good evening, Nairobi. The transition from uh, running mate in 2017 to gubernatorial candidate in 2022, how does it feel for you? Uh, it feels exciting and I really thank our party, Azimio La Umoja, for earning me the ticket and for the people of Nairobi, for the confidence they have shown, the excitement to our ticket. And we want to assure them we shall not let them down. And we are here to tell them what we are going to do for them and how we are going to do it and how we are going to do it together. Without preempting what my colleagues Mark Masai and Zubeda will do, what are your expectations in this debate? I just expect that uh, we shall show the maturity of the Republic of Kenya, especially in Nairobi. This is Kenya's sitting room and uh, people behave very well in the living room. So we are going to show maturity, we are going to demonstrate that we are truly ready to serve. Shabesh, why, why would your company gather here? Why not allow him uh, to be here and watch on TV? Well, I am leading the campaign for Azimio in Nairobi uh, under the Azimio umbrella. And therefore, I am here to not only give my and lend my support, but to just assure Nairobians that Azimio is the team. And it is a team effort. It's not only about the governorship because we, we know that without the role of the senator uh, who oversights that uh, body, which is the uh, devolved gov government of Nairobi, that also we don't have a complete team. So I am here to just say that uh, as Azimio, we are very proud that we have a governor incoming who is sharp and brilliant. And I think the people of Nairobi today will see why we chose Igade. Sifuna, there is no senator debate, of, absolutely. But... Uh, Umedandia Pia. Sija Dandia, you know that uh, in the event the people of Nairobi are gracious enough to give me the position of senator, I am going to be uh, oversighting uh, this uh, gentleman who would be elected governor. 
uh, we want to hear from them and uh, know as the office of the senator that uh, what they're proposing represents the best use of the resources for the people of Nairobi. We have campaigned together. We know the issues that the people have raised and we believe that uh, we have the best solution as Azimio. I am actually very proud to work with uh, my governor candidate because he's a credible candidate. He's somebody who starts off with credibility and we're hoping that uh, he will demonstrate to the rest of the county that in fact our ticket represents the best ticket for the governorship. Asante sana, we allow you to proceed. Welcome. Asante karibuni sana. Uh, uh, and feel free that has been quite an initial discussion Francis the Azimio One Kenya Alliance team just uh, being introduced to the media team here as they take on the red carpet Waihiga let me take it back to you with your panel you've seen how the Azimio One Kenya Alliance team has come full throttle and uh, they are hoping that this will be the debate that will turn the 25% of undecided voters towards their side as we await uh, the UDA candidate Johnson Sakaja. Indeed, Leila, I believe the term political entourage uh, was uh, exemplified there with the team that has flanked uh, Poli Kapigade as a Mio One Kenya candidate for the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. He had some interesting things to say about the kind of politics he's hoping for, mature, and we'll be discussing some of the statements that he made there together with his team, with my panel. But first things first, we've had another debate that's just ended. Uh, what are the immediate reactions from some of the candidates that uh, had to face those moderators there for the last 90 minutes or so? Let's hear from Beatrice Gatonye on the other side. Beatrice. Asante sana wahiga maura pamoja na wachanganuzi hapo na bila shaka wenzetu pandule mwingi ngine uh, kama jinsi ambavyo umesikia polika pigadha tayari amewasili katika eneo hili akijiandaa kwenye awamu ya pili ya mjadala huu wa jioni ya leo lakini ni sisi mengi uh, kwenye mjadala wa kwanza wa wawaniaji ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi mengi ya masuala yameweza kujitokeza katika uh, mjadala huo huku masuala ya maji masuala ya ufisadi masuala ya nyumba uh, masuala ya msongamano wa magari ni baadhi ya masuala ambayo yameweza kujitokeza huku uh, hawa wawaniaji wa waelezea wakazi wa Nairobi jinsi wataweza kukabiliana na changamoto hizi ambazo uh, zinawakumba wakazi uh, hawa. Na ningependa kuungana naye Kenneth Nyamwamu ambaye alikuwa hapo jioni ya leo uh, ambaye pia anawania kitu gavana tarehe tisa mwezi Agosti. Bwana Nyamwamu, unadhani kwamba umeweza uh, kuwahimiza wapiga kura takriban milioni mbili nukta nne wa kaunti ya Nairobi kukupigia kura na hasa kuhusiana na swala la ufisadi unadhani ulifanya vipi katika swala hilo ukilinganisha na wenzako ambao um, mlikuwa mkikabiliana nao katika swala hili uh, asante sana i think um, tumeuza sera zetu kwa hii platform tumeonyesha manifesto zetu uh, and i feel confident uh, nime convince watu wa Nairobi uh, kuwa i'm the right man for the job uh, jambo la pili kwa ufisadi um nitarudia kile nilisema uh, until tuache kuyumba yumba kwa mambo ya ufisadi hatutarekebisha anything hatuta deal na makatel hatuta deal na watu wanaiba pesa kutoka kwa county uh, ile kitu imebaki saa hii ni kunyonga watu wanaiba pesa Asante sana uh, na kutakia kila laheri na tumai wakazi wa Nairobi ambao wanatazama jioni ya leo uh, wataweza kuamua iwapo basi wewe ndiwe utakaye kuwa ukiongoza kaunti hii kwa miaka mitano ijayo. Asante sana kwa muda wako. Uh, Ningependa kuungana naye pia wa chama cha Safina ambaye anawania uh, kiti cha ugavana kaunti ya Nairobi Herman Gerwal. Asante uh, sana kwa kujumuika nasi jioni ya leo. Uh, wa, wa, wakazi wa Nairobi wamekuwa kikutazama jioni ya leo na wafanyi biashara ndogo ndogo wamekuwa kisikiza sera zako na jinsi ambavyo utaweza kuwasaidia na kuinua maisha yao unadhani kwamba umeweza kuhimiza wakazi hawa um, so nimesema nime running mate yangu anafanya kazi na KCB kwa SME department mimi nataka kusaidia kila mtu kama we ni uh, wewe ni mtoto ya sky ama wewe ni mtoto ya mechanic nitasaidia wewe kwa sababu mimi sitaki baadaye ya miaka 20 wewe unakaa hivi hivi so I'm trying to badlisha maisha ya watu wengi kwa Nairobi na natuma teknolojia ya kisasa na fundisha watu pia nimeleta elimu ya bure. So kama mtu anataka kusoma 
tutasoma tutapata kazi tabadilisha maisha Asante sana Grey wala nakutakia kila la heri naomba nijumuike naye Nancy Mwadime ambaye pia ni mwaniaji wa kiti cha ugavana kaunti ya Nairobi uh, takriban wapiga kura milioni 2.4 jioni ya leo wamekuwa kikutazama pamoja na wakenya kwa jumla uh, swala la uzoaji taka ni swala ambalo umeweza kukabiliana nalo ukilinganisha na wenzako ambao mlikuwa mkijadiliana nao swala hili unadhani umefanya vipi Uh, majina langu ni Nancy Wamboi Mwadime. Naomba tafadhali unieleze kuhusiana na swala la taka, uzoaji taka jijini Nairobi ukilinganisha na wengine tu uh, kwa wepesi labda unieleze unadhani umefanya vipi na unadhani kwamba umeweza kumuhimiza mkazi wa Nairobi akupigie kura iwapo utaweza kukabiliana na swala hili. Uh, mimi naona nimefanya vizuri sana kwa sababu nataka kusema Nairobi kil, uh, kila mfanyi biashara mdogo mkubwa sisi sote tuko Nairobi na tumekuja na tuko hapa tutafute na tufanya Nairobi ikue pahali tunaweza kaa pamoja na peace. Asante na kutakia kila la heri. Naungana pia na mweniaji Esther Waringa, mmoja uh, wa wale ambao walikuwa hapa jioni ya leo. Asante sana kwa kufika. Unadhani kwamba mjadala huu kulinganisha na wengine umefanya vipi jioni ya leo? Naweza sema nimefanya sawa. Uh, I've done well. I've given it my best and um i must say that uh, i can be able to identify with the lowest class of people since i was raised and born in the slums and at the same time i'm in business and i believe that both both levels of people i can identify with them once i'm given a chance to be governor of this nairobi asante sana esther kila la heri uh, wakazi wa nairobi mmepata fursa ya kutazama awamu ya kwanza ya mjadala wa wawaniaji ugavana katika kaunti ya nairobi uh, tarehe 9 mwezi agosti tutaweza uh, kuamua mbivu na mbichi na ni nani atakaye uh, kuwa kichukua kiti hicho kutoka kwa an kananu kwa sasa ningependa nikuelekeze kwa Waihiga Mwaura ambaye yuko na wachanganuzi jioni ya leo watueleze kwa undani baadhi ya masuala haya ambayo nimeweza kusema kwamba yameweza kuibuka kwenye mjadala wa kwanza waweze kuingia kwa undani uh, kisha baadaye awamu ya pili ya mjadala wa jioni ya leo utakuwa ukingwa nanga Waihiga Mwaura kwako Asante uh, sana Beatrice Gatonye wacha mimi niendelee na mahojiano yangu hapa na wageni na wachanganuzi wangu Uh, I hope I was sana and even as we carry on with our debate here remember Polycarp gather in the building uh, with about another 30 minutes or so to that uh, second debate that will be happening this evening here at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa we continue watching the clock as we await and anticipate the arrival of the UDA candidate Johnson Sakaja remember it is a two person debate both of them having polled 5% or more in the last three opinion polls in sort of popularity rankings uh, and that's a debate that will be hosted by Zubeda Kome uh, of KTN and Mark Masai of NTV so stay tuned for that uh, one candidate already in the building he's given his expectations he's come with his team uh, as well and, and they are confident they are bullish uh, that they have what it takes to uh, to put a good showing in the debate uh, he says he has no uh, goosebumps no uh, uh, fear uh, that is Poli Kapigade uh, and we now wait uh, for the other candidate uh, to make his way here for that of course we were also reviewing the previous debate you've had from those four candidates uh, Herman Greywall uh, there uh, Esther Thairu Esther Waringa Thairu and Nancy Mwadi and of course Kenneth Nyamwamu and uh, my panelists were quickly giving their take on what the first debate was like as they also dive into what they're anticipating with that uh, second debate Karen Wakoli who's uh, to my far left there uh, can also weigh in on this who came out uh, on top who made a difference in the first debate and who didn't Wow. so in fact let me just start where Dr Odote left of at um, he said um, Maybe we should have just had one person show up and the rest should have said well, at all. That's a fair characterization, but please proceed. Yeah, so for me I would say I applaud each and every one of those candidates for just showing up. They honored us with their presence. That that's really awesome. But some of the things that are critical in terms of just selling yourself as a leader, posture, for instance, I was looking at the posture. I was looking at uh, the outlook do those individuals inspire confidence in me as a voter to give them my vote or no um the confidence ability to communicate and communicate clearly i was looking out for that uh and a few things came out you know among all those four individuals like if you, if you had a best communicator award this evening for the first debate who would you give it to you know what I work for young people I serve young people this evening I am so proud 
<laughs> of young people. That okay. When young people are given opportunity, they give their best. Haman did an awesome job. He's a great communicator. He seems to have thought through his ideas and his agenda uh, beforehand. He, he was outstanding to me, I, I think. Practical steps in terms of uh, mentoring young people, starting um, a funding mechanisms for young uh, entrepreneurs, digitizing the economy within Nairobi County government. Very practical, salient steps that he wants to take. So I think for me this evening, he stood out. Uh, Prof. Omenia? Your, your reading of the overall quality of debate uh, that was had today. Of course, now, Kenya's not having watched a Nairobi gubernatorial debate at this level before, this being the first time, even as you respond to what the other panelists have had to say. Also, let's talk about the quality of the debate that you saw. Yeah, thank you, Waiga. Um, of course, some, I'm Professor, some first to mark to issue marks. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, let's declare yeah. that and, and all the candidates failed, but uh, all, actually. All, think, all failed. Uh, all failed. What's uh, your marking scheme? Some came very close. <laughs> it's forty percent. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think Brewell and uh, and uh, uh, Nyamwamu um, scored over thirty-five, and uh, <laughs> the other two ladies uh, di did about twenty percent. Uh, this is an issue. I mean, on a serious note, I think. I think um, none of the candidates thought about any serious issue affecting this city to good depth whether you're looking at transport whether you're looking at housing whether you're looking at small business it was all very shallow all very very trivial when it came to governance issues and even the politics of the city relationship between national and county government again um, you could not see any candidate uh, understand how government runs how the politics of the city is worked and how they weave their way around it uh, but the, but one of the reasons why i failed them is that uh, None of them came up, came out with any any interesting idea. They are, they are recycling old ideas and in a very very shallow way, <laughs> across board. You don't think a border border app for the whole county and three is... and three D printing of uh, of homes to reduce <laughs> costs. <laughs> and I mean, uh, they're all. <laughs> you see, uh, the the truth of the matter is that uh, you ask yourself, what, from what planet do these people come from? Mm. Uh, my my point is that um, we were hoping that at least, at least. A candidate, we're, we're hoping that these are fringe candidates with very specific agendas from their parties, mm -hmm. uh, be it agenda around youths, be it agenda around business and so on. And what I would have really wanted to see was a candidate at least pick one issue and run away with it, whatever issue it, it, it was really. Uh, and, you and, and you did not see that? And, and a, across I, board, I mean, I did not see anything, uh, be it from tr transport, be, be it uh, SMEs, be it uh, gen revenue generation. Uh, and you, I, didn't I don't, see, I don't, you didn't see even? No, no, no. Okay. Zero. Okay. Oh. Philip, before I come to you, uh, Wanjiro, <laughs> can you really go deep in two minutes? I don't uh, think, well... Uh, are we being an overly unfair? Well, I'm definitely not, not going to be as strict as Professor there. <laughs> um, I come from a civil society perspective, an inclusion perspective, and my view is, is quite different. I think it's great that they put themselves forward. Um, I think I uh, yeah. in time we are going to get more serious candidates, and I think it's a reflection on the parties in a way. I think in terms of um, Haman Grawal, uh, the ideas he put forward may, may not be necessarily new. I think in terms of technology, some very good ideas, mm. maybe not new earth shattering, but that goes to show that we have an implementation gap because we have loads of good policies that aren't implemented. So don't blame the candidates for not having new ideas because we are not lacking new ideas. What we wanted here is to have a more convincing um, kind of a, a manifesto. And I felt that Haman Grawal, uh, as a youth, presented himself very well. I think he executed his points very well. His closing was excellent. He brought in his party. He brought in his party leadership. And w listening to him, I could see if he stays this course, the if, you can see a, a leader in the making. Mm. M my, having said all that, I do think there is a need for candidates to, to, to start at a level that, you know, to find their level. You want to build your political uh, name and your capital 
MCA is a very valid position and I just felt there were good ideas, Ouch. good intent. It was more like a public participation session <laughs> and I was thinking it would be great if these people put themselves forward for MCA and show a commitment to political change. We, we invited that, them for a debate, not a public participation no, in terms of, session. But I, 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 yes, the, the level of, of contribution was more of a public participation session and I think the level of contribution also means they should start, you know, if I'm going into a job, I start at my entry level and build up. Okay. You don't go to the top without the credentials. So, so yes, a bit of reality. I think the last thing is, in terms of the no-shows, Agnes Kagore hasn't been doing too badly in terms of the polls. She may lose out by not showing up. And, and we may see Haman uh, Grawal really gain from, from being here. Um, and then, of course, the issue of skeletons. When you put yourself forward for political <laughs> office, <laughs> your skeletons will come, will come out and, and you could lose very badly. And it could affect even your private and personal life. So, yes, do, do your homework on all, on all fronts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Philip, uh, let me allow you to win, but I'm, I'm told we'll also be hearing from our Francis Gashuri uh, shortly as well. Uh, but Bonakisia, was there any highlight for you this evening? Well, I think, um, first of all, let me uh, join my colleagues in congratulating those who turned up okay. for the debate. That, that's your first I think it's only fair yes. because you must be brave to present yourself yeah. in such a uh, high level debate. Agreed. But uh, if you ask me if I were to mark, I'm not a professor, but I mark exams, <laughs> I would mark them three and a half out of ten. Okay, all of them, all of them, three and a half after ten. Some would get even one. <laughs> uh, apart from, uh, I think it was Kenneth and Herman, they probably score about three, three and a half. All right, and just, uh, just as uh, when Jira said, I think you need to know where your place is. Okay, at a point Philip, I may need to interrupt you for uh, a developing event here at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. I'm told Johnson Sakaja is in the premises. And uh, there we go. Francis Gashuri has that update for us. We've been waiting for this, Gashuri. Absolutely, Wahiga. And good afternoon to you once again. Uh, uh, Johnson Sakaja, the UDA candidate, is within the premises, uh, just like uh, Polikapigada was a short while ago. Uh, he should be walking uh, down this route uh, shortly uh, so that we can also get an opportunity. So, Gashuri, we say. are expecting the senator of Nairobi County, the current senator who is expecting uh, to become Nairobi's fourth governor, Johnson Sakaja of UDA, who we are aware is already in the vicinity. Uh, less than five minutes ago, Polly Kapigade arriving here with an entire entourage of people and personalities who believe in his wisdom. We are just hoping that uh, uh, Sakaja has already been accredited and will be walking in a similar fashion uh, to how his uh, competitor and uh, core debater will be received. Uh, this turning out to be quite an interesting evening. We were expecting uh, that uh, this debate was going to happen at 7.30. Mm -hmm. Now we are ha we're hoping it for it to begin at 8 p.m. Uh, for another 90 minutes minute round of questions and answers. Uh, some of the questions being undertaken in the first debate, uh, inclusive of insecurity, mm -hmm. unemployment, the cost of UNGA, uh, traveling around the city. Uh, how does this city look like? Why is it important mm -hmm. to this country that is Kenya? Uh, the, the gentleman expected to walk into into this red carpeted mm -hmm. area is no stranger to politics of Nairobi having uh, served as a senator for the last mm -hmm. five years. Absolutely. Uh, why is it important for him to be here today uh, to try and convince Nairobians as the best candidate for governor? Absolutely, Leila. And just a short while ago, uh, Professor Philip Kaloki, is a running mate to Polika Pigade, just walked in. Uh, we're waiting to see Sakaja. As soon as we are able to do that, we'll be able to inform our viewers that uh, Sakaja is around. But the wait and see continues for now. Remember, he's been a nominated member of the National Assembly and senator for five years, uh, representing Nairobi County in the Senate, the bicameral parliament, the National Assembly and the Senate. So he has been a representative of Nairobi County in the Senate, county number 047. So, Wahiga, let me hand it back to you. As soon as we spot Sakaja, definitely we'll be able to tell our viewers and just got to hear what he has to say insofar as this debate is concerned. Back to you, Wahiga. 
Thanks so much, uh, Gashuri and Leila. I must uh, warn you, it's getting a bit chilly here in our Studio B, but that debate coming up in the next 30 minutes is expected to heat things up. Already in the building, Poli Kapi gathered the Azimio candidate with his team and his running mate, Professor Philip Kaloki. We are expecting Johnson Sakaja, the UDA candidate, with his, uh, hopefully also with his running mate, uh, James Mushiri, uh, also to make their way here shortly. So in case I have to interrupt my guest to take you to that, I will do so, so that you don't miss any of this action on this live uh, coverage across all stations, both TV and radio as well. Bonakisia, you are giving us your marking scheme. And also feel free now to begin to wade into the next debate. Uh, everyone focused yeah, on those yeah, two. Yeah, okay. Now, of, of course, my colleagues have said a lot about uh, the, uh, the debate which, which has just ended. But I think the candidates who are here were very casual. They didn't seem to understand the issues. They didn't provide any solutions. Uh, they kept on repeating what we've heard before. There were no new ideas. And uh, if you ask me, I think uh, they should receive a bill. They should receive an invoice <laughs> <laughs> for, for consuming time. prime time. I'm here, you are, you're saying I was harsh. For consuming <laughs> prime time. No. Uh, are not giving us value. But are not Kisia, giving us value. They however, time, however, they may have engaged researchers. However, it's not see, easy. No, well, we, we must be brutal. Grawande we must be brutal. Eh? So, so they, knew, it, they knew they were coming for a debate. What are your expectations They then? knew they were coming for a debate. <laughs> they should have done their homework. There was no homework that was done. They probably just thought they were coming here for child's play. I'm sorry. So they get three. Some get, get some of them get one. But that is a warning shot <laughs> to Honorable Sakaja, who is coming here. Yes. And Poli Kapigane. I hope you're prepared. Exactly. Otherwise, I can remark you properly. <laughs> how, how different do you anticipate, and tell me this briefly, yeah. the, 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 the level of debate, the type of questions you now expect to hear in the next debate as compared to the now, one we just came you out see, of? You uh, see, I think this is ch it was chance, chance player. Yeah? <laughs> now, the they don't need to now, believe at that point. These were adults the, who the, are... the level now we are getting to, you know, it, we, we, we know we, we had tackles. We expect to deal with policy. We expect them to address the issue of strategy. We expect them to tell us how they are aligning Nairobi's vision and their tactics to Vision 2030. We expect them to tell us how they intend to do things given the manifestos their parties have delivered. Because, see, you are not going to work in a vacuum. Already, the country has Vision 2030. It has about seven, eight years to go. Already, government has programmed itself for the next seven, eight, seven, eight, uh, in seven to eight, eight years. So, if you don't align... You are, you are thinking to the national government thinking to which on 2030 you may lose a lot. And we're in the capital city. So I expect these two gentlemen to tell us very, very clearly how they have aligned their programs to the national government. How they, for example, intend to retire the debts. We are now at 75 billion. When I left office, I think it was about 14 billion. Now it's 75 billion. How are you going to finance projects, capital projects, when you are heavily indebted. So how are you going to deal with the issue of debt? Mm. How, are, you know, which areas are you going to prioritize in terms of, uh, in, in, in terms of um, service delivery? Um, of course, the biggest right now in terms of service delivery is the issue of solid waste management. Mm. Do you have a solution for solid waste management? I heard one of the candidates in the previous debate talk about, you know, uh, throwing litter. I mean, we churn out 3,000 tons of solid waste daily. 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 How do you intend to deal with that? So it's not a question of telling it's not about, people, uh, stop, stop, stop it now. Yeah. That won't solve the problem overnight. But Professor Dote, for, for, for us to understand what sort of governors, uh, Johnson Sakaja or Poli Kapigade, or any of the others would be, you have to look at their, their DNA and sort of where they've come from. Uh, you probably know a little bit about these two individuals. Mm -hmm. What would you say separates them? Uh, in terms of how they've come up, how Nairobians got to know about them as well. Just, just give us your analysis. Uh, thanks, uh, Wahiga. I think uh, if you look at uh, both of them, I think the... And Philip is laughing. I don't know why he's laughing. <laughs> but if you look at both of them, I think what uh, uh, separates them is in terms of their background. Uh, if you look at... Uh, both of them are fairly young, so they aren't too old. Uh, so you expect modern thinking, which is a, a, a good thing. But if you look at the experience that they have, 
one has an experience in politics uh, that is johnson uh, johnson has uh, experience in politics having uh, found found a tna having been uh, a nominated mp having been a senator so understands the political so the political aspect of running a governor the other one uh, understands uh, management much more having been in private sector uh, for a long time having uh, essentially his life is corporate uh, I think his experience with politics was just six months. So I think the debate, and you know, there's been a huge debate in the past. What does county governments require? Do they require a manager or do they require a politician? And the answer is out there. Uh, I think in 2013, we thought you required a manager. Later on in 2017, we got to get largely politicians. And if you look at the performance of the governors, you can't say whether the manager is better than the politician or vice versa. So I think that's going to be the, a lot of the conversation going to take place. On the one instant, when you talk about do you have the experience, the question is going to be what kind of experience. Is it management experience or is it a political experience? That's going to be the, the, the critical issue that's going to stand up between the two of them, in my view. And I, a very important point that you've raised. That I want to hear more from, from Karen on. Karen, when you look at where Nairobi is right now, uh, with NMS still very much involved in Nairobi affairs, uh, with the challenges that Nairobi faces, rapidly increasing population, under pressure from other capitals around the region who are seemingly uh, shining as well, garbage and transport and housing and so forth. Does Nairobi or would Nairobi fare better in the hands of a career politician or a career professional? Is one of the debates I've been hearing out there and I'd, I'd be keen to hear from you on, on, on where you think sort of is the best way forward. Nairobi would fare well in the hands of a leader, in the hands of a true leader, not a politician and not uh, whatever else you're talking about. But even if it's a politician, are they leaders? Do they have the ability to tap into the, the power of the resource of the people they have? Do they have a track record to be able to actually transform one thing to the other? Do they have a vision? Are they committed to that? Are they committed to listening to people and implementing policies to the latter? So it's about leadership. It's not about politics or management. They both have a track record. They have led, uh, Igade has led a business and a number of businesses. Been in several businesses. I several think. businesses. Um, Sakaja has been in the political space from student leadership at Sono in, at the University of Nairobi. So they both have a track record. But the question is, do they have the leadership ability to transform the county? That is the question. That's the big question yeah. for you this evening. Professor Omenya, I'm going to put you in the shoes of the moderators this evening, and, and they have their own questions which they'll pose. But if you had a chance to pose a question to each candidate this evening, Johnson Sakaja on one end, Polika Pigadi on the other, only one, which question or question, one for each, would you pose? I think I'd pose uh, two questions. Uh, You've added more than... <laughs> no, no, you, there are two one, guys. Oh, so two, one, one for each. So, so you can decide which one you take. Uh, who, who takes what? <laughs> I think one key question is really about what the position Nairobi occupies in the nation, in the region, and in the globe. So basically, if you're looking at Nairobi as uh, a potential future economic capital, literally, of, of Africa. How do you get the city there? The other question would be the other way, would, would, would be the reverse. Cities are for people. Cities are fundamentally for people. Mm -hmm. And currently, Nairobi is serving less than actually 10% of the citizens, largely corporates. And we are saying these invisible majorities that live in the slums, that contribute to the economy without getting a service, that you know have no place for their children to play, whose buildings collapse every day and die there, that walk to industrial area on a day-to-day -day basis. What are we going to do about them? Are we sending them to Sri Lanka or will develop the city in a way that all the citizens prosper socially and economically and what would they realistically do to deal with this dichotomy the need to create a glitzy city with an expressway and on the other hand the need to ensure that this resident of the informal settlement whose water has been increased today by 40 percent who was already paying you know 40 shillings per jerrican now they'll be paying 60. 
that this person actually finds Nairobi livable. That, that's the issue that I would, I, would, I would have really wanted them to, to engage. Pose to, to the both of them. And, and, right. and, and coming to you, Anjiro, before I hear from, from Philip Kiss, and you can respond, obviously, on the wider topic of uh, sort of uh, any advice you'd have for the two uh, candidates that will be coming up next. As much as there's great contestation to lead the country of Nairobi, that seat is a hot one. The first two office holders, I believe, are still battling cases in court uh, at the moment over the same. What advice would you have for the next <laughs> governor? You, you lead an accountability institution. What must they do? Uh, to ensure that uh, they tick the accountability box should Nairobians give them the mandate on the 9th of August? Well, yes, they should veer away from what has landed their predecessors into this problem. So it's more of what they should not do uh, in their individual capacity. Um, but I think the more crucial question is how do you transform the culture? Because Nairobi has a culture dating back many years of, of um, ingrained corruption, unfortunately. Um, and the issue of transformation is about changing systems. It's also about changing perspectives. It's about changing how we work and how we interact with each other. So beyond the ideas, because Nairobi has good policies. We were talking during the break. We have the um, master plan, um, the Nairobi uh, land use master plan that was developed in 2015. You know, we've got um, an integrated solid waste management plan that was developed for us by JICA and was, I think, enacted maybe in 2015 again. So we've got a public participation law. We, we, you know, we have the laws. We don't have the culture. So. What, what, what is, what are, how do we change from a county that is rooted in, you know, violation of rule of law, you know, breaking rules, you know, you talk about politicians, you talk about public officers, how do you transform that culture, I think is the bigger thing. Because until we close the implementation gap, I sit on the county budget economic forum, or I used to. It, it kind of fizzled out. This is a statutory body that allows citizens to engage in the public finance management system. Now, this body was set up by Evans Kidero and, uh, and, and kind of began working, but was always tokenistic, as you know, we were saying earlier. How do you move from that tokenism? to real implementation because the things we saw as the forum were, were very disturbing. You, we could see revenue falling, especially around elections. It would begin to decline. Mm. And we'd ask if you are collecting licensing fee and the economy is improving. It wasn't due to low economic performance. How can Why you are the revenues going? Revenue. It means mm. that money is being pocketed and the county assembly would allow this to go on. Agpo, talking about inclusion in uh, preferential procurement. Mm. This policy was enacted. The county was reporting on it but missing all the details. And these contracts were not being awarded to women, youth, and these other needy institutions. They were being captured. Solid waste. There was a youth program to set up in, in the informal settlements youth um, informal uh, businesses, CBOs. It was set up. It was there on paper. The youth were actually there. But what was happening? Politically, the positions were being given politically. Mm. So you actually poison the ground where young people know if you're politically aligned, you will get into the government scheme. So m the biggest crisis we have is that Kenyans or Nairobians possibly interact with uh, government in two ways. Either you're coerced and harassed or you're corrupt. So how do we transform that relationship into a conducive one? That, and that's a big question this evening. And I like that you've outlined what I feel effectively could be part of the entry of whoever will take office come the 9th of August. We're still live here from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Uh, we now have another 10 to 15 minutes or so for the start of the next debate. We continue to await the arrival of Johnson Sakaja, Senator Sakaja, the candidate for the Nairobi gubernatorial seat on a UDA ticket. We have been told he's on his way. We expect his arrival any minute now. Francis Gashuri, Leila Mohammed on standby uh, to give us that update as soon as he arrives. Um, remember, he's vying together with his running mate, a 
former bank executive James Mushiri, and it will be a two-person debate uh, expected to kick off in the next few minutes on this debate night. But of course, we're looking at a different, a couple of different scenarios with my panelists who are here. And Philip Kisia, I want to come to you. Uh, and at the very beginning, you made a statement that really set us off in a different direction when you said debates. In my view, they don't really matter. But the way we look at it right now, six out of nine uh, by the time we're done this evening isn't too bad. Candidates are taking debates. Seriously, have you changed your mind since uh, we spoke earlier uh, this <laughs> afternoon? Ohiga, you know, I'm the type of person who says what I mean. And I'm not about to change my statement. Mm -hmm. Politics in this country will remain the same for at least another five, ten years. Okay? Until we start addressing the issue of uh, ideology, the issue of ideas, it will be the same thing. Okay. It's we, what I'm talking about. We, now, we, uh, now, on that simple... So we have two candidates. The latest opinion polls uh, put the, the margin of difference between them anywhere between 5 to 10 percent max, you know, looking at... If, if you look at that. How do you capitalize on a debate like this tonight if you're one of the leading two, as per opinion polls, to ensure that you come out with... It is of benefit to you. How do you do that? You know... Um, I'm, I'm just hoping that, uh, uh, that uh, out of the two, one will be able to at least um, convince the voter who has not made up their mind that this is the right candidate. You can only do that if you show us that you have the capacity to actually actualize what they have already told you to do. Mm. You know, these guys have a very easy job. My sister, Wanjiru, talked about a plan, the new plan. The new plan was actually done by my team and handed over to Evans Kidero. Okay? It was actually a grant from JICA. And when JICA were giving me that money as a grant, not me, but the city, they asked me one question. You know, Mr. Kisia, can you promise us one thing? That this money we are spending, because these are public resources from Japan, that this plan will be implemented. And I said, you know what? I promise you, that this time round, it will not be a plan that will be put on the shelves to gather dust. It will be implemented. So it has not been implemented by, it was not implemented by Evans. It was not implemented by, um, by my, my friend, good friend Sonko. I'm hoping that out of the two, that this person from day one, that they'll pick up that plan and start implementing. Because the plan talks about solid waste management. It talks about public transport. It talks about housing. It talks about road infrastructure. It talks about everything. It talks about the, the Nairobian, how you can better the lives of the people of Nairobi. What, what, so what, there's, what, there's the, you know, what bottlenecks? They, really, they, they, mm. the, the, the two gentlemen, mm. Waiga, they just need to prove that they have capacity to implement this plan and how they are going to implement the plan. Because if they don't demonstrate, mm. if they don't show us how they intend to implement this plan, I don't think they'll do better than the ones who have been there before. So what am I expecting them to do when they get into office? Just to add on what uh, my colleagues have said. Number one, you know, the issue of integrity, which touches on graft, corruption. That is number one. Are you going to deal with it? Do you really have the willpower to get there and deal with decisively with the issue of corruption? Don't talk about cartels. Cartels are human beings like you. If you cannot get rid of them, Get rid of yourself. Get if, rid of yourself. If those questions that you want to pose to them, how did you perform during your tenure? Well, the records are there. It is during my oh, tenure. It's a <laughs> good to yes, it, is, it is during my tenure, Waiga. Go to the records and check. In 2010, City Council of Nairobi was rated in top five among us the most reformed public institution and most collaborative. Top five. In a matter of two years, my friend. Actually, it was one year, because I took over in May 2009, in less than a year. I was in top five. Reforms, reforms, my friend. So again, this master plan that we're talking about, I'll be happy to talk about. Okay. We delivered the master plan through a grant from JICA in 36 months. We started the process of automating City Hall. You are basically telling us that we next governor automated city can hall. make a difference. Yes, they it can make a difference. Plan, implement it. But, take the plan but, and but, implement. But I want to dig deeper, Prof. Omenia, and oh, yeah. I'm coming to you, Prof. Dotti, as well. There must be bottlenecks. I'm yes. sure every the, governor that came into that office <laughs> right. received the plan, looked at it, and thought, probably these are good ideas. Which right. bottlenecks? 
Bora, which one? <laughs> we, mu we must look at <laughs> this scientifically, <laughs> Philip <laughs> Kissel. Let me hear from <laughs> the <laughs> professor scientifically. <laughs> what are possible bottlenecks? To, I, because the ideas are known. Yes, I, I think the big challenge that we have in the country is, uh, I, I would look at it, uh, exactly both technical and political capacity to translate plans into action. Because uh, plans may seem to be neutral, but they're not. In fact, they're arrived at through a consultative and a broadly political process. And then on the other hand, uh, you don't just get a plan and implement. How do you implement a plan? You have to go to the assembly uh, and, and, and uh, you know, have the MCAs you know, look at these plans, turn them into annual development plans so that they can actually draw money out of them. In between there, there's a political process. It's not a technical process. And, and, and this is why we're saying that we need a leader who, who has the bigger vision, clearly spelled out, and then has all these plans. And, and then it, it, it can be able then to sit down with MCAs and, and say, look here, yeah, um, you are coming from this area, this part of the city, this is what you're looking for. This, is, this has been taken care of in the plan. Uh, you are coming from this area, this has been, uh, you are looking for this, this has been taken care of in this plan. So, so we're breaking this down so that uh, in this particular year, why don't we do one, two, three, four things that are in the plan? Because if you don't do that, then you end up doing what's happening in the country. Is planning by MCAs or planning by cartels or assuming that disparate projects will result into some coherent future whole? Is the plan that ties everything together? And, and, and to me, that's what I want to, to hear from both Polycat and, uh, and my friend Johnson Sakaja, that how will they be able to to, to get these technical, very good documents that have been done, and nobody disputes uh, that they're actually good documents, and be able to, 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 to go through this, uh, this political quagmire uh, that is packed with uh, all sorts of crocodiles called MCS, and, 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 and then be able to, to still deliver on these processes. Uh, another thing, we need a leader who, who understands both management and, 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 and planning processes, mm. but at the same time is suave politically, so that, uh, so that then they're able uh, to, you know, to, to get these things done. Okay. I need, right. I need to interrupt you there because I need to uh, take a break right now. Remember the hashtag is Nairobi Gov Debate 2022. We are live across all TV and radio networks. We're also using the hashtag Presidential Debates KE 2022 as well. We await within the next few minutes the start of the next debate. Uh, already in the building, Poly Kapigada, the Azimio candidate for the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. And any minute now, we expect uh, the arrival of Johnson Sakaja, the UDA candidate, of course, in the uh, Kenya Kwanzaa team as well. But for now, uh, let's take that uh, break. Uh, we are live from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa and we're here from our Studio B where we continue to analyze everything that happens around this debate today, this being the first one uh, in a set of three with the other two coming up over the next two weeks or so. Stay with us. Check it. Let's talk about banking. Or let's talk about dreams and goals. Your dreams, your goals. If you're like Louise, you value doing biz with ease. Or maybe you're like Dan, a family man with a plan at Diamond Trust Bank. It starts with one dream, one goal, one deposit, and one transaction. Pamoja, let's make it happen. So don't just bank with us, bank on us. We shall legalize weed. Professor George Luchiri Wajakoya of the Roots Party. <laughs> Raila Amolo Odinga of the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Party. <laughs> David Mwaure Wahiga of the Agano Party. And <laughs> William Samoye Ruto of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. Presidential Debate 2022. Do not adjust your sets. Good evening and welcome to the Pope Paul VI Learning Resource Center at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa in Nairobi. My name is Mark Masai. 
Oben TV. Na jina langu ni Zubaida Kome kutoka Runinga ya KTN News. Kutoka popote pale ulipo na kukaribisha katika mdahalo huu unaowahusisha wagombea wa ugavana katika kaunti ya Nairobi. This is the final of two debates involving the nine candidates cleared to run for governor. In the second debate, we are hosting Senator Johnson Sakaja of the United Democratic Alliance UDA which is affiliated with the Kenya Kwanza Alliance and Mr. Polycarp Igave of the Jubilee Party member party of the Azimio la Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party. Kulingana na kanuni zinazosimamia mdahalo huu, wawaniaji wana muda wa dakika 90 za kulumbana kupitia mailekezo na maswali kutoka kwangu na mwenzangu Mark. Maswali tumeabuni wenyewe na hayajajadiliwa na wahusika kwenye mjadala huu. And our questions are clustered into six segments each running for 15 minutes. As per our debate rules, each candidate has 2 minutes to make an opening statement, 1 and a half minutes to answer a question and 60 seconds for a rebuttal. The topics have been carefully selected after a thorough assessment of sentiments of the regular residents and voters in the city of Nairobi. Na maelekezo yetu pia yanahitaji wagombea wanaoshiriki mjadala huu kuzingatia tasfida wakati wa mjadala kumaanisha kwamba wasitumie lugha chafu ya matusi au kudhalilisha wenzao waendesha mjadala na watazamaji wanaofuatilia mjadala huu mbashara. Lugha ya maneno au ishara zinazoweza kutafsiriwa kuwa matusi hazitaruhusiwa kutumika kwenye mjadala huu. The same responsibility is shared by the audience seated here in this uh, auditorium. Uh, debate rules do not permit any cheers or jeers except now when we turn our attention to the debate platform to welcome the candidates Polycarp Igabe and Johnson Sakata. Na mtazamaji kwa uingia katika ukumbi huu tulikuwa tumeweka kura ambayo ilistahili kuelekeza ni nani ataingia kwanza na kuwa pa nambari wale wawaniaji wawili ambao tunatarajia kwenye mdahala huu kwa sababu sakaja kufikia sasa hajawasili ina maanisha kwamba Polycarp Igade wa Jubilee ndiye atakuwa ukumbini kwa hivi sasa And the show must move on so we will call in this first candidate Polycarp Igade of the Jubilee party Poli Kapigade uwanja ni wako. Tumkaribisha anapoingia. <laughs> Thank you. Maintain the position of your podium for the length of this uh, debate and uh, as indicated uh, our starting time was clear to all the candidates invited. Thank you for honoring this invitation and that slot remains open for Johnson Sakaja, the UDA candidate running for governor. We'll start with you sir and in leadership and integrity definitely we look at the importance of that within your uh, leadership once you or when you make the uh, governorship but start us off by telling us what separates you apart from your competitor thank you very much for that question and thanks for having me i'm a product of kenya's public education system i'm a product of kenya's public health system I was born in Pumwani Hospital. I was educated through Kenya's public education system. I went to a public university, the University of Nairobi. And that sets me apart because in all those three levels I came out through my upbringing by my dad and mom. My mom who was a primary school teacher, Mrs. Kamau, and my dad, Mr. Kamau, who was an accountant. my teacher Francis Bogongare who I'm very proud is watching me from his home in Meru today my english teacher Mrs Kathucha these people my teachers my parents my early bosses and my latest boss Dr James Mwangi taught me three things which sets me apart that approach every task approach every calling with high intention with sincere effort and with intelligent execution high intention is prayer Sincere effort is hard work, intelligent execution is discipline. That is what we call a PhD. That sets me apart. And Nairobi, I bring a PhD attitude to the job. Give it to me. Thank you. 
Naam, umetaja pale kuhusu maswala ya elimu familia yako ina uelewi wa maswala ya elimu wewe mwenyewe umesema kwamba ni msomi wa maso uh, katika chuo kikuu cha Nairobi. Je, unadhani ni muhimu kwa mgombea kuwa na degree ili kuweza kuongoza kaunti ya Nairobi? Ni muhimu kwa mgombea kiti chochote ambacho kiko katika katiba ya taifa letu kuwa amehitimu na amefikisha kiwango ambacho kinakubaliwa na katiba. Kwa hivyo huyo umuhimu sio mimi kusema ni katiba imesema. U, ni, lazima uhitimu uwe mwalimu, lazima uhitimu uwe daktari, lazima uhitimu uwe mechanic. Hata kuosha gari inahitaji uwe umehitimu au kuwa waiter. Kwa hivyo hata hii kazi ya gavana inahitaji kuhitimu. Na hilo ni ni jambo ambalo latakikana na katiba ya taifa letu la Kenya. Lakini unadhani kwamba kuwa na degree ni ishara tosha kwamba utakuwa kiongozi bora. Kwa sababu kusoma ni kitu kimoja uongoze ni kitu kingine. Je, kuwa na degree ndio ishara kwamba utakuwa kiongozi ambaye anastahili? La hasha ni mwanzo. Kwa sababu lazima uwe umefikisha kiwango cha usomi. Lakini jambo muhimu kuwa kiongozi ni kuwa unaelewa maswala ambayo unakuja kuyashughulikia. Na pia la pili pia we uwe ni mtu ambao wapenda watu. Hii kazi ya siasa, kazi ya kutumikia watu ni kazi ambayo unaifanya kutoka kwa roho yako. Na lazima uwe ni wewe ni mtu ambaye namba moja mcha Mungu, mtu ambaye anapenda kuhudumia watu. Na mimi maisha yangu yote nimefanya kazi ya huduma kwa wananchi. Nimeuza soda kwa kiosk, nimeuza bairo kwa bookshop, nimeuza pombe kwa ba na hivi karibuni nilikuwa nauza pesa kwa mama mboga kwa watu wa matatu kwa watu ambao tunaiza tunawaita wachuzi wa kawaida kwa hivyo hilo hiyo hiyo uzoefu wangu wa kazi umetokana na kushughulikia watu wa kawaida katika kazi ya mauzo hasa katika sekta ya kibinafsi it has been the accusation leveled against uh, your side by your competitor. It uh, would have been great to have him here to respond to the question of a degree for governors that uh, the fight at least uh, and the clamor to fight him to qualify to be on the ballot is uh, for the benefit of Igade to lock him out of the race. Just to clear the air on this, what is your response? Um, I really want to meet my worthy competitor on the ballot. The fight is hard, is a fight I truly regret because it's stopping Kenyans from actually stopping him from coming to office. When all constitutional institutions fail in their duty, then there is a duty by the citizen. And there is no bigger duty than the duty of voting on 9th of August 2022. I am really, I wish him well and I hope that he can come tonight. I also hope that he, he will be on the ballot on the 9th of August so that we can beat him at 8.57 a.m. Mm. Na umetaja pale kwamba una ueledi na umejitolea na una ule moyo wa kutaka kuatumikia wakazi wa Nairobi. Lakini kweli uko tayari kuingia katika kazi ambayo itakubidi uwe pale kwa miaka mitano. Kwa sababu uh, historia inaonyesha kwamba ulipochaguliwa kuwa naibu gavana uliondoka baada ya miezi sita. Hii kazi itakukihitaji kuwa pale miaka mitano. Kweli uko tayari? Niko tayari, niko gangari na nimejitayarisha vilivyo kutumikia wananchi wa Kenya katika jiji Nairobi kwa miaka mitano. Mimi wakati nilipokuwa kwa kiti ya deputy governor nilisema kwamba sikupata ku, sikupata na sikuweza kupatiwa kazi nifanye kama ni kama deputy governor. Na kuna jambo moja ambalo lazima tukubali. Ukiangalia wanasiasa katika taifa la Kenya, wako zaidi wa, wanaochaguliwa kupitia kwa debe. Wangapi wanafanya kazi yao na ukweli wanapewa mshahara kwa sababu wamefanya kazi? Hilo ni swali tunafaa kujiuliza. Mimi siwezi kubali mshahara bila kufanya kazi. Na. Unasema kwamba hukupewa kazi ni kwamba haukuwa na ushirikiano na gavana Sonko ni kwamba ulijipata katika nafasi hiyo kimakosa au ni vipi wewe kama naibu gavana unasubiri tu kupewa kazi gavana Sonko ni rafiki yangu ni mwalimu wangu wa kisiasa hasa siasa za Nairobi na muheshimu na namuenzi mpaka wa leo ni rafiki yangu hata dakika tano zilizopita tumeongea 
lakini kazi ni tofauti na urafiki siwezi kuja ofisini na kila siku kazi yangu ni kusoma gazeti na kuacha koti kwa kiti alafu naenda na lala kazi lazima uwe iko kazi ambayo na mpangilio wa kazi ume, um, umepewa na usipopata hiyo kazi basi una heshimu katiba na katiba ya Kenya inasema article 1 kwamba nguvu zote za katiba ni za mwananchi na kazi yangu nilipopiga reverse gear ilikuwa ni kusema na heshimu katiba ya Kenya na heshimu mpiga kura na hivi leo nafanywa interview kama mfanyikazi wa, wa watu wa Nairobi na nawaeleza nitawafanyia kazi na baada ya miaka miwili mitatu mambo ambayo niliona yaweza kutendeka yalitendeka na tuganga yajayo yalipita in retrospect you did not quit on the residents of Nairobi who entrusted you and in fact through their weight behind your boss because you were there as a deputy you didn't quit on them do you owe them an apology i failed to earn the trust to deliver my mandate as deputy governor i never blamed anybody i blamed myself and i fell on my sword today we see a lot of people who rather than quit their position continue to sit there and enjoy the trappings of power and enjoy a salary from government they enjoy public money i did not quit on you if i quit on you i would not have come to represent myself again through my party jubilee through azimio la umoja and contest the nominations and then win and then be here as a candidate i respect kenya in our national anthem we always say kenya is tahili heshima and that is a prayer and that's our national anthem we put our hands on our hearts and we say kenya is tahili heshima na heshima ni kwamba if you feel you're earning money you should not earn especially public money then you take a bow and you come back for a fresh mandate ladies and gentlemen i've come for a fresh mandate no. i seek to be governor of nairobi please try me unadhani ulihitaji ujuzi wa kisiasa ili uwe kuweza kustahimili mawimbi ambayo alikukabili wakati huo ungekuwa na ujuzi labda mambo yangekuwa tofauti siasa ni jambo la muhimu sana kuachiwa wanasiasa tu sisi ambao tumefanya biashara katika sekta ya kibinafsi tunaelewa na mimi kama kazi niliyokuwa nikifanya kwa benki nimeona wafanyabiashara wengi ambao biashara zao wamefunga sababu ya maslahi yao kukataa kuangaliwa na watu ambao utengeneza sera utengeneza uh, utengeneza uh, sheria katika bunge na kwa hivyo nakuja hapa na uzoefu wa public wa private sector na nasema tuingie sasa let us change kidogo let's change the tune twingie tupindue tulete mapinduzi tulete ari mpya kasi mpya mwamko mpya tuendelee tujaribu mtu ambaye ana uzoefu ambao unaweza kusaidia kisiasa na siasa ni nini siasa ni ni ile mambo ya kuleta watu pamoja ili mtimize maslahi ya watu na jamii mtengeneze uchumi tutengeneze mazingira tutengeneze jamii na tuendelee pamoja hiyo ndiyo siasa hata katika sekta ya kibinafsi kazi ndio hiyo ya kufanya kazi na wenzetu so nimekuja hapa nimejitolea nimeamua kwamba Nairobi hatuwezi tena tukaendelea jiji kubwa kama hili kufanya kuongozwa na uongozi ambao hauna uzoefu wa kufanya kazi. Mimi na kazi ya kupele, kuendesha jiji ni kazi ambayo inahitaji ufanye kazi na wafanyikazi ambao nimechunga, nimeendesha makampuni ambayo iko na wafanyikazi maelfu ba, budget za mabilioni. Na ndipo nasema nafikiri nina uzoefu hii kazi ya budget bilioni 40 wafanyikazi 1015 nataka hao wafanyikazi wapate kiongozi bora kwa sababu wakipata kiongozi bora tutapatia wananchi wa Nairobi huduma na taifa letu uh, le, litakuwa nzuri na nitakuwa nimefanya kazi yangu kama mwananchi wa taifa la Kenya you do have the decorated uh, profile in terms of the boardroom and the qualifications therein politics is part of the game and especially for county like Nairobi and the position it has nationally uh, Are you confident about your political ability to make sure that you control and you keep things under control within the capital? I thank you very much for the compliment. Um, I can tell you even private sector there's a lot of politics. 
In business, they are shareholders, they are employees, and they are customers. Shareholders invest in employees, employees invest in customers, customers pay the shareholders, and the cycle works like that. In politics, the shareholder is the political party. The political party then nominates candidates who come as politicians and civil servants who come as civil servants. And the work of civil servants is to then serve the public. And the public in turn keeps giving power to the right party. I am very proud to be a member of Azimio La Umoja, led by the most disciplined shareholder in politics, if I can use those words, Raila Molo Dinga Baba. He has run the most disciplined political party. I'm very proud to be a member of his team. I'm very proud to be a member of the Nairobi team with my colleague Edwin Sifuna, with my colleague Esther Pasaris, with all our MPs. I'm very proud. And because I'm joining a disciplined team, we are going to serve the public. What is, has been the problem of politics is we, just like in business, we have employees. Empl in, in politics, what we see is that you have politicians political parties and politicians who have come together to steal from the public. It's like a shareholder and an employee and management stealing from the customer. That's not sustainable. Um, what I can say is, in closing, that remark is, when a customer loves you, no one will harm you. When a voter and the public loves you, no one will harm you. We are seeing it in Sri Lanka. We are seeing it in very many countries that people are eventually the silent majority we have in Kenya we have a very big silent majority quiet people decent people honest working people who go about their lives they are really tired of the suckers of usual politics of insults of drama of coming late for interviews of of um, eligibility to a job uh, you know it just says this is what the eligibility people are really tired and I know that because I live amongst the people and I'm a son of this country. People just want a normal servant service person. They just want the, a, a politician or a leader who just gets the job done. And me and my partner, my deputy governor, who's an accomplished scholar, Professor Philip Kaloki, we are just here to get the job done. And we have come with the full blessing of our party and, our pa and we have fused a lot of ways, the Wiper way, the ODM way, the Jubilee way, the NAC Kenya way, the Kanu way, the Upia way, the DAP way. We have fused that, and that is the genius of this thing called Azimiola Omoja. You, Kenya will never be the same again. Because you Kenyans have decided to vote for Azimio la Umoja on no. 9th of August 2020. Umetaja pale kiongozi wa Azimio, Raila Odinga, na uka mtunukia sifa kede kede. Je, uamuzi wako wa kuingia uh, katika kinyanga nyiro hiki, ulikuwa ni uamuzi wako wa hiari, wa binafsi, au ulikuwa uamuzi wa Raila Odinga na mrengu wa Azimio la Umoja? Uamuzi wangu kuingia siyasa niliufanya tar, tarehe March mwaka 2017. Dipo niliesi amua kuingia kisiasa kabisa na mimi nimekuwa memba wa jubilee party kutoka wakati huo watu wengi wanasema nimeingia siasa hivi sasa nilichaguliwa na kura 869000 uh, na 2017 wacha nimalize kwa sekunde chache naomba nilichaguliwa na kura 869000 wakati uliopita na sasa na sasa nimerudi tena kusimama ni uamuzi wangu binafsi wakuja kwa siasa na nilipigania kiti nikangangania kiti nikashinda tikiti ya chama tawala jubilee so na, Igade is his own man Igade is his own man and he won his nomination he canvassed for his nomination politically within within the party right. and uh, within the party we also had two other candidates my can the people who were running against me also did not have degrees you know and i bet them all right, on that point, I think you'll, you'll be happy with this intervention because uh, your competitor for the governor's seat has arrived and uh, would like to now call in uh, Senator Johnson Sakaja. Hey, Karibu Mdosi. That's a bro, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, Karibu Yo, Sada. Good, good to see you. you. Pole, pole, pole. Asante. Traffic mbaya tutasot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Senator Sakaja. Why are you late? Well, um, my opponent is used to head start, <laughs> and so I wanted to give him an opportunity, and we're here. Lakini mbono umekuja kuchelewa? Nilikuwa nataka kumpa nafasi, 
aanze amezoea kupatiwa nafasi ya kuanza <laughs> na hakuna haja kuzingatia hiyo zaidi i think we all know the head starts we're talking about uh, that is from government tc but good to see you polycap good to um, see you Sakaja. welcome i look forward Senator. to a good debate thank you all right what separates you from your top competitor for the governor position well um Poli Kapigadi is a great man. He's a friend of mine. We've been in Jubilee together. We've campaigned together. Um, I think what separates us is the heart to work for the people. Um, he's had a career in the uh, corporate sector. I've had a career in public service and in leadership. The problems this county has, the challenges in our city, the issues we need to deal with, need solid political leadership. And that is what I know. Naam, swala la maadili uh, katika uongozi lina umuhimu gani katika siasa zako katika kampeni yako katika uh, mchakato huu mzima wa kuania kiti cha gavana katika county ya Nairobi? Swala za maadili ni muhimu sana kwa sababu kiongozi sio tu yale ambayo unasema ama yale ambayo um, unazo kama fikra ni yale ambayo unafanya. Integrity is extremely important. Na mimi nazingatia masuala yote ya maadili. Um, I think uh, integrity defines who you are. And it's not about um, who you are in public, but also who you are in private. And uh, that, that's what defines a leader, because as a leader, your work is to set a good example. Your work is to show um, you know, the community and the society where to go to. And so, of course, integrity is not perfection. Integrity is not pontification. Integrity is not saying that you never make any mistake. Integrity is taking responsibility. And integrity is be being able to stand up and say, yes, on this I am right, and yes, on this I am wrong. That is integrity. You speak about abiding, and uh, part of the requirement for governor is the competence and uh, the credentials. Yes. Do you believe that it is important for someone running for governor to have a degree? It's not just important, it's a requirement by our constitution. Do you have it is a degree? Not, that's the reason I'm here. That's the reason I've been gazetted. I do have all the qualifications required to run for governor of Nairobi, and on top of a degree, beyond just the academic qualifications. I have the competence, the character, I have the will and the experience to lead this county of Nairobi. Why is it so contested? Your because as I've said, the head starts being um, sought um, include that. I think, um, and, and I, I feel bad for my opponent because majority or rather the biggest part that um, his team has been relying on was not to have me on the ballot. I'm glad I had his aid because I've been around, I've been in this complex and listening. Um, saying that, uh, you know, he wants me on the ballot. I'm glad he said that. But many of his political benefactors do not want me on the ballot because they know the effect of that. I do have a degree um, from Team University. I presented it um, on the 6th of uh, uh, last month to the competent authority, which is the Commission for University Education. After that, it was presented to the counterpart commission in, the, uh, in, our, in our neighboring country. They verified it. Uh, many people have said that I'm trying hard to prove that I have one. Actually, it's my detractors trying hard to prove that I don't have one. Mm. Now, this issue is before the court. And, you know, the reason I sympathize is that if my opponent and his team focused on going to the people, then they would stop looking for solace in the courts. I have it. In fact, I would want to display it today to all of you to see. Um, I don't know how you'll verify it. But the competent authorities and institutions that have to, you know, verify it have actually said it is, it, it, it is correct. Na kwa dakika moja unusu kwa sababu sasa hivi tutaanza kuzingatia muda kulingana na sheria na masharti ambayo tuliweka awali kwa dakika moja unusu endapo utachaguliwa kuwa gavana wa kaunti ya Nairobi kisha baadaye kesi iwasilishwe mahakamani ambayo itabatili ushindi wako utawajibikia wakazi na wapiga kura wa Nairobi Hakuna kesi inaweza kubatili ushindi wangu kwa sababu kwanza ushindi wangu ndio ndugu yangu anaongea juu ya 8:57 am ushindi wangu utadhihirika utaonekana um, nafikiri vile mmetu tawanyisha kutoka wale wengine ilikuwa kwa sababu utafiti ambao umefanywa na utafiti umeonyesha kwamba ni kombele zaidi um, uh, mambo ambayo yako kotini yataisha kwa sababu tunajua ukweli ambao uko um, hakuna atashwishi hapo na zaidi ya hiyo kwa sababu kumekuwa na hiyo unajua um, kizungu mkuti ambao imeongozwa na serikali and I have said it you know, previously um, who has been driving this and how it's been driven I think by the time we're going for re-election, we'll make sure that there's even more to be able to show on that. So that is not an issue of concern. What is of concern to us, and what is of concern to anybody worth his salt as a leader in this city, is the plight of the millions of Nairobians who are suffering the lack of dignity, 
and the lack of order in our city. And that is where our focus must be. So I do not expect any challenges um, beyond that which, because what is out there is political propaganda. If you look at the length that I've, you know, the state has gone to, to try and stop my candidature, if you look at the resources deployed, including diplomats and uh, you know, the ambassador ETC, uh, intimidation of institutions, one revoking and revoking ETC, then you know that there's something there. And I think um, nothing of that source will you know, stand the test of time. Are you saying that those who are backing this fight for your contestation for the position of governor are behind your competitor? Yes. What do you say about that? You have an opportunity to respond. Um, we are, our worthy competitors have pitched themselves as victims. And the entire platform is victimhood. That they are victims of the weather, they are victims of the law, they are victims of, the, of, the, of what they call the system. But facts are facts and the truth is the truth. I have said I really would love to meet Governor uh, to meet Senator Sakaja. I think uh, out of a bunch of like, I would like to meet Senator I would like to meet <laughs> I would like to meet Senator Sakaja on the ballot. You because will. Uh, on the on the ballot so that we can beat him and so that the people who are the last line of defense when all other institutions fail prove to him that they know better that Wajinga Waliisha Kenya now Waliisha Nairobi if any other institutions fail the people should never fail on the ballot. Na muda umekwisha Senator Sakaja, je uamuzi wako kuingia Kinyang'anyironi ama niweke hivi? Uamuzi wa kuingia Kinyang'anyironi ulikuwa wako binafsi au ulikuwa wa chama na kiongozi wa chama? Nimefurahi kwanza tumemaliza hicho kipindi kwa sababu um, I'm able to prove and to show that I have the qualifications um, and that is going on. I'm looking forward to and I know millions of Nairobians everywhere I've gone to tell me every day that they're praying and they, because they can see that big hand um, of the state. And we shall be vindicated in due course. When there's time after this, I'm, I'm available to speak to that. Of course, my intention to run for governor of Nairobi has been my intention. Um, I've grown up in this city. I was born in Gara. Um, I've seen this city when it had some semblance of you know, a, a working city. Um, and I've also seen the lack of dignity and order in our people. The lack of dignity when Mama Mwende in Kayole had to watch her daughter die at Mama Lucy because of an ambulance. I've seen that, and I've committed myself to lead the charge of providing order and dignity in the city. So it was my decision, it is my decision, and beyond that, it is a resolve of the millions of Nairobians to rescue this city from state capture. Your decision, you say, but it is on a ticket UDA under Kenya Kwanzaa. Yes. If you are elected as governor, how well, much of a burden will the patrons of uh, your particular alliance have or be to your leadership as governor? I think I've distinguished myself over the years as an objective leader, as a leader who stands his ground, as a leader who stands on principle. Many times, even before what my you know, competitors and uh, their colleagues thrive on, uh, you know, they like talking about the handshake, I've demonstrated what we call Siasa Safi. When the Honorable Prime Minister, former Prime Minister's retirement benefits were being, um, you know, rejected in Parliament because his now partner and brother said he must retire from politics, I'm the only person from Jubilee who stood up to defend. When Honorable Oluoch was being fought at pan by Jubilee members on the 26th of October, I'm the one who defended him. When Babu Owino was thrown into a cell and Raila Odinga and Wetangula could not remove him. I went, despite there not being any agreement before the handshake. I believe in Siasa Safi. I believe politics is not enmity. And I want to assure even my opponent that once we get into office, some of the ideas he has, because he's a good manager, and this city also needs, you know, in some areas you need managers, of course, led by a leader with a vision. We'll incorporate the ideas. Everybody sitting on that side knows that I have no negative relationship with them. And that is the Siasa Safi Nairobians want. And that is why all your polls show that Nairobians across the political divide have resolved to support me for the office of governor. Now, uh, Bwana Polika, je ni kwamba azimio mnaendesha Siasa Chafu katika county ya Nairobi? Kwanza wacha tuangalie Siasa Safi ni nini. Mwaka uliopita taifa la Kenya the amount of money pesa ambazo walituma kwa serikali gatuzi kutoka kwa serikali uh, ya kitaifa 
was 370 billion shillings. 370 billion, Nairobi ilipata 19 billion. 5% only ndiyo ilikuja Nairobi. Nairobi, wapigakura Nairobi ni 11% ya tuko 2.4 million out of 2.2 Point two, uh, 2.4 million voters out of 2.22 uh, out of 22 million voters in the country now nairobi contributes 2.2 trillion wame collect kenya revenue uh, authority 60% ya hiyo 2.2 trillion imetoka kwa viwanda na wafanyi biashara hapa nairobi how does somebody contribute 60% of revenue and you only share 5% back na hiyo si asasafi ndio seneta wetu amefanya katika senate kazi ya seneta ni kutuiombea pesa ametuombea tu 5% alienda huko kufanya kazi ya ma county zingine hapa ndio sababu Nairobi hamna mashule tuna nasari pengine 211 tuko na health centers kidogo sana the dispensary na ndipo njaa na umaskini umekidhiri hapa kwa sababu watu hawajui Nairobi is unaffected and a very Naam. poor country Muda wako a, a, very, a very poor county Muda wako that is not ya sasa bwana sekaja yes. ameuliza umetetea vipi uh, county ya Nairobi ulipokuwa seneta katika kipindi hiki cha takriban miaka mitano je kweli umewajibika kama seneta wa county ya Nairobi zaidi na zaidi ya wote wengine ambao walichaguliwa kama maseneta kiangalia utafiti ambao umefanywa kwa miaka mitatu ambayo imepita for the last three years running i've been rated the best performing senator in the republic of kenya I brought more bills, more motions, more questions about the county administration of Nairobi than any other senator and you can check. I can see your laptops. You can check that. On top of that, the work of the senator is to bring resources to the county. When I became senator for Nairobi, Nairobi is receiving 15 billion. I'm living with it 3.3 billion higher at 19 billion. That is actually understanding your assignment and prosecuting it the way you, you need to. So I brought that money. In fact, Naturally, it will take more than 10, 15 years in terms of cycles of devolution to get to an increase of 3.3 billion. Something so Igade able, says I've, isn't I've quite enough, that. even though you've gotten it to 19 billion. Something he says isn't enough, given the contribution of the capital to the rest of the nation. Now, if you understand the framework of devolution um, under our constitution, fiscal decentralization has what we call the horizontal you know, division of revenue. In that horizontal division of revenue, you have a county allocation of revenue bill where you divide the amount that is given amongst the counties. So of course there is a ceiling of what has been given to all counties. What I fought for is the fair share for Nairobi City County which remains to be the highest and over and above what any other county gets. Igade, you have a response on that? I don't know how much is enough. Um, what Senator ensured persisted in this country is a philosophy that is unsustainable. That you take from people according to their needs and give to others according to their ability and give to others according to their need. Nairobi is a very needy county. And the criticism I'm proffering here and submitting to him is that as senator, what did you do to help Nairobi overcome the hunger, the deprivation, the desperation in the informal settlements? Did you bring that matter to Senate? Did you make people understand that case? Instead, what we saw, he was a leader of a group called Team Kenya that even removed incentives for county to generate their own revenue. We used to get 1% extra if you generate your own, own source revenue. Like Nairobi is only generating 9, this is going to do about 9 billion of its own revenue. So the county, the CRA, Commission for Revenue Allocation, was giving us brownie points as a county if you collect your own revenue and you don't rely on the national government. And these are some of the things he did not protect as our senator. So how does somebody fail or does not succeed in their task and then you give him the job of governor? Naam, ulifaili katika kutetea na kulinda raslimali za county ya Nairobi. Na ukiwa senator kwa takriban miaka mitano ambao uh, umekua katika uongozi, umeweka mikakati gani kuthibiti na kuimarisha uh, ukusanyaji wa mapato katika county ya Nairobi ambayo ameonekana kudidimi? 19 billion from 15 billion is success. It's an improvement. In fact, if I succumbed to the sloganeering that my worthy competitor is talking about, you know, which, which, in fact, his argument is the best case to show that education does not necessarily equate to intelligence. Because if I bring a box and tell you this is one man, one shilling, and it's a thousand bob to you, and inside it's 500 shillings, would you accept it? 
what they were offering Nairobi Polycap was 134 million shillings more. I refused with my team Kenya. I said Nairobi has the depth of poverty, that urban poverty bites harder than rural poverty, that you have nothing in this city, you'll have nothing to eat, you'll have nowhere to stay. And I refused that 135 million shillings and got 3.35 billion shillings for the people of Nairobi. If I was just to fall for the empty slogan, Nairobi would still be at 16, actually 15.8 billion shillings today. So I'm very proud, and I'm proud of all my members, because not only did I secure that for Nairobi, I showed this country that there is no Kenya A and Kenya B. There's no second-class county in a first-class country. And I stand my ground that we must be patriotic. Even as we're in Nairobi, we are people from all across the country. On top of that, I can list you the bills. I brought the startup bill. I brought the prompt payment bill. I brought the National Disaster Management Authority bill in the Senate. I have fought for Uber drivers, who, uh, you know, taxify and all digital hailing apps. I have spoken about the, the demolitions and even stopped demolitions that are going further. I have done a lot. In fact, if you gave me maybe an hour or so to just list the things I have done in the Senate. And I hope the next Senate of Nairobi will be able now, to fill in those big for that response, because, time because is it out. is work that we have done. Let's, let's push on with uh, that aspect then on, you talk about not having enough funds allocated to Nairobi given its place uh, in the nation. However, there is the issue of not being able to actually get the potential revenue that it can get owing to the cartels in the city, which have been a thorn in the flesh of the administration, uh, but it can be argued also fostered by the leadership. What would you do to get rid or deal with the cartels? You got them. You have First a minute all, and a half. Um, thank you very much for that question. Nairobi collects, for sure, way above 200 million shillings every day. But what ends up in Nairobi coffers is around and about roughly 40 million a day. So over 160 million shillings is lost every day. That's the fact. We've had a senator whose work is also oversight. Um, and, and Senator Sakaja, mm. you had a chance to be seen in this country oversighting the county of Nairobi. When push came to shove and the impeachment question came to the floor of Senate, it's up to Kenyans to see how you voted. Not only did you, you did not even take a decision, you abstained. You walked away from the conversation. We have not seen you, Nairobi County employees, in fact, we have to apologize to them. They do unbelievable, their, their salaries are delayed, their remittances are delayed. The Auditor General's report about Nairobi City County is that Nairobi City County's close has a debt of over 80 billion now. That is what, it has been given an adverse opinion. But have we ever heard once our senator speak about it? Um, and that's why I'm saying the oversight role, he did not do very well, and he actually did not succeed in that oversight role. But the cartels we will deal with because we have the numbers and we know who they are and you have seen them even in the campaign season Nam. trying to fight and hide behind uh, things. <laughs> I'm actually quite tickled that uh, Poli Kapigadi can talk about push coming to shove and me not making a decision. Before even push came to shove, in like four or five months, Poli Kapigadi quit on the people of Nairobi. In fact, that should have come in the question of integrity. Because when you talk about public trust, chapter 6, at the expense of private convenience, that is the question that we must answer. It did come the up question, before the you question, right. The question on uh, impeachment. Governor Sonko would not be facing an impeachment if you stuck in office. In fact, if you stuck in office, you probably would have been the incumbent governor. If you stuck in office, there'd be no NMS in Nairobi. The reason we have an NMS in Nairobi is after Poli Kapigadi could not wait or stand the heat in the kitchen, he ran away in less than six months. This city needs resilience. You need to be tough. You cannot say that you have betrayed 800 and I think, how many votes did you guys get? 40 or something thousand votes. 840,000 votes. Because you could not get the trust of one individual, yet a million Nairobians have given you the public trust. When pushers come to shove, Look at the Senate answered. I have spoken more times than any senator. I have raised more questions in the Senate than any other senator. In fact, I have taken governor, uh, the former Governor Sonko to court on the action he took on Matatus. The record is clear. This county needs a political manager 
who understands how to deal with the leaders and how to deal with the issues of the people, but has a thick skin. In fact, if half of the tribulations I'm facing right now in my, in my bid were on Polycap, Azimi would have no candidate. But I have stood. Your I've time stood is strong. out. You've stood. You ran off. He'd have quit. Um, integrity. I define integrity as what you do in private. If, if it ever became public, you'll never be ashamed. I'll tell you what is not integrity. Is uttering false documents and then standing here and saying I have integrity. Go to the website of the East African of EACC. Go to the website of IBC. Check the university governor, uh, Sakaja, Senator you, Sakaja. You know, no, no, let me go. <laughs> go and that. check what Senator Sakaja cited as his degree in 2017. It's a public document. And then look at the degree he's saying it is today. We don't even know who he is. Is your name really Sakaja? <laughs> Nairobi. Nairobi. Careful. 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 All of us, careful. We can no longer entertain charlatans in positions of high national responsibility. And charlatan is not an insult. It's people of questionable integrity. It's people and individuals who come to steal from you wholesale to distribute retail to their friends. And I submit to you, the man to my left will do exactly that. Careful. I think the man to my right did exactly that by running away from the mandate given to him by Nairobians. Actually, the entire mess we have in this city. Because when he ran away from office, and I think he said somewhere because he got a bigger salary somewhere, I don't know. This city went into a spiral. I assure you, even the drafting of the articles of transfer, I had to be involved because we had to rescue Nairobians. And he ran away from that public office. Now, if you cannot withstand the heat of a deputy governor, you can't run Nairobi City County. You have 85 MCAs, possibly 40 nominated, 125 MCAs. You have 17 constituencies. If just one Mike Sonko made you run, tomorrow, Matatus will strike. The next day, hawkers will be on the street. The next day, and, and, and you're trying to run this county by being popular, it will not work. Again, as I've said, it is really unfortunate that the only card they had was to try and stop me from being on the ballot. I want to tell you to wake up, smell the coffee. On the 9th of August, I'll be on the ballot for governor of Nairobi City County. And on the 25th, we shall be sworn in. Because Nairobians can see through the game. And the documents he's talking about, for instance, in fact, they're, they're part, and, and I, I don't want to wade into subjudice, but they're forged documents. They actually forged documents in court by them. They have tried to. Lakin who is a kusibitisha hi losio? Of course, who I can because even the signature there is not my signature. Lakin is sisi kwa sababu hatuna hizo stakabadi hatapuruko kuto mia. To achia po lakin wata ni jeleze na ona daka zinenda utani pana fasinzuri ni jeleze. Mimi ni mehitimu na ni mesoma na ni mesimamia watu Nairobi. Jina lako ni sakaja. Not just in fair in fair weather. Sakaja ni jina lako halisi. Nafikiri muli alika sakaja. Jina lako ni zubeda. Niko hapa kuuliza maswali uko hapa kujibu Pia naomba. Kuuliza ukiuliza swali ambao kama watu wanaoomba wanasema itoshi. Mwenzako amekuuliza swali. Tuna, kwa sababu uko hapa kujibu ndio sababu tunakupa nafasi kujibu. Jina lako ni Sakaja. Out to the issues Nairobians are facing instead of trivializing this debate as to what my name is honestly. My name is Arthur Johnson Sakaja. Naam. I'm the senator of Nairobi and the incoming governor God willing on the 9th of August. Asante kwa kujibu. And I want us to talk about water. Let's talk about the poverty our people are facing. Let's talk about sorting out mobility and transport. Let's talk about sorting out our children in school. Let's talk about the issues of the people. And the rest of the games being played by the state and our opponents can then have their way. Because Kenyans have seen. In fact, I want to you know, give, you, give you full, 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 full reassurance. Just yesterday, a few of the government uh, administration officers have called me, saying that they've been coerced into supporting the candidate of my opponent, and they've refused. Chiefs have refused. Well, we can't this is have refused. We can't quite verify that. That's I can verify your that, word. You that's also be able that's to verify your word. The question is, he has I have 16 seconds. That's your, that's your word on, on that. But he said, and you didn't quite respond directly to it, to what that at the is? moment, at the moment, I'm, I'm quite clear, Senator Sakaja. Thanks, Mark. At the moment uh, of reckoning, when yes. there was questions over the leadership of a former governor, the moment yes. of impeachment, Let me explain you how walked works. away. Let me explain can how said it works. That, it's my question. Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, when you go to the Senate, I've seen one of the candidates here. There are three buttons to press when you have to vote. You either press yes, you press no, or you press abstain. 
for you to run away from, from the vote in the Senate, you actually walk out. You don't press any. Meaning to abstain is actually a vote and it's a statement that you make. But the tradition, because parliament is ruled by the standing orders, by traditions and by precedents and you know the, the past jurisprudence that has been set in the Senate, when a matter comes regarding your county, you're supposed to prosecute your position on the floor and then let others make the decision. Because if you vote yes to impeach a governor, of course it shows your conflict of interest. Because you want also to be governor. Then it shows that you're putting a man down. And let me tell you, Kenyans have grace. No matter the ills of Governor Mike Sonko or whoever else would have been there, you never kick a man when he's down. So when you press yes, you've displayed your conflict of interest. If you press no, it means that you're actually abetting and agreeing with what he has done. And so the tradition from 2013, when an impeachment has been brought to the Senate, is the Senate of that area actually abstains on that vote. And I've had the luxury of walking out and not being there for that vote. It's a decision I would take again if it came to me. You, and I'm proud you, of had, the a point. you had a point to raise on that earlier. Um, I want to come in and say, yeah, it's true. Don't kick some, a man when he's down, but I have a better statement. Don't kick a dead dog. Um, I, I and my, and, and let me just move, let me let me no no it's not the former the governor it's you I'm talking about. Lakini uh, Naomba Igabe I, I don't want to kick you that's why Kidogo. I'm asking Igabe, and you had me Naomba, you said Igabe, you Naomba, had me earlier Naomba no. unisikize dakika moja Naomba, sekunde sir. moja yeah. tafadhali tusitumie lugha ya matusi wakati wa na kudhalilishana katika mkutano huu. Wacha niseme hivi. Wacha wacha let me let me say this. Nobody no, not kicking a dead dog is actually an English phrase, it's not an insult. It's to say, don't go for somebody when he's down. And I, and I already said, I want to meet him on the ballot. I want That's to meet my I competitor. I want, I want to meet my competitor. I truly want to meet my competitor on the ballot. But in, I want to remind him that uttering a false document is one of the laws in that this country that does That's not... It is one of the things in this country that you don't even, you're not fined for. You are taken straight if you are found guilty. And, and that is for the investigative capacity. We didn't come to do that here. All I'm telling that, Kenyans... That is an allegation. Uh, that can, I finish, can I finish? Can I finish? What the constitution wants is a competent governor, a capable governor, a governor with a character. Ask yourselves, who amongst two of us can you trust? It also wants a governor who will stay in office for five years. All right. You said earlier you know who the cartels are. Numerate them, put them on notice on how you're going to deal with this. Earlier when you were talking about the cartels. Um, the cartels of Nairobi have persisted for four decades. Who are they? You said you know. Um, it is a clique of people who have choked the city and especially the biggest symptom of cartel behavior is in the situation with garbage collection in the city of Nairobi, the situation with pending belts, the situation with suppliers in the city of the county of Nairobi. We need to look at suppliers in the city, in the county city of Nairobi and ask ourselves who are they? Do they meet the threshold of our public procurement laws, procedures and regulation? And we need, I want to ask Kenyans to read Auditor General Nancy Gathungu's reports to really see what I'm talking about. Errors and omissions, the statement of assets and liabilities of Nairobi City County, the statement of cash flow, the statement of appropriation, recurrent budget, and development budget. When you read that statement, she's actually saying, these numbers don't reflect the fair data of proper financial practices, proper HR practices. And that is where you see the name of the cartels. And only a president who is running on an anti-corruption platform like Raila Molo Odinga can tackle this issue. And people who have been st stood up to scrutiny, I have always been an employee, I've always been audited, I have never taken a shilling that does not belong to me apart from my salary. Now, kabla tuvuke kwake, ulikuwa naibu governor katak, uh, katika county ya Nairobi kwa takriban mezi sita. Katika muda huo ni ulijukumi kavipi katika kuwakabili hawa cartels, hawa walagai, hawa watu ambao wana... Na kwanza, wana walagai tuliona na nao, kwa sababu for the time when I was a governor, Nairobi City County moved its revenues 
from the 18, 12 million we used to find to 100 million levels, 120 million a day. You're, you're never governor. Now, now, uh, when I was deputy governor, I was in the governor's office, thank you. The, for that period when I was a deputy governor, that is what was going on. And we started to pay salaries on the 25th of every month. There was also remission of all statutory deductions. When I was there, I started the titling program for Nairobi to give title deeds into Nairobi. That process has taken five years, is now being completed as we speak. Um, when I was there, I formulated and changed the management of Nairobi City County Water, the Nairobi Water and Sewer System. The new existing chief executive and their team came in. So there are a couple of things that we did within those, uh, within, within those six months. So we had some achievements, um, and I want to assure you that we'll accelerate them when we come to office, when you vote for us. Kama senator unakubaliana nae kwamba waliweka mikakati ya kuweza kukabili, hawa cartels na kuweza kulinda rasimali za county ya Nairobi. Kwanza nafikiri vile amesema, amesema vile alikuwa alianzisha na ikakamilika bila ye. Inamancha Nairobi heku muitaji. Kwa sababu it's just demonstrated that even whether he was there or not, it, it happened. I think if you stuck, if, if, if you stayed true and, uh, you know, didn't quit and run away when things got hot, maybe things would have been better for the poor of Nairobi. We'd never know. And unfortunately, we'll never get to learn. Cartels are a lazy word. It's a word used by lazy leaders who fail to master the courage and the guts and the resilience to deal with corruption. That is what cartels are. Cartels are a weak excuse because all of these are human beings. If you say you know them, and even here, just at this debate, you're afraid to name them, yet you said you knew them, you'll not deal with them. If you know them, name them. Kwa hivyo huamini kama senator kwamba kuna cartels katika county ya Nairobi. Sio cartels. Ni wana biashara ambao you know the first way not to be uh, you know uh, to have cartels in Nairobi is to refuse to be part of that system. Lakini kama una ogopa hata wewe wasema kesho wakikutisha utajizulu tena. We cannot have that in Nairobi. Lakin... We just need to set systems that actually remove the place they are playing. Don't be afraid of cartels, Polycarp. What, whatever name, just, just whatever name you whatever name you choose. You, I will invite you on 10th of August when we are naming them. The opposition is not allowed you to name You could also cartels. name them it's today, but what, whatever name you, you use to allude to them, how are you going to deal with those Listen, the first thing you must do in the city, the as I've said, is to refuse to be part of them before you even get into office. I have run my campaign by myself. I have struggled. I have funded myself. I have evidence. In fact, I, I, unfortunately, I, was, you know, I, can, I can table it over here, that even the first billboards paid for for my opponent are by the cartels are by other shadowy figures who are convincing him to get out of office to run for it once you are captured by them before you start once you're captured by the state once you're captured by these shadowy figures before you even set foot you will not do anything when you're elected governor number two we must reduce the human interaction with cash in Nairobi. we must digitize service provision that all the 130 something revenue streams must be allowed to be paid digitally wherever you are. What we're going to do is this in Nairobi. We'll change the governance structure. We're going to have five boroughs in this city. Nairobi North, East, West, South, and Central. Each of those boroughs, pass on to the Urban Areas and Cities Act and the County Government Act, Section 14, will have an Urban Area Board or a Borough Board. And that borough, there will be an Assistant City Manager who will report to my Deputy Governor, Mushiri Njoroge, who we have agreed is not going to quit. They will report to Mushiri in Joroge, and Joroge Mushiri is going to be the chief city manager. Now, once you localize them to an area that these few sub-counties, these are will deal with garbage, these are will deal with water, these are will deal with education and all those issues, then you reduce the capacity of that corruption. She doesn't know where she is going to go. If you want to go to the city, you can go to the city. You can go to the city. Senator Sakaja, with all due respect, you did come late. Senator Sakaja, with all due respect, you did come late. And in keeping time, there are rules that we announced at the, at the beginning of this debate. And an answer to a question is a minute and a half. And you can see it clearly okay. on the screen here. Rebuttal is a minute. And we did accommodate you. It's not enough, but we'll be so, summarized. Uh, over to yeah. you, Igad. Ukosefu wa nidhabu ni jambo la kawaida kwa watu ambao hawajamaliza shule. Let me move to... This is what we want to do. 
This is what we want to do. We want to improve the society in Nairobi by ensuring we tackle the issue of hunger and depravity in the city, by tackling the issue of poor quality, poor access to education in the city, and poor quality access to healthcare. We want to fix the economy in Nairobi by ensuring decent jobs, mobili proper mobility and transport. We are going to form what I'm calling the Nairobi Go Portal. It's really e-government, making sure every, we have time and attendance for every employee. We make a fit for purpose government to serve. And lastly, to really fix the environment. Kuimarisha mazingira yetu, maji na mambo hayo. Your time is up on that, but there was something he brought up, and he said even he's, he claims to be funding his own campaigns and says you're under state capture and you have a right to respond to this a minute for that in terms of those who are funding your campaign my campaign is funded by myself and my friends and i would like him because he has said so to provide that evidence before the morning that is a liar those are lies Gladly. told by a lying liar i'll be glad to do that please you know, you say you have some evidence to this effect. Of course, we have receipts. We have receipts of billboards and of, you know, different meetings of chiefs, meetings of DCCs, them being casual. You know, you, you, you cannot force individuals, DCCs, assistant chiefs, and many of them, I mean, the European represented here know the meetings at St. George's Primary School, where they're being asked to support those candidates. We know all of that. It is obvious. But if you'd like me to table that, I'll be glad to table it. All before right. the country. So I will, I I will see, in equal measure table all the false documents Senator Sakaja has cited to the Republic of Kenya and to constitutional institutions tomorrow morning on my Twitter. All right, tomorrow morning there's a lot of news to look forward to. And <laughs> <laughs> do you agree? And then you will know what we are facing. Because okay. the contest on 9th of August is a simple contest. It's a contest in this country. It's a census, actually. It's not an election. How many Kenyans believe in competence, character, capability, honesty, unity, moving forward? And how many believe in lies and all the other bad things we don't want and don't value as a society? That's the contest. We've moved into the governorship uh, domain of this conversation, and uh, we just like to cover more issues here. And... Uh, there is a mention, was a mention of Nairobi Metropolitan Services, NMS. Uh, first of all, do you agree with uh, it having been brought in as an intervention? And uh, in your view, because, was it because of a failed leadership? No, I celebrate the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, the NMS and General Buddy and his team have done a wonderful job. And it was a creature of the law. We saw how it was formed. And because it's a creature of the law, it extinguishes naturally by law in November of this year. Look at what they have done. They have sunk 193 boreholes in the metropolitan area. 144 of those boreholes has been in our informal settlement. That has truly helped us fight COVID-19. The Metropolitan Authority has further worked on pedestrianizing the central business district, which is something we must do in this city. Make sure that non-motorized transport we democratize transport, that the most important transporter is not the private car, but the pedestrian, the cyclist. They have done it, and we are now working, working better. They've really tried to improve the environment, and they are part, uh, it is part of the military to do civilian duty. And they came and answered the call of duty, and I, we truly celebrate what they have been able to achieve. And they are reverting, we are reverting back to a civil authority. As we speak, I believe General Badi is in transition, waiting for the election and then for the next people to take over office. He should not be vilified. Quavo, and, and, Quavo. and he really worked and he's been able to deliver. A ba it's been a band aid to the city of Nairobi. Labda kwa sekunde thelathini, uwapo utapewa na fasi, ama ungepewa na fasi, ungetaka NMS yendele kuhudumu katika county ya Nairobi? Uh, NMS, sing, uh, siwezi pata hiyo na fasi kwa sababu sheria inasema, NMS muda wao utakuisha November mwaka huu. But Lakin it was extended nafasi, and yeah. there's an opportunity to extend uh, it. I will give better service as governor of Nairobi than NMS. Bwana Sakaja, on the issue of governorship and how Nairobi Metropolitan Services, beg your pardon, came in to rescue the day, 
Uh, do you agree with this? And under is, uh, governorship of uh, Sakaja, yeah. would this continue? It is very interesting to hear a man praising his ex-wife's husband. Um, the reason NMS came about is because he got the quit. It's as simple as that. If the deputy governor of Nairobi, Poli Kapigadi, did not quit, there'd be no need to have NMS. Those boholes you're naming, you should have done them. Those interventions you're talking about, you had a chance to do them. Devolution cannot be trivialized in this country. Devolution is the greatest gift we've given to our people. That every Kenyan, wherever they are, has a right to self-determine. I wrote about this in 2010 with the uh, International Commission of Jurists. Physical decentralization and devolution in this country. That lady in Mutwini deserves a county government and a governor she can hold to account and who can listen to and who she can vote, to, uh, vote for. So you can't come praise the consequence of you absconding duty, of you, you know, leaving office. Because if Polycap did not run away from Nairobians, Governor Mike Sunko would have acted differently. Governor Mike Sunko acted as he did because he knew no one would impeach him. Because no one wanted a by-election in Nairobi. Yet having no deputy, and that's why he'd bring Miguna's name, who is, who, whoever's name, he knew he was untouchable. So it is a consequence of him. And then again, understand the law. There's no way NMS will operate after August. I don't know what you're talking about, November. The county government that is being elected on the 9th, that will be led, hopefully, God willing, by myself, will take full control of Nairobi. So yes, NMS has had a cocktail of hits and misses, but you don't know Nairobi. Those women who cried when their children were being no. smashed in, in Kariobangi and in Mukuru do not agree with you about Mudoku NMS. Mekwisha. Just a few people who've seen pavements and cabro who like it and who cheer and we no. know whose interests you're protecting here. No. Polycap. Um, I think we should not dwell. The history is the history. No, no. What the but we should learn from history. What the citizens from Nairobi want is, what are we going to do for them? And I'm being really clear that we are going to fix the financing model of the city. We're going to have a city that is well funded. And with those funds, with my deputy, Professor Kaloki, a distinguished public servant and politician, we want in Kiswahili kusema tutastawisha jami, tutaboresha uchumi, na tutaimarisha mazingira hapa Nairobi. Mambo matatu makubwa ambayo tutayatenda. Na tunataka kuwaeleza watu wote Nairobi kwamba muta manifesto yetu iko kwa magazeti yote. Siku ya Wednesday. Uh, kesho. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, in this, this week, we saw me the abridged version muone. The pledges we are making to you because in three seconds we are not able to extrapolate those pledges. But I want to assure you, Nairobi will be something of your dreams. No. It will be a city of your vision. It will be truly a All global right. hub in Africa for everybody. Senator Sakaj, Sakaj, I believe you do agree that Nairobi is in deep debt and there is wasteful use of funds. What are the factors behind this? How will you fix it? Again, um, I must say, Nairobi is in a dire situation that it's proper, proper, proper planning and proper political management. A lot of these issues are relational. If you look at the 76 billion um, debt, including even the 4.4 that is owed now you know, um, to, to KCB, and many of these other instruments we've gotten into, a lot of them can be sorted out based on how we relate with the national government. That Nairobi is not a branch of the national government or an appendage, or as uh, my brother says, you know, the military interventions are going on then Nairobi can negotiate because there are a lot of areas which we can do debt swaps that the county of Nairobi owes the national government and the national government owes Nairobi City County. We must balance our books and we're going to do that. And we have a team that is, you know, properly suited, you know, to be able to do that. I, I am very, very confident about my deputy, um, Jorogia Mushiri, who has a stellar career as well in banking. Actually, a proper corporate career, not two years stint here and there. A proper career, 20 years in ABSA. So NIC. give us the particulars, though, on, yes. on the issue of uh, the debt that we are in. How will we get out once you are done? And that's what I'm saying. We must do a couple of things. One, you must refinance your debt. You must move what is domestic into concessional, that you cannot be borrowing from commercial banks. Have them as concessional. Chapter 12 of the Constitution of Kenya, talking about public finance, says how the national government guarantees county governments of debt. In fact, on top of that, we must get creative. For us to sort out the real issues of this city, we need around 200 billion shillings up front through an infrastructure bond. I've gone across this world and spoken to Kenyans in the diaspora whose remittances are our biggest foreign income earner, 
who are ready to put in money in certain interventions. When you talk about transit, we need a mass transit system in this county. How are we going to do it? Recently, I was in Imperial College in London, and I met a, a man, a nice gentleman, who sorted out transit in London. He sorted out transit in Beijing, mobility. What's his name? Professor Washington Ochieng. The other day I was in Riyadh. I met a group of guys who did the Dubai Metro and are doing the Riyadh Metro. George Opondo. There are Kenyans out there who are willing. So we must get creative. Um, there's a PPP department that has been set up in the, in the National Treasury. There's external borrowing. But we must refinance the city. Look at Joburg. Joburg is almost, you know, it's, it's more or less a listed uh, city where people can actually invest in it. If you do not do that, you become a cashier that you're receiving money, you only pay salaries, you will not develop Nairobi unless you get creative in how we actually you know, um, structure our financing model for the city. So we're going to restructure the debt, move to concessional loans, uh, reamortize some of those payments to longer term and have no. an infrastructure bond for Nairobi City. Many Kenyans out there no. are going to put in money on our transit, on our water, and no. our basic infrastructure. Bwana Polika, utakabili vipi matumizi ya rasimali, mabaya rasimali katika county ya Nairobi, ufujaji wa fedha na madeni ambayo sasa hivi ya naangamiza county ya Nairobi? Ah, jambo la kwanza, Nairobi City County gets its highest revenue from land rates, parking bays, um, land rates, parking fees, outdoor advertising, uh, building permits. Those will be some of the top, within the top five uh, revenue things. And what we are going to do is to make sure that we digitalize the collection of all that revenue so that the leakage, we seal the leakage. Technology is one of the best things to overcome loss of revenue. And we are going to use technology in, in the public revenue management system. Then secondly, we will deploy that money. Our own source revenue, I can promise, we and Professor Kaloki have done a study, and we've even checked the reports of the Commission for Revenue Allocation. With six revenue lines, we can generate 80 billion own source revenue in Nairobi. And with that money, we will build a thousand. We will join the government in building more schools, in making sure there's medicine in our dispensaries, in making sure that there's incinerators to burn garbage, that we start a leasing program for vehicles and equipment uh, for the staff, and also to make sure we pay our staff the right salaries so that they are really motivated. We are very concerned about the welfare of Nairobi City County workers and all the workers of all affiliate bodies of Nairobi City County. Only motivated workers can deliver essential services, and that's what Nairobians want. And that brings, it, brings me to the next issue, and that is the competence of the Nairobi City County staff, and you will both have an opportunity to respond to this. How will you address the competence or lack thereof overemployment cases of ghost workers and the issue of productivity to make those staff uh, workers, the workers of Nairobi City County, uh, that they will deliver the services for the Nairobians. I'll start with you. Every employee of Nairobi City County from the 10th of August, we shall have a performance agreement with them. We will bring back to life performance contracting. And that performance agreement means what do they do every day? The few things they do every day to deliver the output Nairobians expect. And that output will be captured in a scorecard. So each one of us will have a scorecard and a performance agreement. The performance agreement is the input. The scorecard is the measure. And who will measure is the neighborhood associations. We're going to run Nairobi with the neighborhood associations as per the Neighborhoods Act. There is an act that demands the city is run in a see-through way. Let me not call it transparent. That, and I want to use the, the analogy of an egg. The executive of Nairobi City County will be the yolk. Surrounding it will be the county assembly as the egg white. The egg shell will be the residents of Nairobi. Kwa sababu, we will not pay an invoice for a road or a broken sewer before the neighborhood association, say, of Kayole, says, sends us a photo. So there's crowdsourcing. We are going to use technology and the cloud and a data center that can really be able to serve the city of Nairobi. And we shall decentralize services from City Hall. City Hall will be the headquarters of the corporate services. There is no use for a waiter, like I found a waiter, a restaurant, 
somebody working somewhere in Umoja telling me they have to come all the way to CBD at Yanakuja kutafuta food handler certificate. No. That right. food handler certificate, they should be able to get it in Umoja. Thank Sankaja, you. I think you were tickled there again. Uh, it was a point of the mention, the, the cloud issue, but how will you address the uh, staffing for Nairobi? County. Many of those ideas, really, you know, this is not equity, yeah? this is not corporate. You must take the bull by the horns and give practical solutions Which to are? our city. And let me give you an example. You're talking about, you know, one of the highest revenue streams, you know, being um, rates. Have you talked to us about the real classification of those rates? Why is it that people in Gidogoro are paying the same rate as people in Runda? which is just, you know, a doorstep away, yet they have Mabati structures, and these ones have five-star houses. You know, let's be practical, because that is what Nairobians want to be able to hear. Now, the Section on Properties uh, Bill that was passed uh, in, in Parliament recently prevents an opportunity. I've heard him saying he's done a study with, with uh, Professor Kaloki. I, I know Professor Kaloki is a professor, and maybe that's why we've not been seeing you guys campaigning, because you're doing studies. But... Look at what KPMG has spoken about Nairobi. Look at what PwC have said and the CRA. It is not just six revenue streams that are going to um, increase how much we collect. Just the sectional properties realignment and the revaluation that starts in January 2023 is going to take us up another 50 to 53 billion shillings. Every other revenue stream then must be geared towards making Nairobians more productive. The NMS that you praise has been going around this city with GSU harassing our traders and our hawkers, throwing them into, you know, those pickups, tetanus field pickups, and roadworthy. By the way, on the 9th, if you're listening and you're a scrap metal dealer, come to City Hall. Revenue has gone down to 7 billion. Why is that? Because you're not explaining to the people of Nairobi the services you're offering with the money you collect from them. We will have a people-centered leadership. Cloud is a tool. Now, Mudo but your, your, your focus must be on the people you're serving. You can't be... Mudo umekuisha, Bwana uh, Senator. Lakini umekuwa Senator wa County ya Nairobi. Ndiyo. Umewajibika vipi katika kuwana kuamba pesa za County ya Nairobi zinatumika namna inavo stahili. Hakuna wizi. Hakuna watu wa siofanya kazi ambao wanalipwa. Umekuwa Senator. Wewe ndiye machu ya County ya Nairobi. Zubeda na dhani kapu na kujia hapa mlifanya utafiti. Umewajibika vipi Senator katika kuhakikisha kuamba pesa za County ya Nairobi zimetumika vipi ya ma kama umlifanya utafiti ungeona zile report ambazo nimewasilisha zile miswada na hoja ambazo nimezileta kwa bunge hapo kati ya hizo miswada na hoja kuna ile ambayo inaitwa prompt payment bill ambayo pia wale wengine walijaribu kuweka katika mswada wa BBI walikuwa naleta ilikuwa nimeshapitisha kwa bunge ukiangalia yale ma eh, unajua zile report ambazo nimewasilisha kwa bunge zinazungumza itakuwa ni njia gani tatumia mbinu gani form itakuwa vipi Kwa kishe ule jamaa, there's a guy who works just across over here in Cultivar. He's called Fred. He's one of the procurement people. Akona wines and spirits buruburu. Anasema ya kwamba, wakati ya kiwa job, anasikia hawa watu wa NMS na GSU wamekuja, in their WhatsApp group, they tell each other that hawa watu wamekam. Eh? Kuna wimbo wanasamanga walikam na kinini vijana wa Nairobi wanajua. Wamekam na Subaru. Na wakikuja hapo, wakikuja hapo, they tell each other in the WhatsApp group, they close all the shops. That's why this military you're praising has not collected 7 billion this year. Let's take power back to the people. And he tried to define this election. It's not about liars and who don't lie. It's about a state project and a people's governor. Speaking about the choice people's governor, power to the people, let's give some power to the people who weighed in on the, this debate. We had asked some questions from Nairobians, and I believe we're ready to sample them right now. My name is Masi Masila Achola, an executive program leader with the Maxwell Leadership Team and also serving in the Mkenya Daima Steering Committee. My question to the Nairobi gubernatorial candidates is, if elected to office, could you share with the residents of Nairobi what can we expect from you in your first 100 days in office? Um, in the first 100 days, I pledge with my deputy to have a very fit for purpose organization to deliver essential services that Nairobians have been deprived of in the past. And especially Nairobians in the informal settlements and in low income areas. And therefore, 
it, there'll be executive order number one that establishes a good government, a coherent government, and a government where the deputy governor has clear responsibilities, a government where the governor himself has clear responsibilities, and where we work as partners, him playing to his strengths and me playing to my strengths, but a proper cabinet. Also, we promise you a proper cabinet that is fit for purpose, and the purpose is essential service delivery. The people watching us at home, actually, they just want services. They want water in their taps. They want garbage collected. They want storm drains covered. They want pedestrian walks repaired. They want markets made. They don't want to continue selling uh, like um, on the road on the roadsides. They want their bills on time, and they want to be treated with honor, and they want to be treated like citizens of Kenya, and they want to be enabled to do their businesses. So the first 100 days is about reconstructing the organization called Nairobi City County because it does not exist and we have a lot of demotivated employees. Make sure that we convince them, they start to see their salaries are paid, they are well taken care of, career development no. is sorted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank uh, the lady from Maxwell for that question. Uh, Maxwell Leadership Institute on um, uh, Valley Road is an extremely important, you know, pillar in mentoring many of our young people. I've, I've actually taught many programs of leadership there, and I've been a participant in that. Um, I think when they, when she asked 100 days, maybe what she wanted to hear from me, Polycap, was just to say I will not quit first, you know, as the beginning. Thanks for answering for me. Yeah, Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> Please keep reminding people, because people are afraid. To talk, to watch a okay. But secondly, I want to say this. I mean, the first 100 days, I've said that you will not sort out Nairobi um, using quick fixes. The issues of this city don't need a hundred, and I'm not seeking a hundred day term. It's not quick fixes or bandage uh, solutions that will sort it out. We have a 10 year vision and a five year vision with my. But in the first 100 days, what you're going to do, number one, is to um, you know, implement the Urban Areas and Cities Act together with Section 14 of the um, County Government Act to create the five boroughs that I'm talking about in Nairobi. That if the person in charge of garbage in Kaioli does not need to think about Westlands. The person in charge of a road in Langata should have nothing to do with Roisambu or Marurui. Because that lack of accountability, when you ask them, okay, Monapa kuna takataka, pole boss kulikuwa na sijui crisis in Mukuru. So we'll set up the governance structure that will deliver to Nairobians. That is the first task. And that includes the county assembly. The second thing that we're going to do is to implement the standing orders that we've actually been working on, even as I've been in the Senate. Proper standing orders for the inspectorate. We cannot have people criminalizing business, um, you know, chasing our hawkers, throwing sticks at them. They must have proper, like any discipline force, standing yeah. orders. And finally, we'll implement the one business permit. You can't have businesses with 10 licenses. No. Today there is fire, tomorrow there is war. It will be one license. Right. And now we'll pay every other um, entity that needs to be paid from that one license that you pay. Wanapoli, umekua mkizungumza kukosu tatizo la maji, majitaka, katika county ya Nairobi, awali ulitaja kukosu cartels. Je, unamini kwamba ubinafsishaji wa huduma hizi katika county ya Nairobi utasaidia katika kusuluhisha baadhi ya matatizo ambayo yamekuwepo kuhusu usimamizi wa huduma hizi huduma za maji zimekuwa ni tatizo kubwa juzi nimetembea kule Rwai na muliona picha sikujua kuna mahali Nairobi watu ubeba maji bado na punda bado Pia, so you learn every day now if you go to Rwai if you the problem is a problem of way leaves which the senator perhaps was even ignored in Senate. There is a way leave issue between Kiambu and Nairobi. Because today we are consuming 500,000 uh, cubic meters of water every day in Nairobi. But that, that's really the level of production of water from our water sources, Dakaine, Roiro Dam. But the Roiro Dam and the Northern Collector Tunnel, we need to connect it. And I shida ya way leave, ni shida ya kisiasa, lazma, to tatue, na yu kitatuliwa, there will be an extra, almost close to 100,000 cubic, so it will go to 600,000 immediately. And people will, what what anza kusikia relief. But in five years, we have to build new water sources and work with the national government to build new water sources. But you've got the government that builds new water sources has to be a government that does not believe dams are for eating and stealing. Because dams have to be done in places like the Nyandarwa eco ecosystem, Maragua Dam in Moranga, and, and, and that's why Nairobi has to be secured by being assisted 
by the neighboring countries to the metropole that is Nairobi City County. Senator Sakaja, the taps in many homes and other businesses are running dry, but their water bowsers full to the brim and coming at a premium. How will you, you sort this? F first, again, it's really nice that we're at a university because I need to school my friend about water. Um, there are many things you've said that are completely false. Number one, the quantity that we consume is not that 525,000 that you're speaking about. Nairobi has four water sources. The first water source is Kikuyu Springs, just after you know, Kikuyu Campus. That was set up in 1907. After that, we developed Ruru Dam in 1936. It provides 4%. Kikuyu Springs provides only 1%, which is 4,000 cubic meters of water. The third one is Sasumwa in uh, Njambini. Sasumwa produces 11% of our water requirement in Nairobi, comes through Kabete treatment plant, then comes down this way. And the fourth one, the biggest, of course, is Ndakaine, which gives us 84% of our water. Now, Ndakaine was last developed in 1997. There were three phases. After 1997, there's been no additional source. So every single day, the people of Nairobi require 850 million liters of water, but get 525.6 million liters per day. You need to bridge that gap. In fact, you'll be shocked, uh, Polycarp. 70% of the people you're talking about, the ones you didn't know carry water in Mutungi, 70% of them, of Nairobians, have never had a shower from to the top. They, they bathe bottom up, you know, like with the bucket. <laughs> bottom up is how many of us shower in this city. We want to give our people dignity. There's no dignity when women are scrambling outside these, you know, uh, boreholes that have been created in the water sources every day for water. The issue of distribution then is the next thing that must be... You know, I asked about this time thing. Because I've just spoken about the, the quantity. So the when we finish Northern Collector, December 2023, under my, our administration, I don't like saying my our administration, we'll move into Northern Collector 2. One, will sort out 85% of the water need, and then, I mean, uh, 65%, and then Northern Collector 2 will give us 85%. Now, the second most important you're issue, if you allow me on your time, let's, 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 seconds, give, it's, let's it's give him an opportunity. Let's give him well, an opportunity. Just keep time. The challenge of water... The, 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 the debate in Nairobi is not about what needs to be done and how. We are all, there is consensus that we are short of sources of water. It is who will do it because you need to be trustworthy and you need to be capable to, uh, to, to get it done. That issue of who is the most important issue in this election. And on the issue of water, for sure, we are the supply and demand there's too little supply for very high demand and the numbers are what it is the metropolitan area because nairobi even supplies machakos the the epz area uh, with water is an the biggest challenge is new sources of water for the city county of nairobi and that is a task between ourselves and the national government and thank god we have martha karua the original champion of water of water as, as Minister of Water during Kibaki's time. And she understands the task and we are ready to work with her in Nairobi. For Nairobi, it will be a responsibility. On to housing, a majority of uh, Nairobians can live, in, water, live yeah. in, in, in informal cell. And I just want to cover as much as we can. And uh, a majority of uh, the populace here live in informal settlements. And how are we going to change this housing demand and give quality housing and other services for Nairobians, I'll start with you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll just take the same time to finish on water. Um, I've had him mentioning Martha, earlier he mentioned Raila. Those, these are people we all, you know, we know and we've worked with many years. Um, you know, don't, don't run away and hide behind them when you don't have the point. Just say the point as it is. Because Nairobians are electing you to be governor of Nairobi, not Martha Karua, not Raila Odinga. They're electing you if they elect you, if they make that decision, which I, which I know they will not make. You must sort out the distribution issue of water because water goes hand in hand with housing. So I've spoken about the quantity. And it's not about uh, waiting for an angel from national government to do it. Already we're at 90% with the Northern Collector 1. The piping has been, uh, or rather the tunneling has been done. The, the piping is at 34%. This side from Apro Isambu, coming from Kiambu Institute of uh, Technology um, to USIU moving down, is already going on. We have so many areas that do not have piping. I've never had piping uh, you know, in Nairobi. There are people who actually build houses across what were the physical levers. They shut it down, they collect water, and then you see these bowsers moving around the city labeled clean water or NMS. That will come to an end using SCADA technology. Where as governor, I'll be able to see on my phone, Mali Omekata Maji. Now, urban housing 
is a huge challenge in this city. And it's also something that the built environment has made people lack dignity in this city. The county government is not in the business of building houses. We shall facilitate the private sector through proper land tenure and giving them proper land of government to actually partner with them to build these houses. We can actually do it um, through the silo uh, model no. where you, you build and people move and come no. in there. Mudo Urban Mudo renewal is being resist Mudo resisted Mudo in Eastlands because of lack of trust of that institution or body that is praising here today. Okay. I wish you go no. there tomorrow and tell them what you said about NMS. Maji ni mojawapo ya shida ambazo zinakumba wale ambao wanaishi katika mitaa ya mabanda katika kaunti ya Nairobi. Haswa ni mpango upi ambao uko nao wa kuinua na kuimarisha hadhi ya watu ambao wanaishi katika mitaa ya mabanda katika kaunti ya Nairobi na changamoto ambazo wanakumbana nazo. So first of all the county of Nairobi in its own books owns close to 532 hectares of land. On it sits 12,000 single dwelling units. Nairobi has to strategically densify but that process requires proper proper public participation you can already hear my competitor is whetting his appetite to steal your homes you people in makadara and jericho umeskia he has pronounced himself that this will be private sector led i have told you this thing called urban renewal which is what they want nairobi to take we have to be very careful it needs proper conversations um, around it, and we must build housing that is truly affordable housing, decent housing. And we, before we build, we must ask the people who sit in those estates, how will this work, and how will you be compensated? Before that is done, we are rushing, and you've seen a big rush towards that work, and we are saying, put it on hold, the constitution demands proper public participation, proper understanding, and I, I want to believe that conversation has already uh, not been held. So the housing question in the informal settlements is to continue the work that has started. Roads, water, um, sewer, boreholes. These informal settlements require a lot of investment, and right. that investment requires a location of our improving our revenue and also making sure Senate allocates us the money we require to attend to high density areas. Okay, a rebuttal uh, in terms of uh, what he said on your uh, housing urban development plan there, uh, an opportunity. There are people well, waiting um, in the wings to come minute. and steal your houses and you've had the private sector. He has sector. the opportunity, you're in his time. You, okay, you have sure. an opportunity. I don't know who represents the private sector here on this stage, if you look clearly. But what I'll say is this, while you're away, when you ran away from Nairobians, holy cup. I represented the people of uh, Majengo in Kamkunji in court to fight what you're talking about. You are somewhere in your Bentley, living the life, never spoken about an issue of Nairobians. But now you're saying you want to steal. That they were moved from slums in Majengo, the slums were put down and put in 11, you know, 11,000 bob houses while they're paying 5,000 shillings, 4,000 shillings. Today, the amount of money owed that they need to pay is 60 million shillings. That's what someone wants to steal the houses. When I talk about urban renewal, the entity you're praising is rushing. Just this week, there have been more than three or four advertisements on the newspaper for them to engage contractors on urban renewal, and they have 28 days to go. They must stop that, and I'm putting them on notice. In fact, it's against the law. An entity whose time has ended cannot engage in 10, 15-year contracts today. He has, doesn't have the guts to talk against NMS, and he will not. But they must not do that because the people that you're talking about, I have represented for NMS, five years. NMS not, is not, not an enemy of Nairobi. I have not ran away from them, and they are saying they believe urban renewal must be done. They don't trust those people who are doing it. And you say it's an issue of trust. It's not All about right. oh, the comp you know, who's going to do it. The first no. thing, basic <laughs> thing that they want is to know that that person will be there to All do right. it for five years it's and will not run away. It's first deliver on that. It's unfortunately it's time out for us in terms of uh, this uh, debate. There's a lot to cover. I believe both of you gentlemen have spoken and have alluded to the fact that you have the manifestos will be open to the public Nairobians to be specific to peruse and digest and uh, that is where we will end it at this opportunity. I believe uh, even the time for closing remarks are not there. Uh, if we probably managed the time a bit better in the beginning it would have uh, ended up uh, even better in terms of coverage of the discussion. Asante ni sana kwa kuja.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. Naam, wasemapo wahenga kilicho na mwanzo lazima kiwe na mwisho. Hii sasa ndio tamati ya mjadala baina ya wanaume za mate kiti cha governor katika county ya Nairobi. Indeed our appreciation to the candidates Polly Kapigade and Johnson Sakaja and to you the audience that uh, turned up here and out there watching on television and from around the world of course online. Thank you all. My name is Mark Masai from NTV. Na mimi naitwa Zubaida Kome na kutaki usiku mwema. Zubaida Kome kutoka KTN News. <laughs>
uachane na mshahara wa serikali lakini hilo ndio jambo ambalo uh, wanaona ni kubwa sana jambo la kudanganyana makaratasi jambo la ukosefu wa masomo lakini ma, jambo ya wizi hao masuala hawaoni kama ni makubwa mm. kama hilo swala la lingine lakini ndivyo hivyo ni wenzetu tuta, tutaendelea na tutawashinda asante asante lakini kabla haujondoka nikuulize kwamba wakazi takriban ama wapiga kura takriban milioni mbili nukta nne wamekuwa wakitazama mjadala wa jioni ya leo unadhani kwamba umeweza umeweza kujieleza kama kiongozi ambaye ataweza kupigana na ufisadi vilivyo in, kwa sababu lilikuwa ni jambo ambalo limeleta tumbo joto hapo ndani a uh, natumai nimewaeleza na na pia tutaendelea kuwaeleza katika kampeni zetu inajulikana vizuri sana hapa Nairobi mm. mambo ambayo yanaendelea ya ufisadi ni mambo ambayo yameandikiwa maripoti mengi kuna nakala mingi ambazo zimeandikwa na, na institutions mingi mm. sana na hiyo kazi inajulikana mm. kwa hivyo hakuna debate about kupigana na ufisadi asante asante, asante. tunakutakia kila laheri wa Kenya wana Nairobi wataamua ifikapo tarehe tisa asante tuelekee sasa upande ule mwingine lila Mohamed pamoja na Francis Gashuri uh, ambao kwa sasa wako na seneta wa Nairobi Zakaja. Johnson Sakaja twende kule <laughs> Thank you very much Beatrice and uh, Frederick uh, it's been 180 minutes 90 minutes of the second debate mm -hmm. quite a heated one Francis uh, quite an, a, an encounter a banter that many Nairobians this evening were hoping for Senator good evening for a moment there we were skipping our heartbeats uh, hoping you would come you would not come you are here do you feel you have punched above or below your weight I feel we needed more time to talk about the real issues of the people of Nairobi. Um, those issues are real. Today their families sleeping hungry. Um, there are people who don't know where to go to tomorrow. We have millions of young people without jobs. Um, I wish we had more time to focus on that, um, apart from the side shows that are of course choreographed by the, those I'm, uh, I'm running against. But all the same, I'm glad with the time we've had, we've been able to at least speak about certain policy proposals that we have for the city. Um, Nairobi is for all of us. Uh, politics is not an enmity. I believe in Siasa Safi. Um, politics is not an enmity. After the election, we'll have one county that we must remain in. And um, let us also not be divided in terms of parties. Um, let's not be divided in terms of tribe. Let's remember that we're one tribe called Nairobi. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, Sakaja, f feels like Karima should be, should be coming up uh, because that was a real debate. Is there something that you felt that probably you needed to respond to, particularly that touches on people of Nairobi, in a minute? At some point last year, I went to donate desks in Dagoreti, um, in a school um, called Gatina Primary. And when I gave them desks, normally you ask the children, what would you like to get um, from me? And they say, oh, Super Senator, and I thought they'd ask for sweets, or for a bowl, or for a school bus, even when they're ambitious, and they say they wanted food. We have, you know, as a parent, that broke my heart. We have too many children who are out of school because of food because of you know the covid era and the poverty in Nairobi as i said urban poverty is the worst and so i wanted to talk about the school feeding program mm -hmm. that we're going to institute in Nairobi for all our children that you know you know at least you you'll be able to lower the cost of living for those parents you save them um, close to 5000 i mean 3000 shillings a month and attendance goes up many schools at 12:30 they tell the kids to go look for a meal they don't come back they're missing a third of the education if you want to finish a country you finish the children so i really want to talk about school feeding i want to talk about how to clean up nairobi i want to talk about the recycling plant and waste to energy in in, in Dandora. and just moving that away we have an entire wing at uh, Kenyatta and Bagathi for respiratory illnesses for the people of Dandora. I want to talk about CHVs, our community health volunteers who are doing an amazing job across the, the county of Nairobi mm -hmm. who need to be incorporated and from the day we get into office they'll be part of our health system. Thank you very much Sakaja. The person to ask for a rematch is Clifford Machoka. I think actually the, there's a rematch on the 9th of August and that will be now a technical knockout <laughs> at 9 a.m. The voters Thank will you. decide the 22.1 million of, uh, or, or 2.1 million in the country and the 2.4 million in Nairobi County. Yes. Thank so you. Back the to very you. Best of Thank you very much. Thank you. Leila uh, Vieri Metembea Kidogo. So we take it back to Wahiga. Wahiga, take it away. Wahiga, talk to us about the facts and the figures. Has this debate build up to its expectations of 2.4 million registered voters in this great county of Nairobi? Not forgetting that uh, at least 24% of them are undecided. And I don't know whether this debate helped a few of them to make their minds up. Professor Dote, did you get that sense? 
in the second part of the debate because you said you saw two debates in the second part of the debate uh, but i unfortunately i don't think that it will help a lot because they spent too much time on the other things so let me finish my conversation in terms of uh, and, and i'll ask you to be brief in the yes in very time. brief in terms of uh, what i liked also about uh, polycap i liked his conversation about involving citizens I think that was a good conversation. I also like his de debate about the unique status of Nairobi in terms of the relationship between national and county government. The things I did not like. I didn't like the fact that uh, Johnson, my good friend, did not apologize for coming late. Shockingly, despite his conversation about Tia Safi, I didn't like his arrogance. Uh, and lastly, I did not like the conversations from Igade of over-focusing on uh, Johnson and not himself. So those are the things I didn't like about the debate. What you call arrogance, others call confidence, but uh, depends on uh, which side of the table you're seated. Uh, let's hear from you, Wanjiro. Losing, exciting to listen to. I'm not sure the 26% will be able to decipher, but we definitely got a lot. Um, Igade, I got a sense that he's got, he had prepared and articulated his implementation strategies pretty well. I liked his revenue strategy, breaking down the streams, sealing the loopholes. I found that to be very pragmatic and a low uh, hanging fruit. Um, whether he links it into the cloud, I got a sense that he imagines digitizing is going to cure the governance culture gap. That's, that's not necessarily accurate. I liked the eggs, the neighborhoods, of course. <laughs> yeah, I liked the decentralization. Um, of course, his take on NMS, uh, for me, is, in fact, the word I would use, it's odious, because... This is Igade. Yes. Uh -huh. Igade's take on NMS is totally misplaced. Um, and I think Sakaja brought that out very well, because the situation on the ground is that NMS has really... Uh, it hasn't been accountable. Contrary to what Igade is espousing in public participation, it hasn't had public participation. It mm. hasn't had accountability. There's been a lot of coercion of, of, of citizens. On, on Sakaja's side, I think he got the NMS very accurately. Um, I think he, I also like the argument around the five boroughs. I didn't, I didn't really, I like the idea, um, I didn't hear much about how it would be implemented vis-a-vis -vis the, the services mm. and the particular sectors because you need a policy framework for that. So I found his policy grounding to be very, to be weak. I thought he had ideas, but I didn't get a sense of policy. I got a, a real sense of what's happening on the ground. With Igade, I got a sense of, of the policy, of the implementation, um, but no sense on the ground. So I found they have different strengths. With um, Sakaja also, I didn't hear the governance. Uh, coming out for as you, a, that did, as that a major problem. Come, come out strongly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Philip Kisi, if, if things had gone your way, you may have been one of the individuals <laughs> on that panel today. Mm -hmm. uh, but life has a way sometimes of uh, taking a different tangent. So, how do you then rate the two men that stood before uh, Kenyans and Nairobians this well, evening? Well, uh, uh, I mean, I would be unfair. But uh, I mean, rating is something that we cannot avoid. One, uh, like my two colleagues have said, um, I think um, Sakaja performed quite well. He seems to be understanding the issues affecting Nairobi. But on the, on the flip side, he doesn't seem to have a clear implementation strategy. How do you deliver what you're talking about? On the other side, Polycap could have been a bit weak on policy and on strategy, developing strategy. But he seemed to be very clear on how it can be implemented. You sound like you want a candidate with both. Do you want to merge the two? Yeah, you are both. Would that, must have both. Would that now, be the perfect you governor for Nairobi? Mm -hmm. But what was disappointing is the fact, like what Prof. said, is the fact that somebody who is expecting to provide leadership to a county like Nairobi comes in late, he doesn't apologize. In fact, he appears to be quite arrogant. And I'm telling you this because Sakaj is my friend. I'll tell him even tomorrow if he's not listening to me. On the other side, uh, just as Prof. said, as I've said, they spent almost 60% of their time on personality issues. And very little time was spent on the real issues. At the tail end, they started talking about water, they started talking about housing, they started talking about public transport, and so on and so forth. They were just mentioning. They did, you know, mentioning something and telling us how you intend to go about implementation is quite different so now leadership 
and I, I'm one of those people who don't believe that there's somebody called a leader. But I believe there's somebody, a human being, at a point in time who exercises leadership. Now, if you look at those two gentlemen, I leave it in a to decide. As who has these views? Are who has integrity? No, no, they're not mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm posing to make a very strong statement. Go ahead. Who, who, is, who is humble? Humility? Because as somebody exercising leadership, you must, you must show some humility. Who has integrity or integrity questions? Who is confident? Who is empathic? Who is charismatic? Who can we hold accountable? From the two, from the two I can tell you, if there's a weakness I've seen in the two gentlemen, they know it all. So they may end up being very poor uh, team players. So if they don't have a party that can whip them and remind them that they are there to serve people, we are again getting into another disaster. Okay. Well, let, let, you let know, me... we had, we, 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 we had uh, poor leadership, but now we can have arrogant leadership. And that's your concern this evening. Yes. Professor Omenya, I know you have notes and incisive analysis of the debate, but let me first ask a basic question. Did anyone emerge a winner tonight from that debate? You were very clear earlier with your marking scheme for the earlier debate, so I'm going to pose the same question to you. What's your marking scheme showing you for this debate? Yes, Who I mean, won? I'm not, I'm not uh, afraid to give marks because that's one of my key roles. I think uh, despite coming late, uh, Sakaja won uh, by 65%. You didn't dock him uh, for the lateness. And, and <laughs> Igade, in fact, I think it'll be a draw if you bring in the lateness. Igade was at 63%, so they're very close. Uh, but I can, I can justify why I, I actually believe that uh, the Sakaja did win this debate. And, and um, I think when it comes to governance, I was a bit surprised that uh, Igade did not speak to the law uh, relating to governance of the city. Uh, which is basically Urban Areas and Cities, uh, Cities Act. And Sakaja elaborated that very well, um, you know, with the five uh, boroughs and so on. And, and, and those can actually be aligned, you know, with the wards and so on. I thought that was a very, very good idea. Um, when it came to the issue of, uh, of revenue, I think both of them had, had pretty interesting ideas that, that are workable. However, my big problem with both of them, so they scored poorly there, was that... Uh, Again, counties and, 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 uh, and citizens don't just exist to pay taxes. We want country, ca counties to be engines of economic growth. So none of them actually articulated how Nairobi can grow its economy. In fact, Sakaja was talking about, about borrowing uh, on, on, on the other side and the financing debt and, and stuff. And Igade was talking about uh, you know, land rates and so on. And I was fearing for Nairobi that both of those fellows are going to milk you dry when they get into, into <laughs> office. And then just moving quite quickly on to um, another issue that they engage with, uh, be brief, uh, which please. is the final mm -hmm. when, um, yeah, when it came to the idea of housing, I think I liked Sakaja's idea. Uh, because, uh, uh, of course, uh, Igade knows that his Jubilee government has failed to deliver any houses. So trying to do the same thing is stupid. You should know that. And, and that's partly why, for me, he lost the debate totally. Uh, Sakaja says, look here, um, these people, poor people living in informal settlements, we can improve their lives without necessarily building houses. We can put infrastructure there, we can put, put in water, we can put in these basic services and so on. So, so in a way, uh, we're close, but I think Sakaja had an edge. And I think Sakaja was speaking more to governance and politics, uh, while, while Igade was, uh, you know, like uh, an elected NMS, <laughs> if I can call it that. That's how, that's how the professor sees it. <laughs> Karen, coming to you. Earlier on, you said Nairobi doesn't need a politician, doesn't need a businessman or a corporate titan. It needs a leader. Did you see a leader on that stage tonight? Yeah, both gentlemen uh, showcased uh, qualities of leadership. Um, and let me just point out a few things that I liked and what I did not like um, in, in how everything went. Like a number of us have said, I expected that uh, Sakaja would actually apologize for showing up late. But I'm glad he still showed up anyway. But just that apology would, would send a statement to people that, you know what, I, I actually respect your time. But that did not come out, so that wasn't good. However, um, his idea about um, what he has in terms of housing, in terms of water, uh, resolving the issue about uh, revenue generation, policy implementation, I think that was good because it was quite practical. Igade, on the other hand, I liked what he said that he would like to continue with the work that has already happened or work that has already started because then a lot of times when there's regime change you then see new MPs new governors coming up and starting fresh projects and leaving stalling projects you know and and that is problematic 
Uh, something else that I liked uh, with what Igabe said was about performance contracting, mm -hmm. making sure that you're getting paid and yes, you're actually performing. Because then we can see that is already working very well uh, in public service. The other bit, um, at the beginning, he, he actually sort of tried to, to be relatable to the Nairobians, to the residents of Nairobi, by saying, Mimi ngependa kuhudumia um, watu wa Nairobi. Mimi, I, I am a product of mm. um, healthcare, public schooling, and you know, you know, being, being relatable. I think he did a good job in terms of that. A potential danger though, although I think maybe it, it could have been just uh, him getting back at Sakaja by saying, eh, wale watu ambao hawakuenda shule wanakosa ni damo and you know, stuff like that, because then, we have a number of individuals, especially young people, who dropped out of school, who are not in training, not in education, and, and they are like over 40% of the population of the unemployed young people. So I think, but uh, generally, this was such a hot, heated debate. It was really good. I, I like the way, I like the way you've put it. Yeah, just one, Go ahead. One, one, I think um, um, my, it's only unfortunate that we didn't have choices. We have either Sakaja, or regarde. What do you mean you didn't have choices? There, there are, are no choices. Four other no, no, four no, other no, candidates no, duly cleared those, those by guys, the IBC. We, those, those some guys with we, manifestos. The entire panel down. gave them three out of ten. Now, <laughs> you see, if we had more choices, and this is why I regret why Timothy Wanyonyi. Yes. Timothy Wanyonyi was denied this opportunity. Because Timothy Wanyonyi has everything we are looking for. Correct. He's humble. He shows humility. He has experience in leadership. He is a good manager. He, he's a good team player. He has everything that you are looking for. It is extremely unfortunate that the powers that be never gave him an opportunity to serve. And I know I'm saying this at the cost of... I thought you were lying because high cost. And I'm wondering. No, no. I'm saying this at a very high cost. But I better say it than keep quiet. That we should have had many choices. Exactly. Then Nairobians would have said, okay... Maybe this one is arrogant, or maybe this one doesn't, but this one has a certificate, this one has a certificate, and this one's a big private sector. You need somebody with all those skills put together, and that should have been Timothy. Oh, and Jiro is vehemently agreeing. Yes, yes. Even, it, it, it was a point. I think the 26%, yes. I think the 26%, yes. a, a large number of those right. are unhappy with the choices. Exactly. Because they are saying, we deserve better. Exactly. We've invested. You know, we've seen, seen Tim Wanyonyi yeah. grow his career. He's been MP now for two terms. Two terms yeah. He's done very well. In a councillor. And there was an, from a council, but there was what, an expectation. But what guarantee do you have that if he was here today, you wouldn't be putting him through the same that scrutiny is, that, you, that you've put through? No, he other. would be put. No, he know. would be put, but it's the expectation that we right. would have a choice. Now yeah. we have a tailor made. We've got a project and we have you know somebody else and we have to choose between these and like you said it's not cut and dried hence the 26 percent Menya. Yeah. when you have and good people who are qualified who have prof. a track record who don't present themselves up to run for office he that did present happened. himself but then the, there was no, no, the no. party rigged him out uh, prof Menya, go ahead yeah i think uh, i agree 100 percent i'm just adding to those sentiments that uh, again i mean overall uh, tonight we've been disappointed because uh, Nairobi is the biggest economy uh, outside of Kenya and uh, and the governor of Nairobi we expect to be a person capable of running this country and, um, and, and, and the expectations we have of that individual in terms of the way they carry themselves, in terms of uh, duty of care, in terms of the depth with which they think through things that affect Maninchi and so on um, and what we're seeing here are, are actually juveniles who still need a lot of growth uh, to be at that particular level where you can say yes. Professor, I don't think it's fair uh, to call uh, adults. I've withdrawn and, uh, and, and, and apologize to the two juveniles. Yeah. But, uh, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> can I put it differently? <laughs> professor, baby, please. Uh, let me put it differently. Don't make it worse. Then no, I actually want to tell you yeah. something that was written in my class WhatsApp group as the debate was going. Mm -hmm. so they say the two boys can govern the city. They both use the word boys. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but then they go into a better place. Both still remain fine gentlemen, but the city needs more. And that last part that I want to yeah, focus exactly. on. Yes. Uh, if we forget the analogies, I think the critical thing, and you hear the, the percentage 65, 63, if we got a half of what we had in Igade and a half of what we had in Polycap, we would be able to get the governor we need. And that is possible. Unfortunately, we are going to get half full as opposed to the complete governor that we need. And I think that's the challenge that we're having in terms of Nairobi. As I said, when we were starting this conversation, and remember when I was comparing with my county, Homabe, 
I was making the point that we need governors, good governors across the country, but we need an exceptional governor in Nairobi. Mm. Because Nairobi is not just one of the 47 counties. It is the city, the capital city, international city. Unfortunately, watching today, uh, and if you are looking for that international status, if you are looking for that super status, you still don't get it from the two gentlemen. And Professor, I think that's, that's the challenge. Let me cross over because I now have seven minutes or less and immediately hear from you. Karen, I'll start with you. What do the seven who then showed up, six who showed up for this debate, now do moving forward? In, in one word, what more can they do to build up from what's happened here tonight? I think do some research and get um, more information and factual information about what needs to be done in the city, for the city, for the residents of the city, and actually go out and, and do that. So just a little more research. The two final candidates definitely did their homework, especially Sakaja has uh, the information and all that stuff. But just the bit to go out there, do a little more research about what needs to be done, align themselves, and make sure they get to do that okay. when they get elected. And Prof, just as briefly, some would say, look at previous debates. Some didn't even show up and they won yeah. the election. <laughs> yes. you, your panel is talking as if winning debates is winning elections. No, 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 not at all. In fact, uh, I think uh, really to be fair to the two gentlemen, we are very happy that uh, you've got people that you can actually listen to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that was positive. And, and, and they did actually engage with, uh, with the issues. In fact, for me, it's an issue of uh, having... Ha the, I'm happy that I had high expectations of them. And those expectations are not totally destroyed. Okay. There are some, some candidates that I would not, not even have bothered having an expectation about. But the, my only message to them is this. And your final message, that, please. Mm -hmm. And that's my final message. That this is an extremely serious job, governing Nairobians. Please think through. Think through your ideas and your policies, especially the critical ones that, that will take this country, uh, this country okay. forward. Okay, I'll stop you there. I have yes. five minutes. Final comment from you. What um, more can the candidates for, do? Okay, now for the the, the ones you are calling fringe uh, fringe uh, candidates, twenty eight days to go. I would I would suggest that uh, they just pack off and go home, and uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Philip Kisi, uh, uh, you know, yeah, no, no, I'm telling you, and it, it came from Manjiro. Let them pack off, go home. You're telling Kenneth Nyamwamu, you're so, telling Hamad yes, Rewali, yes, you're uh, telling then, Mwadime. Then start from somewhere. You can start from member of parliament or MCA, or then grow, get experience. Okay, for the two gentlemen. They need to appreciate that leadership, leadership is about inspiring people. Leadership is about being able to get people in one basket to move in one direction, willingly, competently, enthusiastically. Okay, I'll take that as your final comment. Yeah. That's a good place to leave it. Wanjiro? I think for me it's one, looking at these two candidates, citizens, Either way, we'll need to hold them to account. They need hu these leaders need humility to listen, to round off. For Igade, he needs to understand the human rights-based approach. For Sakaja, we need to get that real servant leadership that he's listening, strengthen on that accountability. But the lesson is to us as citizens. Um, don't be discouraged by the choices. Go and vote for whoever, but let us be vigilant and hold them to account and force them to raise the level of their performance. And all this is possible in 28 or so days. Well, they need to be reflecting. You see, they're, they're out on the campaign trail. They need to practice humility. They need to learn human rights-based approach. Okay. Citizens need to vote and choose and hold leaders to account because we've seen what we are working with. We, we need to keep growing and forcing them to grow and r come closer to our expectation. And keep them accountable. Mm -hmm. Professor Dotter. I think uh, some very few things. Number one, uh, for Harman. Uh, I think this uh, was a great opportunity that he used well. I think he needs to continue doing what he did. Uh, the future is bright for him. For these other two candidates, I think I just have three things for them. Number one, they need to speak uh, to us much more uh, in the remaining uh, 28 days. And as they do, they need to focus on the 24% undecided. I think today, they didn't do enough on that 24%. Uh, I think they focused much on their base. Uh, but they need to focus on the 24 percent and i think the, la the last thing which i i struggled with the hundred days as we said at the start what is critical is implementation they would ne they need to sharpen what they will do quickly to be able to turn the ship around that for me would be critical okay and we certainly hope that they did not I have, change I have my shirt. just one let Nairobi residents be involved. Get to know your candidates. Understand what the issues are and go and vote. It is important. And your vote does count. 
your vote does count and that's a good place to leave it we are going to have to wrap it here let me thank my panelists this has been phenomenal i'm glad to have had each of you here karen wakoli who's the founder and executive director emerging leaders foundation uh, professor alfred omenia an urban development expert we've had philip kiss here former nairobi town clerk Onjiro Gikonya, who's the national coordinator for the Institute for Social Accountability, and of course, Professor Collins Odote, an associate dean, faculty of law at the University of Nairobi. Let me just quickly read one interesting message I've received from Justina Wamai, the running mate to Professor Wajakoya of the Roots Party. She says she's looking forward to attending the debate next week, Tuesday, but she says, please give us more time to articulate <laughs> our issues. I'm sure the organizers of this debate have had, but of course, we cannot have too much time. Otherwise, the debate would never end. But, Justina, I have read, read your message and we look forward to having you here at the Catholic University next week. Uh, Catholic, Uni Catholic University of Eastern Africa next week, Tuesday, uh, for that debate uh, that will kick off pretty much uh, around the same one as the others that did here today. Uh, let me also thank some of the uh, organizers who've made this event a, a possibility and this debate a possibility today, having concluded the first ever Nairobi Guban Governor's Debate brought to you by the Presidential Debate Secretary. Secretariat, the Media Council of Kenya, of course, and also the Kenya Editors Guild. And also on behalf of the wider media fraternity that has made this a possibility, it's also in partnership with Amnesty International, the Catholic University, Diamond Trust Bank, Homeboys, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Kenya Human Rights Commission, Linton's Academy, Kenya Daima, NHIF, Okoa Uchumi, the Institute of Social Accountability, UNDP, Usawa Agenda, and Oxfam as well. We look forward to having you tune in across all TV and radio stations on the 19th of this month, next week, Tuesday, for the next debate uh, where the deputy president candidates from each of, who have been uh, cleared by the IABC have been invited to attend those debates. And the other week, which is uh, the Tuesday, should be the 26th uh, for the presidential debates as well. And they'll be held here to give you a chance as a voter to make up your mind to decide who you will vote for on the 9th of August. 2022. On behalf of the whole team, a big team, over a hundred journalists, producers, uh, editors, uh, and so forth who've made this production possible, thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure bringing you uh, this uh, debate from 4 p.m. when we kicked off until now. My name is Wahiga Mora from Citizen TV. I wish you a good night. ulimi na mafikira kama sikiza chun kwenye simu yako bonyeza star 811 star 8